Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join, join our cult. cult. Yeah, I remember. I remember. It's been a while. Since Zoom, right? God, I, I don't even remember. I think it's been like, yeah, at least two years wow. since I've come on. Thanks for having me, by the way. Oh, I really do appreciate it. I'm so glad you can <laughs> take time. <laughs> it's like Jonathan Ross. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a book coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Colic Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the dulcet tones of Jack, whatever part of the country he's from, east or west. He's a star. Hello. Wherever he's at. Thank you. And in Pachidi, stepping right. in at no short notice. Thank you very much. No, no, it's a pleasure. I, I watched a lot of wrestling yesterday. I, I only Good. tend to catch the highlights, so I feel very, very out of practice. But I spent a solid seven hours watching wrestling yesterday and enjoyed every single moment of it, especially NXT. Mm. <laughs> Yes. I actually did. Did you really? Yeah, I thought we'll you get there. You messaged me, I thought you were joking. No, no, no I wasn't joking. No, I, I think it's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking the with no, a straight no, face. No, I, I, we'll get there. We'll okay. get there. We'll all buy a used car off this man. <laughs> and Puppet Jack, sit next to Mafu. Chase, you, Puppet Jack. Well, yeah, they're, they're going to dress like a winner. Right. Okay. Although, ultimately, it was a draw, wasn't it? Dressing like a winner yeah. in the main event. That stream, went, that stream went down well. Even love People that love that bloody thing. Mm. It was fun. It was really fun. The, the amazing work by the creator wrestlers, uh, the commentary. <laughs> the wrestlers did well. 2K they for were, paying us to do it. 2K paying us for doing it. You can say that now. We've got the money. You've already cashed the check. You sound like you were thanking the talent. Like they put their bodies on the yeah. line. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Bodies, more, end, bodies ended in an instant. Those, Career's over. Yeah, yeah. Very quick. My bodies knee. ended yeah, in an instant. That's the, that's that's the right. one. Something like that. <laughs> my, my knee. If you think the 10,000th time it aired, I would have known the words uh, by now, but there we go. How are you, Matthew? You're all right. I'm Dean R. Wright, pal. I'm Dean R. Wright. I saw Bob Odenkirk last oh. night at the Tyne Theatre. Oh, is he over here? Is he in Seoul? Little tour. Is he in Better Call Saul? That's him. Hi. Oh. Yeah, a little talk about his life and stuff, about how now at the age of 50, he's a proper actor. Wow. And doing action films. Who's this? Have Bob you seen Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul? No, I've seen the first two episodes of Breaking Bad. Oh, he doesn't turn up until no. a bit later. Yeah. Nah. I've yeah. seen Brian Cranston. Wow. Live. Ooh. And oh, I can't remember the name of the show. It was on a, on Broadway. I was out in New York and had a free afternoon and went to see... Oh, The Network. The Network. And he's the best actor I've ever seen. Is that a play? Uh, it's a. It was a film. I don't. It was. It was a play here. Yeah. Um. But it was. Uh, I think it was a. Maybe it was a book and then a film or a film and then. A, I, I, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, network. You mean is in I'm mad as hell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, saw yeah. that. I was saw it, that. Was he the lead? Yeah. Oh, he's wow. incredible. Like, yeah. like. I could see him doing well in that. Yeah. He's so. And I. I only really knew him because I'm not a Breaking Bad fan of, of, from Hal Malcolm mm, in yeah. the Middle. That's that's the only way that I remember him. I didn't realize that he's actually really, really good. I think he's mm. my favorite actor in the world. That's a good show. A good pick, yeah. Huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him in that and Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> yeah, but versatile. <laughs> yeah, 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 two yeah. different roles, one man. <laughs> which, right, it. which is right. a lot like Jack because when well, he's not been a podcaster he's been a bloody legend. Oh, Matthew, you're too kind, but thank you. So people oh, are wanting yeah. to know how the hell are you? I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Is this um, your first one since? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last oh, week. Yeah. But I'll tell the, us everything. Oh, well, it's long, wasn't it? I mean, day by day. The, okay, okay. No, 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 there, there, is a, there is a thread of um, my updates online with blog posts, so you can you can check that out if you want. And, and the, we did. The just giving pages open until I think May the 1st, and that's the pinned tweet on my Twitter. So there we go. But no, I did it. I finished the old walk. No, it's not. They're not got, halfway through. I was checking my calves, big. and they weren't big at all. No, oh, I kept an eye on your legs, but they look nice. Someone, <laughs> someone mentioned that Tubman must have huge legs. We'll get to Tubman in Japan, obviously, but um, oh goody, my leg size hasn't changed. It was good. I saw Sam on one of the days because I was in Wyndham, yeah. near where he's from, so he came along. Was so, he going on one of his angry walks? Sam, yeah. on his angry walk. Yeah, yeah. When he gets pent up, he goes for an angry walk. Like I assume he just like bumped in, into it. He walks down the motorway, like in it, Footloose. It's just swearing. <laughs> Runs through warehouse, <laughs> <No, it doesn't. laughs> dances. Um, no, he, we, he came to Wylam and he knew all the pubs, so he took me to one. It was really good. And then went to a second one. Yeah. It was good to see him. What was wrong with the second one? It was match day, and they were showing the football, and it was quite a small pub. Uh, I don't right. think it was the pub's fault necessarily; it was just the timing. Um, but no, it was generally a good experience. Got recognised by one man. In the whole, in the whole of twenty England. days, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> twelve or thirty, yeah. Um, in While you were walking in Carlisle, yeah, but it was only like two days in, and I was in Carlisle, um, which is like one of the only two cities that are Newcastle. So it was one a rare bit of urban walking, and I was crossing a roundabout or something, and um, he was in a car at a junction, and he went, "Is your name Jack?" And I went, "Yeah," and he went, "What are you doing in Carlisle?" And I went, "Walk for charity," and he went, 
Right, and then he had to pull out, so it was, didn't, really get to say, <laughs> didn't really get to say bye to him. But thank you to that guy. If you're it's a pretty good conversation to have, to be mm. honest with you, by a car. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about, you wouldn't have, because obviously you don't watch us, but did you hear about Fraser nominating his dad for Hall of Fame? Because Fraser's dad was driving past, saw Andrew, and Martin. didn't do anything because he realized, well, Andrew doesn't know who I am. <laughs> And Andrew's not going to go, oh, it's Fraser's dad. He's never met him. So apparently Fraser's dad watches quite a lot of the content that Fraser's in. So he knows who Andrew oh. is. So Fraser's dad messes. Fraser. No, he messes Fraser. That's they go bad. Like, well, guess who I saw? Oh, what have you done? In a predictions video, I made a, like, your mum joke. It was a really <laughs> lame thing. Oh, no. It was like oh, a your mum no. fellatio thing. Oh, and he seen that. quite graphic. Yeah, yeah, no, it was too far. I, oh, I'm not watching wait, now. Wait. Like, I can't even apologise because he won't be watching this because Fraser's not in it. Yeah, no. I watch, I've actually got Fraser, an um, I'll get I'll Fraser, send him the link. Sorry, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Porter. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she's a wonderful woman. And I've never done anything it with her. It says here as well, he's, uh, Fraser's dad's massive. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> he's Scottish. That's enough. That's enough to be worried mm, about. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Let's move on before Adam buries himself some more. Uh, to the news. Oh, the news this oh, week. God. What could we talk about? Oh, it could be anything. It could be CM Punk. Mm -hmm. Same as every bleak week. CM Punk was backstage at WWE Raw. And we know this, not just because the 10,000 news articles that came about, but because some nice guy filmed him in the car park talking to, uh, I think it was Demina. Demina. Uh, talking, hey, CM Punk, come over and take some photos of us. We won't tell anybody you're here. He didn't bother doing and that. And then CM Punk didn't react. He went, we see you there with your red hat. <laughs> with your red hat. <laughs> <laughs> and Natalia, am I right in saying Natalia was the man to escort him out or to say, come the on, man. Phil? Huh? Natalia was, was the man who escorted him out. The said. goat. Did I say the man? <laughs> the <laughs> goat, you mean? The goat. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. yeah. Natalia was, was the one. Apparently I so. Got, like, ah, because Sam Punk's such a big Bret Hart fan. Uh, <laughs> he, the new. <laughs> the one person he respects. That's right. I thought that Nigar. he just left without much of a fuss, apparently. Yeah, I don't think he kicked off or anything, oh, but apparently right. it was Natalia who went over and then maybe oh. maybe flanked by security. I'll put you in a sharp <laughs> Right. Mm. Um, I think he just does what he wants. Apparently, he controls the wrestling narrative in which we really, live. He really, what well, we're talking about him, so job got, job done, uh, red cap. Yeah, I'm sure he knew this. This has to be a deliberate thing. Well, people are saying, okay, he apparently went there, apparently because it was in Chicago, Illinois, which is really close to him. And he went, ah, oh, sorry, I'll go say hi to my mates. My mates <laughs> There's so many in WWE right Triple now. Triple H and The Miz. <laughs> which apparently, yeah, Triple H and The Miz. Apparently, he had a very brief conversation with Triple H. He then said, okay, it's good to see you. Can you leave? But apparently he patched things up or said nice things to The Miz, which is like, oh, okay, that's nice that they saw After the Saudi out. comment mm. on, the, on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, so, so that's the thing Saka. that most people yeah. point out. But it's also funny that apparently if he's coming back to hang out with Jericho and AEW, that that's enough for him to go, you know what? I just want to say to you two guys, it, I thought you guys were bad, but then I met <laughs> Jericho and the books. He said, you know what? I get it now. I get it. But people are going, he's trying to get out of his contract. He's trying to do this. Just to remind people how contracts work, he is under contract to AEW still. That thing never got resolved. He didn't get his contract bought out. He is still in the contract to AEW. You can't just go to another company and just show up there and go, uh, can I work here? Is Give he us not, a job? Is he not more likely building hype around himself due to his impending AEW return? That's what I think it That's is another well. good point as well. Mm. Or maybe literally just because it was in Chicago and... Because Punk yeah. could just tweet something and he'd be in the news. So he doesn't need to go backstage in WWE, I suppose, to make the news. Yeah. Maybe he just did what he just does what he wants. It was hilarious things. It's something like one of the lower tier news sites would print. And he'd be like, oh, sure he is. But then I was like, oh, no, no, it's been confirmed by like the big lads. It's like, oh, yeah. CM Punk is actually at Raw. It's like, mm. oh, okay. It was a weird one because you know how it was. He was talking to Triple H, who seemed fine with him. But then he had to go and ask Vince. And apparently Vince remotely gave the order to get him escorted out. I thought it would be the other way around. Because remember the... Do you remember when Punk went on Cole Cabana's podcast famously? <laughs> I famously do. Um, in that, I remember him saying, like, he didn't really like Triple H personally, but him and Vince never really had arguments. He was fine with Vince. You'd think that it would be Triple H who'd be like, get him out. And I don't think Vince would even remember AEW or CM Punk. <laughs> I thought Vince would just be like, who? What? Yeah. But apparently Vince cares and wants him out. Which surprised me. Well, when, when the return inevitably happens, it's just an, another thing that's going to put more eyes on AEW. I think it's like it, it's sensible marketing. I think it's a dick move, to be honest. No, come on, Adam. It's great banter. I can't uh, believe. But who do we, who's Triple H to say, look, this is a bad move. You showing up at the company you don't work he for. He actually did at it. At least show up in a Jeep or a tank. Yeah. All right? <laughs> but he actually did it. He actually got in there. It was a shoot went, invasion. Hey, it's me, CM Punk. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I come guess, in? Yeah, all right. I guess maybe it is. Yeah. Maybe it is, but it's 
wrestling's fun. Well, it'd be funny. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It'd be funny. It's like the idea of him, oh, you know, you're on the road, but I'd say hello to you. If it's funny, it's like, oh, do you want to say? Do you want to say, I still hate you. Well, I, I, I don't like time. you, Miz. The, 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 like, it, it's all kicking off again. And after however many years it's been now, this is the time that he decides to go and apologize to the people that he's upset. Come but on. The one time we had a show in Manchester and Moose was in Manchester and Moose just came backstage at our show. How is that any different? To s- no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Moose was there, and I was like, you on the show? And he was like, no. Just came oh. to watch the graps, didn't and he? Moose, Loves he, it. He did a run in at the end, though. I'm paid. I'm <laughs> paid. <laughs> Just get the name out there. That's what CM Punk's doing. CM Punk is doing a moose. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's doing yeah. a moose. <laughs> <laughs> moose is like, finally, my name is mentioned in the same sense as CM Punk. Oh, God. Hey, I'm uh, glad that he went out at the end of the show because if Moose was on the opening match, the Moose chance took over the show. Apparently, yeah. he always wanted to work with me. Really? I can't remember who nice. it was that told me. It might have been Dixon or something, but apparently D- Moose always wanted to do something with me because there are so many parallels to draw, of course, between <laughs> yeah, yeah, myself yeah. and Moose. I have no idea what it would have been, but I'm really loved, sad that it didn't happen. I would have loved Pacini Moose yeah. on a poster. Oh. G. Tony goes, yeah, man, we're both alphas in this world. And you're like, that's right. Um, I think the last time I saw him was at a wrestling media con. And I went, why did you turn heel, Moose? And he went, I've not turned heel, Jack. I went, oh, thank you. It's weird. <laughs> oh, thank it's you. Weird. It was just a weird interaction. I remember thinking, why? <laughs> but I remember asking him that and interrupting him because he was talking to you. Maybe he was a big fan of you. Perhaps, Maybe yeah. Maybe he singled you out and we should work, brother. We should work. Well, a- there's still time, Moose. <laughs> You've got my email. Get, get an impact. <laughs> oh, wow. Moose has probably just showed up out backstage. Like, what, what do we do? We let him in. <laughs> Supposed to do a podcast, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> anyway, Grizzled Young Veterans to leave to be later this year. So it was uh, reported a few weeks ago, a month ago now. Ah, uh, time's weird. That they both asked for their releases and they had them declined, which is funny, I guess. It's like, no, we need you in schism. Uh, yeah. Uh, reads the, as of today, <laughs> three has denied my request for my release. I want to thank you all for your support throughout my career. And they've announced that they will be instead the uh, next year that they'll be able to leave. Um, which is I thought was an interesting thing. They have shown up in NXT, and obviously not everyone watches it and cares about it as much as Ross. Big shoes to fill this week, pal. I know. But they have been much less doing their gimmick. They've had the less eye stuff, less, oh, where's spooky us? Have now they just, just been them. like little henchmen? But yeah. Little. Big right, henchmen. Yeah. Big yeah. little henchmen. Oh. I can Pain deal with the, the character changes on NXT if somebody doesn't really have much of a character before. But with those two, they oh, had yeah. quite established characters that were really good and really, really over yeah. as well. Mm. It was just a really unnecessary change. Like, if you want more people in that faction, then just choose someone else, maybe. Yeah, I can understand bu- their frustration. It was a bizarre choice. Because they were hot and then they were just doing silly stuff. Yep. And they were also a rare example of heels that weren't... There was no redeeming... No one wanted to cheer them. But in a good way. It wasn't yeah. like, they weren't cool. It wasn't like when, it wasn't like NWO heels. They were just real heels and it worked really well. And then they were spooky men. Mm. Just mm. spooky men. Just spooky men. That's shocking. When Regal details reasons behind AW exit, because I thought Regal had done a good job of this already, but apparently, oh sorry, Tony Khan had done a good job on his behalf, I guess. So. He's explained this about four times. Yeah, I feel we? like we've done this before. A guilty but... conscience perhaps? No, sorry. Uh, and that's what other people say. Like, <laughs> really, have they? You do keep on banging on about this, Regal. <laughs> Protesting too much. Uh, just so anyone who wants to know the truth, I know Tony <laughs> summed up a few conversations we had with quick answer. FYI, Tony called me at 9 p.m. So they, they really have the authentic regal feeling. You need, one of you needs to make a, a random lizard noise. For 10 <laughs> seconds. Called me at 9 p.m. on a Sunday night and I discussed my reasons for leaving or time spent where I, won't, I want to be. I want to be. Hang on, he's he apologised to some of the typos blah, later. Blah, blah, blah. I apologise for typos. I had a great time in AW, and I'm thankful for the time I spent there with many of my close friends and the amazing crew. I just want to make that public so people stop misinterpreting it. It's sad that people in our job can't realise that you can be a decent human being without having an agenda or taking advantage. This is the last time I will mention this. Again, I would like to thank AW for their gracious acceptance of me really? and for Tony to take me on board. And just so you know, there's a few spelling mistakes. Mm, Sorry, is. that's just me, Lizard Gizzard. I mean, last <laughs> tweets, but I spent too much time at school daydreaming of being a pro wrestler. AEW were very kind to me, and I enjoyed my time there. I made the most of my time there and never double crossed anyone apart from Excalibur, <laughs> whose, whose heart I broke. That bit, <laughs> that bit, the actual ending of that, the school bit, that bit makes me, it sets off some red, that's a red flag. He's trying to disarm us with a charming anecdote about what a whimsical young boy he was. Stick to the facts, Regal. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm so... Stick to the facts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he was probably fine, wasn't he, I guess? 
Well, he hasn't actually explained it at all, has he? <laughs> <laughs> he's not really said anything. Yeah, he's, he's he just said I had fun. Uh, I guess he said I didn't double cross anyone, but he hasn't when actually given us any real insight there. He's just said some things. So what yeah. is what's he been accused of? That he's taken secrets back to the W. He's done the thing. I with, have seen like people in, like in Willy Wonka. Yeah. He's been oh the um, spy, oh, the one who wants to recruit Charlie at the end. Slughorn. Uh, Slug no, that's Slug Harry Potter. Slugworth. Slugworth. Thank yeah. you. Yes. I don't know what I'm naming people. How do you know he's a villain? His name's Slugworth. Slugworth. No, he's a secret good guy in the end. Is he? Yeah, but you don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 no, oh, yeah, he's no, just testing him. Yeah, it's yeah, me, right. good guy, Slugworth. <laughs> yeah, we get back. His real name's Goodman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good oh, Slugworth. What a film. The, fir- the, the original, yeah. not this Johnny They're doing Depp a new one. one. There doesn't need to be it's a new like one. It's like Wonka before the chocolate factory. Oh, like, great. Wonka. <sighs> I don't care about him before the... Do you not want to find out what made him so no, mental? No, no, it's part of the charm. Yeah, I guess so. Have you... I think he'll have had a really troubled upbringing. Have you... <laughs> you don't, you don't turn out like Willy Wonka without something going on. Yeah, you don't. With an uncle. It's actually something. a really dull, boring film. <laughs> oh god, you don't make I'd a chocolate factory. Really <laughs> You'd love that. exclusively by no, not that. Strangely employed. Uh, we need rights for Oompa Loompas as well. Um, yeah, Hugh Grant's playing an Oompa Loompa apparently. Um, what? That's a joke? No. No. Head Oompa Loompa, right? Yeah. It just said, look, I'm not... I didn't realize it was going to be the Wonka exposition here, but... Wow. I yeah, really I can good. see, like, the book uh, thingy, Baldrick. I can see him being, like, one. Is he one? No, I'm just making... Tony's just throwing, I'm just throwing a name out there, but not, not yeah, he's Hugh Grant. <laughs> thing, isn't he? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, Wow, you no. look great. I didn't know I should be made up that quick. I've just showed up on set. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, have you watched that original one back recently, in recent years? Yeah, I've seen it quite uh, recently. Charlie can't sing a note. He's no. an awful singer. He's got fangs. Have you seen his... Oh, he's... Because like, he's a little boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not having a go. Um, I love those, those on-set interviews with Jim. vampire <laughs> Cheer up, Charlie. It'll be night time soon. You can go out and see your friend. Oh, cheer uh, up, Charlie. What a re- of all the songs to reference, you've gone for Cheer Up, Charlie. The Hall of Fame winner. But the uh, there's an <laughs> interview on set with Gene Wilder where he's talking about, so what was it like working with all these kids? And he goes, five of these kids are some of the sweetest, most adorable little kids you've ever seen. And one, I can't wait. This film's finished so I can strangle him. My TV. Here's my TV. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Really, in my head, I'd been worked there. I thought you meant Veruca Salt because I was going to be like, does he know it's not real? She's not really a brat. Uh, you know, Slugworth's not, she's not she's real. She's not really a blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? not Veruca Salt. <laughs> That's that not? Violet Beauregard. Oh, oh sorry. Which one was Veruca Salt? The brat. The, give it to me now. His father had a, the yeah, more unpacking yeah. the chocolate bars. Well, I want it yeah. now. Oh. <laughs> Again, Rodol, Veruca Salt. Can we do a what Charlie a and the Chocolate Factory podcast? I think it's what a film. It used to be like the first two years where it would come up like, yeah, yeah, wrestling, AW. So Willy Wonka, right? <laughs> Wait, is I it won't... not like that anymore? Uh, well, it is I'm very well, not you here. No, it is, it is. It, it is there is somewhere. a point in the film where uh, Augustus... <laughs> We're carrying on. Just so this is, this is actually popped into my head like, Matthew, say this, keep the joke going. There's Augustus Gloop at one point he's being interviewed and he eats the microphone. Yeah, I think so, yeah. You can't do that in real life, can you? <laughs> Does he eat the whole mic? The, no, like, in the foam, this, right? this, 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 this kid's so fat and loves eating and so much eats a, a, an object. I think he thinks it's like a marshmallow or something, doesn't he? But he eats it, just carries on like nothing's happened. He's a champ. A goose does... <laughs> I'm just thinking when he falls in the river. So like, no good. wonder. This kid had a condition. He's stuck in that geek little tube. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, help! <laughs> He's like, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> the pressure's building up. Yeah. And he flies off. His man thinks he's dead. And Willy Wonga just plays a little tune and goes, doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> it's a mad film. What's with that? What's oh, well, that kid the... died because Jeff Hardy. What's with that little, what's with the riverboat ride as well? Oh, it's great, though. And it goes all. Oh, it's all trippy. It's all nightmarish, yeah. What's, um, <laughs> any more wrestling news? Oh, uh, no, what are you talking about? Ted DiBiase <laughs> Jr. <laughs> It says, serving hard times, baby. If convicted, yes, this is the continuing saga of the DBRCs, all of them apparently, involved in this very serious oh, scandal. Uh, the Department of Justice announcing he's been charged with six counts of wire fraud, one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and to commit theft concerning programs receiving federal funds, four counts of money laundering, two counts of theft concerning programs, and also for stealing fizzy lifting drinks. <laughs> I wait till Jack was drinking to say that. You uh, lose. <laughs> Goodbye. Heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. And he was yeah. Is there any thoughts uh, as he was interviewed? And he said, uh, "It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal." Uh, he's pleading not guilty to all charges. Did he's, he? He's, yeah. 
This feels I like it seems screwed for years as well. Was that not Brett? This I saw an interview Brett. with him outside Brett oh, right, TV. Right. Um, I see. I saw an interview with him outside right. the um, courtroom. And he just went something like, oh, Jesus loves you. Yeah. God <laughs> loves you. Oh, that's all right. Okay. It's like, all right. Yeah, cheers. Uh, Why do you steal from all those poor people? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Alleg allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not looking yeah. great. No. No. Uh, they were trying to F on him. And uh, the news has come out overnight that a former writer is being sued. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Baker Pan is suing the wee and Vincent Mann, quote, over offensively racist and stereotypical scripts. Uh, no, not the one on NXT. Uh, no. Former movie writer Brittany Abrahams filed a 31 page lawsuit against uh, the people I just said uh, because she was in the writing room and had to hear all the people's horrible, racist, and the horrible ideas. From the snippets that have gone viral, I mean, yeah, there's many she's of them. She's right. Yeah. You know what? There's many of them. I don't think we'll go into all of them because, uh, no. woof. Uh, my personal favorite of oh, these no. is the, uh, the, the, the name of the writer that's been pitched was obviously causing all this issues is Ryan Callahan pitched just for how ridiculous a thing is oh, to no, say is and it think. It's it pitched for Mansoor. It's this one? He's, done, he's gone for it. To be revealed, quote, uh, as the person uh, behind 9-11. No, he said the thing as well. I don't think you can say that on YouTube. Yeah, uh, can we not say it? Yeah, you can. Oh, right. Oh, fair enough. I thought that was an instant. I wouldn't describe the attacks. Okay, fair enough. I'm not. I thought it was an instant. Like, no, you can. Oh, right, well. YouTube's a mystery. <laughs> Full of YouTube YouTube's put to his going, hell yeah, Augustus Gloop. Uh -huh. But it's, yeah, that uh, it's, it's crazy. Just, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's wrong on so horrible. many so many different levels. Nonetheless, the people, the fact that we know who was behind those attacks, it's not five year old as he would have been at the time, Monsoor. Why? I'm, I'm trying to see how this. I don't even. I think just on a bigger level, like even to start thinking of that idea and to pitch it publicly is just so. Yeah, because you went to this guy like, going, what, "What do we know about that area of the world?" And he's like, "This one idiot guy going, I've got an idea." I think they so. said that originally the story was going to be him and maybe Angel Gaza, or there's like a love triangle. Love triangle with him and Alia. Right, and then but Mansoor's got a secret. What could it be? And he's gone that. And, and how would that work? Like, I, oh, I don't know. Why but, should I buy for your affections? I've got the secret though. Yeah, and also. That someone, I think Bix and Span on Twitter was syncing oh, up the dates, and he said something like, "This led this date is like the day before Mustafa Ali requested his release initially, saying that he had an issue with creative, which oh. would make sense." And a lot of people had a go at him for that at the time. I remember him catching a lot of flack. Wow! Um, so. Oh, because people would have assumed they've booked him to lose against someone. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember specifically, but I remember people, like, people sort of ragging on him, obviously, yeah. but I think it's well, a pretty understandable. I mean, Ali said like quite a lot of times he's wanted to break the mold and stereotypes and stuff like that and all the stuff he's been doing with his job. So imagine you're that person representing yourself and your oh, culture God, yeah. and all this. It's horrible. And then some guy who has opinions like this probably comes out with an idea. That was probably about the same level of as a Bernard Manning joke. He's probably like, yeah, I want out of this place. So how far did this get? Because if this was pitched to Ali, he wouldn't have been in the creative meeting. So it must have gone a step further than just some idiot going like, oh, this is what we should well, do. I got like, the if it's got to right. him. I, got him I, didn't, I thought Bix was Bix. Um, my mate Bix. I don't know him was implying that this had happened to Mansoor. Ali maybe just got wind of it and had gone, well, that's uh, not right. I don't know if he was necessarily involved as well, but gotcha. yeah. Mm. <laughs> ah, Tubman, Japan. Right, Pachidi, uh, this is the bit of the show where we look at Tubman's feed mm, and we express how, uh, yeah, uh, we, we show how interesting <laughs> it is. Here we go. Great. Some lovely photos she's put on Great the ground. Great photos. Uh, well then, it seems that yesterday I just chose the worst section of the Pacific Cycle Route in Wakayama. As today, different. I was following the same road and it was so much better. Very <laughs> un what undulating. Yeah, undulating. But, yeah, up and down. Oh, fair enough. But uh, I but a really good. Him sounds stupid, but he knows a word that you do. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, <laughs> how bad's that? I've been tricked by my own impression. Also passed by the southmost tip of Honshu today. Eyes down, mournfully, thumbs up. Okay, and well, the I photos think that means, are. Oh, I've got a long way to go. Maybe. Don't know what the sad face. Well, is you would know better than anybody, Jack. Well, Tubman, he's put me to shame with this. He's, he's cycling he's... across Japan. And yeah, we... where's where's your gram pictures? I know. Well, all over my Instagram. That's right. All right. When we mock him, though, we mock him for this segment, and I still don't know why. It's beautiful. Really They're good. Really pictures. nice. So really nice. Why is he pretty. not doing the interesting stuff with like robots and all that? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's not much cycling to be had around the city centre. <laughs> but this, no, this is nice, but it, it, it could be blithe, couldn't it? The, the conveyor belt brings you through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 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 No, it looks amazing. Is, is uh, some guy in a tent who I'm going to kill and take your stuff? What? Oh, no, sorry, it's his tent. I beg your pardon. Who wrote the I don't know. <laughs> 
So is this the segment? Yeah, Matthew reads it in a voice, and yeah. then if Tubman's done a vlog, we'll play a bit of that, but I don't think he has for a bit. And, yeah. yeah. No, it's and been then, a month And then Ross will drag it on as long as possible while going, <laughs> don't, don't do that, while well, adding nothing. Look Great. At that people, all the comments that. love it. The, look, this, the, people think this is better than the Hall of Fame sometimes. Why aren't people engaging with him more? He's, he, that's four hours ago. He's got five likes. Go, go and give him a follow. Obviously, catch <laughs> up here for the analysis of the pictures, but go and give him a follow and get involved with, with Dick Tubbs. <laughs> I, think oh, I think they're nervous to like it. I hope he's doing well. Yeah, and that's what it is. You know, you see... You Six, see, there we go. Go on, Joel. Yeah, you see a celebrity and you don't... You'd like, you'd, you'd like, oh, wow, I love that guy so much. I can't even say hello to him. Apparently, he's been recognised twice. Since really? Out there, yeah. Wow. One more than you. Yeah, one more than me, yeah. I made that up. Well, <laughs> <laughs> expect me to rail against it. That's a lovely photo, that. That could be a postcard. You can hear that, can't you? The wee he wee is wee cheating, wee though, wee if he's wee taking wee the train. That ruins it no, on the no. left, the... Um, the, the, yeah, the pole. I'd, if that cro- was a, I'd have cropped that If that out. pole was a bit more left. Yeah. Oh, that pole yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah it's it does. Yeah. Uh, composition. But no, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. What do we do now? We go to the next segment. Right. No, I'll carry on with this. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Is this the, is this the one thing that he's posted <laughs> since last week? Or is there more? No, there's been more. Let's have a look then. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying this. Not that's as, horrible. Not that as good as this. That's hardly pool there. Oh. No offense. Of the pools. That's a good one. Oh. Unfortunately, oh, the worst yeah, ride yet. The rainstorm overnight luckily didn't last too long in the ride, but I followed the Pacific cycling route of the Wagayama 800 again. Mm. The section of it at Flooded Water. The section of it I rode today was probably 78% busy road full of trucks. Not the most ideal riding scenario. Ooh, woo face. Oh, not all the days are going to be, you know, thrilling. Ooh. Oh, I was supposed to picture the food and we'll go, ooh, that looks nice. Mm. It doesn't. It does. You want to eat that? <laughs> well, it, looks, it depends what, it, what the flavour is. Oh, it's tomato like, soup. Because it doesn't look like a, a fruit pastel's lollipop, <laughs> say, so you don't like it. I will say, <laughs> when, nice. when we went to Wrestle Kingdom, Tokyo was the best place I've ever been for food, ever. Yeah. It was amazing. And I don't even really like seafood, and I thought it was just going to be all like seafood, but no, everything was amazing. He's been to Haven. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. 13 um, likes, it's a big one. This. Go right. and like it, go and like his stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. See, yeah. they've got on the previous one with the big worm thing. Some neon lights there, right? Is that neon light or are they hanging baskets? Like, go in They're there. Go in there. That looks, that looks fascinating, that, that little shop or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you can read what it says, though, and he doesn't fancy it. Yeah, no, maybe. I don't know. Oh, there's a balcony at the back. Oh, can we end? The... All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Bloody hell. Everyone's second favorite segment after Um. Japanomania. Uh, In condescending order from last week, Stone Cold E.T., the hottest joke from 10 years ago that Tom Campbell's just discovered this week. No! I was told. I was told. So I've never seen Stone Cold E.T. Are you not either? No, but... Wow. Doesn't sound that good. Um, (laughs) Fraser told me that you sandbagged Tom's pitch and then went, I've seen it before. I was trying to explain to him. It is... Ten years old. Was it Fraser? Was it, whoever was on with you yeah, two yeah, last yeah. week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Fraser. It's the Paul same Smart. guy who does the JR impression, right? You remember the JR impression? JR. Probably actually. The, the when the, the Y2J countdown thing. Is that not? The, I think it's the same guy. Have you not seen that? I have seen that. I'm not sure if the two are related. I is, thought they were. I what the is same Stone Cold guy. Eats? Is it like? Is it's it... a guy in a ET mask doing a Stone Cold impression, going up to a uh, pole. My thing was, and it just sounds like a really old did Tom do that thing? Did he laugh so much he couldn't speak? He, he, that's him every five minutes. Why? Uh, but it was me being in a position of working at a shop or stuff like that, and I would hate to be working in convenience stores or Dairy Queens or whatever. Now, because it seems like all people do oh, is come goes, in to order food and oh, prank it or do a viral video. He's doing this in public. Yeah, and yeah. so I, I'm oh. of this opinion now, like, I just want to be doing my job and all this, and, you know, and then they're trying to shut the window and they can't. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I didn't. Like, I didn't remember that. you, and they can't shut the window on him. Mm. So some gold DTs just that, like. But it's what? from ten years ago. Yeah. Oh. I'm not saying you have to discover stuff. I'm just saying, you should get your references up to date. Wow. Good impression, though. Oh, 12, it is a pretty good impression. I thought I can't it was going to be like. I sound really critical of this now. I thought oh, it was going to be the film ET with someone doing an Austin impression dubbed over the top, like um, Scouse Fireman Sam or whatever. Oh. Like, what are you doing in a cave? Take that fire and that. Yeah. yeah, I watched ET for the first time ever. I've never seen a few it. weeks ago. Yeah. Bloody hell! Crap. I, was so I thought long. it was like Spielberg's masterpiece. It's boring, right? It's boring. Is I it? think it's the thing that people watch wow. when they were growing up. And yeah, it's a great oh, family wow. film if you, you know, if you're four. Mm. Um, but I, oh, I thought it was tedious. Really? Yeah. Wow. Get heat for that. So it's not one of those 
kids' films that you can watch and it's on a different level for adults and you enjoy it on a different level, like Toy Story. No, I didn't no. pick up on any naughty oh. jokes or anything like that. It doesn't need to be naughty jokes. Well, no. just, Toy Story themes stuffing. of jealousy, belonging. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it was just, it, it's just really long um, right. and I, I'm doing this not, thing, not, inspired not, by not, you not, actually. Oh, yeah, you're watching you watching more films? Yeah, I'm, I, I, I found a top 100 list on IMDb of um, the last 50 years, although it was curated, the list was put what together. and discovered? I discovered? Uh, I've only done like four so far. Uh, I did Reservoir Dogs, which I thought was incredible. Yes. Um, I did Apocalypse Now, oh, which was long, incredible. Long, which was the, the long normal version, e. like two ETs, like the normal version, like not yeah, yeah, not director's the, cut. Oh my god, uh, with the French three hours the twenty British soldiers in a yeah. weird place, and oh, I don't like that bit. No, I, I think the Redux director's <coughs> cut version is better. The oh, normal version, but I'm glad you yeah, liked it. But the normal, oh, the normal, yeah, normal version's yeah. way good. Right, you've watched the ones. Uh, there was one other. It was another um, Tarantino. Pulp Fiction? Yeah. There I, you go. Which was brilliant. I think brilliant. people mm. seem to prefer that to Reservoir Dogs, but I think I prefer Reservoir Dogs. They're both great in different Dogs. ways. Yeah, they are good in different ways. I don't like the bit where she does that and a square appears. Breaks breaks my immersion. I'll hold a gasp of air from Joel. Then. What? I love Pulp Fiction. You love, yeah, he loves Pulp, 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 Pulp Fiction, he says. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only uh, it's the only time that happens in the whole film. Mm. Is that why it's good? Art's weird, isn't it? It made me appreciate Booker T more. Pulp Fiction. You know that when they're doing the WrestleMania promos, yeah. Booker T's really good in that because I didn't. I haven't seen it before. I just thought he was being. Oh, funny did he do silly. Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. Oh, who plays? No, 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 Reservoir Pulp Fiction. Who's, John, who's John Travolta? Oh yeah, sorry, Pulp Fiction. Teddy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. They go in and get the pizza. the stuff and burger. the burger. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Good mm. times. I'm glad you've seen all these films. The cool. horses up to date. Stone Cold DT. Um, <laughs> I got a mate to watch Glengarry Glen Ross. Amazing film. I love that. Sam's film got so a Glengarry Glen Ross tattoo. Has he? He's got a tiny bit of it. He's got like a wow. little box or something on his arm, I think. Oh, like these. Box or something like that. For closers. Yeah, yeah okay, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's great because then he's been texting me stuff like, oh, you seen your mate tonight? Because, yeah, we'll tell him not to drink the coffee. Just put that coffee down. Oh, he, just gets me, yeah. he sends me random quotes for it now because it's such a quotable film. I'm like, oh, yeah. When uh, he's on the phone and it's all rainy outside, yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh. It's so well put together. Have you been doing any uh, oh, Jack not for, not for, film? Not for ages, no. Oh, you've been walking, of course. Yeah. yeah, but I had my tablet with me. I was going to watch films at night. But instead, I, I read a bit and I couldn't switch off enough to just chill out and watch a film. I, I would like get tired really fast after a day of walking, so I didn't watch it. I'm watching the film for ages. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, You're evolving. It's great. Were you in hotels each night? B&Bs and stuff. Nice. Yeah. I didn't camp. So I, it did. It was. It would have been cheaper if I'd camped, but also you have a shower and that, can't you? After a long day, oh, quite nice yeah. going back to a hotel. Um, so I was in mainly like above a pub, but um, in Carlisle, I was in like a travel lodge. And just oh, whatever nice. the cheapest kind of thing was around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Was I bet that was so fun to put together. Like choosing where you were going to stop. Yeah, each that other. Was, I love honestly, stuff like that, that was that was like almost funner than the walk itself. Yeah, yeah the planning stage. Oh, oh, an itinerary for myself. Did you do any oh. activities on the way? You got donkey Not really. No, 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 um, no. I, I I had a couple of rest days built in, mm -hmm. and on the first rest day, it was like a nice day in Carlisle. So I walked around. I sat and had a pint. I went to Tesco. <laughs> Tesco's not really it, but <laughs> it was like those? it was a bank holiday. It was Easter bank holiday as well. So like the town was bouncing. I was just walking, oh, it was a nice day, um, and then. The next rest day was in a place called Halt Whistle, and it just rained all day, so that was really sad. Just sat inside my room. But um, what did you do? I went on Radio Newcastle with Tom. Oh yeah, <laughs> he nice. got me on to plug oh. my thing. But um, just sort of nipped to the shop again. Like that day was really boring. That one. Did you watch Hotel TV preview? Um, no, just like BBC and it's so, like yeah, Arm but, yeah that. but daytime telly's bad, isn't it? Um, yeah. but. That town hall whistle was like, it branded itself. It was like proud of being the center of Britain. It was the geographic center of all four directions of Britain. Oh. Apparently, if you include Scotland, um, it was all right. Place. <laughs> Rained all the time. The weather can really change your, your opinion of a town, I've learned. Have they yeah. got one of those things like on The Simpsons where the, the, all the states dissect? I didn't, I didn't see a marker exactly, but I did. there was a hotel called the Center of Britain Hotel. That's not nice. where I stayed, but maybe. Where did you stay? That place was like a self check in, kind of an Airbnb. Oh, okay. Type thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, should we? <laughs> Second place. Oof. Andrew's dad setting fire to a whisk. Oh, that was good. That so we've was... had Fraser's dad. I forgot about that. And Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's it... dad can't cook, so he tried cooking. 
set fire to a whisk. Yeah, his mum. It's like, he's crazy. He's, he's cooking. His picture of his dad, like, doing cooking. Then his, his mum's message saying, he set fire to the whisk. <laughs> I can I can imagine Andrew pitching this. I've not watched it. Oh, it was good. Like, He's so good, Andrew. Oh, my dad said he bloody set fire to whisk. Oh, no. Yeah. And then first place, well deserved, because it was me. Ross learned the truth about Darth Vader. That got like mm. 70, maybe what 70%. What a great bit. That was that was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It was it was an it was an amazing moment to capture yeah. on film. Me, Ross, and Fraser talking, and Ross somehow brings up uh, Star Wars for some reason. But it was like, oh, you know, the Jar Jar Binks one. I've seen that, and they're like, you know, but he's not a big Star Wars guy. I you? didn't know either. Oh, you didn't know either. <laughs> didn't have a clue. I knew that Darth <laughs> Vader was the father of Luke Skywalker, yeah, he's but I didn't know that yeah, was yeah. the little boy. Yeah, he's the little boy. Yeah. Anakin no Skywalker. Idea. He grows up into Darth Vader. Why does he turn time bad? Oh, there's a whole. Well, thing. That's it's the it's point it's of the whole franchise. Point of, yeah, yeah. For another yeah. time. Fear leads to what? Well, hang on. No, yeah, there yeah. is a, there is a simple answer. It's that yeah. Yoda tells him the path to the dark side. Like he lost fear. that race, didn't he? Now this is no he wins the race. No, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, fear leads to. Oh, hate. damn it! I'm yeah. going to Google the path hate to the dark leads side. Something, something leads to yeah. suffering, and then yeah, then suffering. There we go. Kills all the younglings. Yeah, because remember, Palpatine gets under him. like, oh, you know, I can teach you how to about Darth Vader? Was he done wrong? He, 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 he was the he was the chosen one. He was meant to bring balance to the force. Not, he said he killed not, a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, he, not just that. I that's mean, that, not on. That's not on. No. Yeah. Especially when the little boy's like, "What are you doing here, Master Anakin?" And he just ignites his lightsaber, and then it comes away, and you're like, "He's gonna kill all the kids." That's it. That's the third one. It's dark. It gets dark. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Good times. Oh. You and then it's it was a good brilliant clip. Ro- a brilliant Ross's, clip. Ross's reaction of shut, shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like how you were like, prepare for a spoiler that's 50 years oh, old. I'm sorry, you're going to watch them? No, I was like, well, here's a spoiler from 70 years ago. Yeah, what, like, Anakin was, Skywalker is Darth Vader. It was known, Get out of here. It was known that he was, <laughs> it was known that Darth Vader's name was Anakin. It was, uh, it, that was known before the original trilogy, wasn't it? Before the little boy was even on the scene. We knew that he was yeah. going to be Darth Vader. Oh, oh so everyone yeah. watching it knew, it's like, oh, Anakin. Not many people are called that. Yeah, I've yeah. never met anyone called Anakin. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, on the adverts Stuff. It was set up like the picture of little Anakin Skywalker in the background. His shadow was like Darth Vader. Oh, right. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. watch That's Darth Vader. Be- watch Darth Vader turn into Willy Wonka. <laughs> coming soon. Um, path to the dark side. Really dark chocolate. Why have I Googled that? It could bring up anything, couldn't it? Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And Sorry. then he looks at the horizon and he's all, doo, 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 doo. that's Harry Potter again. <laughs> <laughs> I hated Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm gonna kill some kids. Oh, no. Well, if I've been there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's the Star Wars one? <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 that's, that's... the soaring. Jackson Five. <laughs> one of my favorite songs. It's a great song. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> My pick for Hall of Fame this week was uh, at requested by Luke Osborne, the lad who edits stuff. He sent me a thing. If you'd like to go on there, fantastic. Look at Joel already doing it. Mm. Uh, big Jeff Cobb has been in Japan, and he's just saying, if you see him on the streets of Kobe the next few days on this, please give me a ride. It's not meant for heavyweights. Oh, <laughs> crying emoji because he's a big lad. Uh, in this little photo, Cobb has got his big white hoodie on with the black headphones, and he does not look that dissimilar to a panda. Oh, right. So uh, Luke Osborne was the first person to point this out to the dodgy Photoshop, if you scroll down. Oh, my God. If you scroll down. <laughs> Looks like Elmo. He made it sound like it was the first thing that came up, but it's obviously not working. Oh, well. But then if you then click the other thing <laughs> I sent you... Yeah, oh, it worked on my bloody Twitter. Ah, there you go. Okay. It's people now doing fan art of uh, Jeff Cobb on his tiny bike as a panda. No, yeah, they cute. made him so cute. Which Luke Osborne is taking credit for. That's a chibi, isn't it? Well done, you. Yeah. Yeah. Big, 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 big. Yeah, Look at yeah. the big brain on Brad. Is that, the <laughs> style? is that the art style? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, that chibi did the super deformed look. <laughs> chibi sound. Don't start uh, again. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so not my expressions. Is the bike even Drinking small, the by the way, or is he just a big man? Because the bike's long. It's the a bike's long far bike. away. Are you asking if Jeff Cobb's a big man? Well, of course he is, but he's not. He's not. He's wide, but is he? Yeah, he's a huge mus- muscular man. Isn't yes, he? He's, he's, I don't know how tall he, he is. He's not, I don't think he's that tall. But look at the bike. Look at the size of that bike. Yeah. It's huge. It's also a weird design. The seats back a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird that it's like a reverse BMX or something. I don't know. An XMB. Aye. So, so Jeff Cobb as a panda, inspired by Luke Osborne. Nice. Hey, well, who 
I'll, once a push. I'll be honest. Luke messaged me at 7 a.m. so I didn't see it, saying, can I pitch something for the Hall of Fame? And I didn't see it. Yeah. I replied, like, oh, he did say I that. Said, like, like, Jack I, ignored me. I replied, like, what is it? And he put, oh, I've already given it to Matthew. And I'm oh, relieved that, that explains... not to have been saddled with that. <laughs> 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 What's wrong with that? That explained, I thought... <laughs> Sorry, I thought no, Luke, joking. I thought Luke looked like he'd been crying. Now it makes what? sense. No, I didn't yeah, tell like him red that. Eyes this is the first time I've admitted that I didn't like the pitch. <laughs> no, he never told me what it was. This is my first time seeing it. I think it's good. It's good. Jack ignored me. No, it's good. It's good. It said message seen delivered. No, it's, no, it's good. It's good. I feel awful now. And uh, oh, panda. No, it's, I shouldn't have made that joke. It is good. It is good. Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm jealous that I didn't get it. My my own pitch is better. What is yours? My next. Who? I can who, go I next if here. you want. It doesn't really matter because none of you were here last I'll week. Go, so I'll, I'll yeah, go for it. It's a beautiful segue. Love's a hard thing. Relationships can be difficult sometimes. Um, it's just blue to you. One man you. who's the master of relationships is former MMA fighter Jake. Uh, no, Ben Askren. Sorry, not Jake. He got knocked out by Jake Paul. Ben Askren. Have you seen this? No. Ben Askren did a lovely tribute to his wife on Twitter. So if Joel can just bring that up now. Uh, I've seen some guys posting on social media lately about how they are winning because their wife is attractive. <laughs> While I don't disagree. I think finding a wife who's a great mother is 500% oh, more important. No. Thanks no. for being such a great mom to our kids. She's beautiful. And Why did he done that? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he's left it up as no, well. The comments. Well, I've got a chain of... Uh, then, he, then he started to backtrack. He started to backpedal. And he went, she's not insecure and I don't need to state the obvious because this was after a lot <laughs> he's of... Hashtag, this was after hashtag a, beat it, loser. Ah, he's a fighter. Look at his mangled face. Yeah. Um, but like all the, <laughs> all the comments on the first one were stuff like... No, don't hit sound on this tweet. <laughs> like, like, why did he? Why did bro diss his wife for no reason though, and stuff like that? The next one is her replying to hit to this one. You really just googled a photo of us because you used to get to, you used to get to the image. And then finally, the one after that, someone's Aww. noticed. Wait, that's not it. Oh, there. You don't even follow her. He doesn't even follow his oh. wife on Twitter. So Ben Askren's absolutely had a nightmare there. I can't believe a guy whose Twitter bio says hashtag Bitcoin. We we'll do something this time. <laughs> now, so that was um, just that initial tweet was just Ooh. insanely worded. And he's got an AWA shirt on. I've seen some guys posting about how they are winning because their wife is attractive. Well, I don't disagree. <laughs> Look at mine, <laughs> says Ben. Jesus. I think that a great mum is more important. Why in the middle of the road? Are they, is there a fate going on behind them all? I would have thought, I can't say that. Good. Uh, AWA shirt <laughs> well, in the look, background. That's look, a, a nice segue look, to our look, rise and fall. They don't look like... They don't look... They don't, look, they don't look unrelated, is what I'm saying. They look very... <laughs> 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 oh, hey, Matthew, it's usually you who says some offensive. No, things. like... <laughs> I'll be chuffed if my sister looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Great pick, Jack. But no, he is punching. <laughs> You're right. That's well, yeah. his job. Hey. No, he's more of a wrestler. He's actually bad at striking. He lost mm. a boxing match to Jake Paul. Uh, that doesn't... Come on. He did badly in it. Yeah. He's the one who got... First time boxing. He's the one who was on the wrong end of the quickest knockout in UFC history. Yeah. Oh, where yeah. Masvidal just knees well, the, the, him. Oh, okay. He runs at him and j he just knees him in the face. I yeah. just, uh, just like Jake Paul saying, well, I beat him in a boxing match. It's like, great. Right. Well, I beat him in tiddlywinks as well. Mm. Who cares? Anyway. Anyway, uh, Pachidi, save us. Two, uh, two, two. Uh, my, mine's wrestling related. Oh, what um, a freak. I, I, haven't pre I didn't know we could prepare images, um, but if you've seen it, you'll understand why. Uh, it's Trish Stratus's new WWE.com render. Okay. Um, I haven't seen this. Have you not? Joel, could you do, <laughs> oh, no! do Pachidi's get... render? No. Wait, you can't... You're bringing it to the table and then... Yeah, don't say... Don't. <laughs> Wait, this, is yeah. <laughs> this is a... Oh, no. Wait, what's happened? No, it's going to make me look like a... Oh, anyway, carry no. on. Keep on digging. It's not, it's not that one. That's not new. Oh, right. Yeah. doesn't matter. Uh, my actual one is Uber drivers that don't talk to you. That don't talk don't to you. I had a bad experience in an Uber. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, it's No, it's not awful. It, it, it is bad, what he was saying. So um, I, I um, in an Uber on the way home, and um, there was a bloke getting arrested by uh, two police officers who were female. Oh, and the Eastern European... Um, Uber driver started going, oh, that must be really, really embarrassing. Imagine getting nicked by a girl. Oh, right. And I went, well, two two women. Um, and and it, then he just carried it on for a solid, like, oh, two minutes. Uh, oh, imagine going home and telling your wife and all this stuff. And I realized that I haven't had a positive uh, Uber experience for a while. Have you not? No, because oh. I, 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 everybody's got their go-to things they talk about with Uber drivers. How long have you been on? How long have you been on? What time are you finishing? 
Oh, they've um, messed with the streets around here, actually, haven't they? They've made it all pedestrian. Yeah, yeah, all of that. And actually, I, I really enjoy well, the it. the students uh, gone? If the business is down, if the students are gone. Yeah, no, that, that's another one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my go-to. Oh, it's quiet in oh, the, the summer, right? Oh, the students are back, so... Yeah. <laughs> do you do nights? Do you, you ever done that? But then they always go, what do you study? I oh, mean, they think you're... I think I'm a student. That's flowering, I don't get that anymore. You should what? say walking. Yeah, it's walking. <laughs> um, so I really enjoy it when I... Uh, and it make, this makes me sound horrible. This sound, uh, I was going to I was gonna go for Matt Stone and Trey Parker because I've been watching a lot of Matt Stone and Trey Parker stuff lately. I'll go with that. I'm going to go with Matt Stone and Trey Parker, right? Third time's a charm. Wait a minute. Check out that Trish render, by the way. Well, you're, um, you're going for Uber drivers that don't all? No, I'm going for Matt Stone and Trey Parker because uh, they're geniuses. Genii? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> G um, oh, no, don't. <laughs> is this one of these like images that you stare at and it keeps on turning into different photos? Where's it gone? It was all I over Reddit. It. Is it probably just a picture of Trish that's looking nice? Yeah, that, yeah, that's basically yeah, yeah. it. Oh, oh, that was the joke. There she yeah. is. There you go. That one. Second, no, second one. That one. And oh, like, right. Background cut out. Oh, um, right, okay. So Matt Stone and Trey Parker, because I was watching that 25th anniversary concert um, that they did, on and the it was cliff. brilliant. On the cliff. Yeah. Red Rocks. Oh, Red Rocks, oh, yeah. Um, and I went back and watched a load of old stuff that they've done. And apart from South Park, they're just, they, they are incredible and they're still really, really passionate about what they're doing. And I just massively appreciate it because I think they're really, really funny. Uh, they don't care, do they? No, well, they're, 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 the, the thing is, right? The stuff they, that they say is just they, they, they made, like, they're probably close to being billionaires, right? Really? Um, I think they've made a, a Book well, of Mormon and all uh, that. They, they, oh, yeah. They've done pretty well. I, th I read something once that it was like 650000 a million. Wow. $650 million that they made. Yeah. But they're still making South Park. I'd be off. Yeah. I'd be absolutely done with it. Um, um, like, Matt Groening and Seth MacFarlane and that, they just left their stuff, didn't they? Started doing... Like, Matt Groening did Futurama because that's what he wanted and to do. And then that wanted. disenchanted thing. Crap. Like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> One trick pony. <laughs> what a trick, though. You know. So, yeah, I'll go, I'll go Matt Stone and Trey Parker uh, just because they're very, very funny and they're still passionate about something they've been doing for so long. Would you make people laugh? Are you still watching South Park? Like, recent episodes? No. I, I haven't I watched it in years. Stopped at maybe season 14 or I so. But I love into, it. Like, multi arc sorry like it's all big arcs now isn't it they go into the future and uh, big season long yeah, storylines yeah. and stuff like that apparently they've just had I like mean, 12 movies commissioned maybe as well the, maybe oh, the, okay. maybe the reason that they've not got burnt out with it is because they've had so much material in just the public just things that have happened over the past 10 years to yeah. just keep going like Trump and COVID and just all kinds of stuff they can riff mm. on, I suppose. You ever seen yeah. that Five Days to Air documentary? I've mm. seen clips of it. Incredible. Yeah, clips of it. They're just, they're so good. I remember like when it was, I was really getting them because I could really relate to the stuff they were making fun of. And it was like, because my, my parents would watch Mari Povich and Jonathan Edwards, the guy who actually can talk to ghosts. They and can. I think this is a load of rubbish, this. And South Park would say everything I was thinking, going, you know, you're just exploiting people like who are like mourning and just using little tricks. And no, I'm giving them hope. Like, no, exactly. You know. And then he wins the biggest douche in the universe contest. And I was there pumping my fist like the end of the breakfast club. Like, yes, get him. I follow a load of uh, Facebook groups and pages oh, of uh, psychic mediums who do oh. who do live readings uh. just based on your name and profile picture. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and... One of them got mixed up a few months ago. I was commenting, trying to see what they would say about me. Um, <laughs> and they said that I was going to have a baby boy in the future. Obviously misread my name and thought it said Amanda or something like that. Right, right, <laughs> and then they right. saw the picture mm. of me and just went, yeah. So, yeah, they are all frauds. And uh, Tim Minchin puts it really well in a song. He goes, uh, they're either liars or mentally ill. And I think that's, that's probably quite accurate. They either believe it. Which you know isn't true. Sorry to any psychic mediums listening, by the way. You um, know, or they're you just know what you're doing. They're, yeah. they're lying to exploit <laughs> people at their at their lowest, which isn't. Mm. Do you think they're still Trish also? Look nice. Do you think they're also fooling themselves? Well. So they're like. <laughs> Do you think they also believe that they have this ability? Uh, or do you think some of them know that they're just? Exploiting people. I, no, I, I don't think the majority do because you have to learn those techniques. The hot and cold reading learn. thing, you actually have to like... Oh, like like a psychological trick. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. So like there are, there the suggestion various, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so you, you have to study that, don't you? You have to you have to learn how to exploit people. Right, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Horrible. Um, You've made a living out of it. I was hoping you'd go for the... <laughs> I was hoping you'd go for the Uber one, because then I could talk about my bad Just Eats experience this week. Oh, well, go we, Oh, he has picked the Uber one. Where are you going? Yeah, well, so... Ages ago now, remember there was a bloke like called Mamadou who, I, I, yeah, this was 
years ago now. I forgot you must well, have been it's here. Been, it was worse than him, I think. So I ordered a Greg's the other day at work because I thought, I'm back from my walk. I have a Greg's. You it's ordered a Greg's? Yeah, yeah, I know, because I was at work. And the nearest one is on Shields Road, which isn't a big walk, but I thought, I'll order oh, it. Okay, yeah. And um, I click on the map a bit later, and he's on the Biker Bridge, which is fairly nearby, so without giving away. <laughs> um, so I go outside, and I wait for him. And like five minutes passed, and I was like, oh, he should definitely be here by now. So I'm back inside, clicked on the map. He's in Gateshead. Like, the... So, okay. He's he's got for those who don't understand the geography here, the drive from that shields uh, that that shields road Greg's to here is like two minutes, three minutes. He's gone twenty five minutes away. It's he's like, crossed a river. He's crossed a river. Mm. He's not even in like Gateshead city centre. He's like <laughs> South Gateshead. He's gone. He kept going, and every time I check the map, he's getting further south. And I'm like, he's got my Greg's. One of the elements of the Greg's was a coffee, warm. I'm I'm panicking <laughs> by this stage. Um, then I get I'll read it. I'll read. It. Oh, do you want to play him? You can be. What's the his name? I don't know. I just got a text from a number that I never had. Uh, I have arrived. Can you came out, please? <laughs> and I was cross because I put, I am in Newcastle. The map says you are 25 minutes away. And he said, I don't know, but location token me wrong address, but I will go back again. So he comes back, right? Doesn't go across the Tyne Bridge, but goes across a more westerly one. Yeah. So he's just not, he doesn't know where he is. So at this point, I accidentally made a joke that made me sound racist, but I wasn't. But he turned, I went to Aiden. Imagine if he imagine if he gets to the city centre and then goes to the West End instead. Imagine if he goes the wrong way. And he I checked the map again. I went, Aiden, he has. I turned around, I was like, Aiden, he's gone. He's turned up Westgate Road. Is he going to the mosque? Because there's a mosque on Westgate Road. But it sounded like I was assuming the religion or the race of the driver involved. Well, I wasn't. He literally was next to the mosque. So I went, is he going mosque? But I didn't mean... Suddenly that writer for Dewey... No, 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 no. <laughs> So after furiously clarifying to my colleagues that I'm not racist in any way, he then finally, he for, then finally made it. the third time it. that week. He then, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> he then finally made it. And I got outside and he parks in like a puddle. So he gets out and he's like, oh, and he's slowly stepping like round the puddle. I think he's going to hand me my Greg's. He instead he reaches out. He's got his phone in his hand with Google Maps open and Google Maps is showing the route that he took to that place in Gateshead, he went, look, see? And I'm like, yeah, what? But because I'm a coward, I was like, yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, it's cool. Then he reaches, goes around to the boot. It's locked. He goes back around the puddle, into the car, unlocks the boot, back around, open, give me the... How was the coffee? Stone, so cold, so like, cold man. So yeah. stone cold. What race was he? <laughs> <laughs> it's irrelevant. Yes. It the is, human man. race. That's right. Yes. So... You're now colorblind. <laughs> Rest in peace, Darius. <laughs> no, no, I was doing the David Brent one. <laughs> but yes, rest in peace, Darius. Well. Right, I'm doing us a favour of moving on. Um, those are your three picks, believe it or not. I'm the going longest Hall of Fame segment Parker. ever. Oh, yeah, God, I'll, yeah, sorry. I'll stick with that. Oh. Yeah, that Trish thing went down like a fart in church. You were meant to have seen it. She's just... <laughs> Go on, yeah. in the segment. In the segment. The pick is Matt... Trey Matt Stone and Trey Yeah, Parker, the South Park yeah. lads. Uh, Jack's People of all races. <laughs> Racist, <laughs> yeah, yeah. racist driver World story. Peace is my Hall of Fame pick. <laughs> That's right. No, mine was um, that Ben Askren's tweet to his wife. Yes. And mine Big was Luke Osborne's taking full credit for Jeff Cobb as Panda. <laughs> mm. Sorry, little bike, big man, Panda. Chibi. It's all the key words there for all the <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Because then you can also unsubscribe <laughs> <laughs> on that same page. <laughs> This is this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in wrestling. Oh, oh it's going to be good. This week in wrestling starts off with SmackDown, Chopping Woods. Oh, it's good, that. It's good, that. The Judgment Day beat Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar in a tag match. Damien Priest cuts a promo on Bad Bunny afterwards. Can you roll your R's? No. Let's go. I can only do that with my mouth. Nice. Ooh, that's good. I like that. Uh, this was as good as that. <laughs> yeah, right. Work well together. I'm liking the Judgment Day taking on the LWO. Nice Puerto Rican flag design for the LWO as well, which I originally didn't realize and thought was actually a Stars and Stripes American one until I got rinsed on Facebook. I'm an idiot. Don't know what I'm talking about. I, I like the match and I like the the um, the feud, but I, 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 I hope that this LWO thing isn't permanent for Santos Escobar and his lads because I like them when they were slick men. 
not crowd weren't into it though, were they? Yeah, they're getting good reactions. They're, they're I know the baby faces now. Now everything. they're like Rey Mysterio's little buddies, and some... yeah, yeah, but they are apparently. I think they're going to be sticking around for a while. They are selling lots of T-shirts. Are they? According to the sales oh, yeah, on the com. It's weird that. What do you, no, 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 no. saying the crowd were. Oh, the crowd well, were. Too busy. No, the crowd are into them now. Oh, the, crowd they were, they, the crowd weren't into right, it as much right. when they were the. I, I know that baby faces and heels oh, and yeah, all yeah, that, but I don't think people were investing when they were. I, I'm with you. I think it's going to be an upgrade. Okay, people yeah, aren't really buying them because we haven't given them any character. Hey, friends of Rey Mysterio. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Fair Worst enough. places to be, right? Yeah. yeah Mates with Rey Mysterio. I, I, wish they had won, I wish they had started the faction about a month before so they could have won. Before they just lost and lost and lost, because <laughs> yeah. they, I don't think Rey Mysterio might have won a match or two as the as the leader, but the rest of the lads I haven't won as far as I, yeah. I know. It well, would, if they're making Rey look good, I mean, I mean, I mean, Rey is the ultimate underdog, as they say. He is every time he wins a match, but uh, I like they're, they're building up for obviously the Bad Bunny mm-hmm. thing. Damien Priest not liking him, the Bad Widow Bunny. Zelina Vega asks Adam Pearce for a title shot against Rhea Ripley at Backlash because she wants to represent her Puerto Rican heritage. She's and Pearce goes, maybe. <laughs> <He's> one, <laughs> wait one second, I'll check. She says something really funny. It was really, really out of character. She went, I know what you're thinking. She's Rhea Bloody Ripley. It's like, oh, <laughs> that doesn't sound like that. Oh, not what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. No. It's supposed to be like Seth Freakin' Rollins. <laughs> she calls herself Rhea Bloody Ripley. Like, she doesn't. I think <laughs> Zelina Vega might have a history of this because when she was a, the, the Queen of the Ring thing, wasn't she doing a British accent as well? Wasn't she occasionally slipping into a bit of a British accent in promos? I think I'm so. your queen. Yeah. She's been practically watching the Best of Liz tapes. Best of Liz. Liz, Queen the Elizabeth II. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I'm aware. But why? HRH. <laughs> yeah. The best of her. Has she got a best of, has she? Yes, oh, yes, it's a real tape. Wrestlers, isn't your, <laughs> so the joke here is your... Yeah, I got on the back page of Power Slam <laughs> no, magazine no, when I was I a kid. Understand, I understand the... Yeah, I have one Benoit, one I leg, I want to need I understand the joke, but I don't understand the foundation upon which it is built. So the construct here is that you're mocking the, the idea of wrestlers watching old wrestlers to see, to learn and... Yes. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've missed you so much, Jack. Who knew that Ross was the glue? Who knew that he was the one <laughs> like, keeping this from... He was sniffing it. Kareen and Africa. So, what? Uh, yeah. Excuse um, me. And is that silver vision? Yes. Yeah, okay. Carry on for her. It's <laughs> my way. We see a video package again about the return of Shinsuke Nakamura next week. And I thought this was well done. Emphasizing I love the, it. Uh, the striking aspect of his abilities, mm-hmm. uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu. Reeks of Triple H, doesn't it? The video package. Oh, right. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it reeks of Triple H. I th- yeah, I, th- I think it's really good. Um... I'm a little bit like lukewarm on the idea of him feuding with Cross as is the first feud because I just don't care about Cross. Well, I think that's it. Though, he's all. a stepping stone. Stepping stone. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, fine, I, I guess. But oh, I don't know. I, I just I can't get excited about anything that Karrion Cross does. It, it was funny, like, oh, who's he taking on? And Karrion Cross is like, I will take it. Ah, oh, it is. Yeah. And all he's got to brag about is battering Riddick Moss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done. It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that and a five will get you a meal deal, pal. Braun Strowman and Ricochet win an attack match against the Viking Raiders. And I just was very impressed with how Braun Strowman and Ricochet have suddenly become this nice little tag team together. They're fun, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, Ricochet takes all the heat, takes the tag to Braun, he's a train, uh, throws him at the Viking Raiders. There was an awkward bit where Braun threw Ricochet and Ricochet fell on the nout. And uh, the commentators were like, well, that didn't work. And then Braun, after obviously he made the tag, went on the ring apron and fell over. And Brian Alvarez had a good old time laughing at that. Uh, yeah, he got concussed. Right. Oh, yeah, Alvarez laughed was... at it. Oh, pr- before oh so did I. I mean, oh, it was. Before, yeah. before, yeah. yeah. before, yeah. before, before you know that, he's really like, yeah, uh, yeah. big, dumb, stupid, bro. Oh, he concussed, right? Yeah. That's actually bad. I know. Hopefully he's all right. Um, yeah. I was enjoying it up until then as well. But, yeah. yeah. I think they might keep them together with the yeah. with the draft coming up. Because I think it's good. I think it's the, the most fun that Braun has probably ever been. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. probably my favorite time of Ricochet on the main roster as well. Maybe, yeah. I think Ricochet, I, I think absolutely. His tag together. team with um, Alistair Black was good as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But about it's always that. been in a tag team, hasn't it? Yeah. Strange. Yeah. But no, I, it, seemingly it was done, wasn't it because Braun was a bit of a bell end on Twitter or it's something? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. him and, uh, off the flippy guy, so they put him with a flippy guy for a laugh. Yeah, him and Omos had a banger unexpectedly mm. at Crown Jewel. And then on the way back home, Braun's like, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Get stuff, flippy dude. <laughs> yeah, and they landed, and everyone's like, "You're a dick." Yeah, yeah. Why, why are you why are you getting this? Like, you've been so good, so nice backstage, and everything else. Because the report that Braun Strowman was disliked strongly during his original run. Can't imagine um, that. Yeah, can't imagine that at all. And uh, so it's like, well done. So they put him with had Ricochet beat him on TV, and you thought, oh, that's the punishment. But now he's been stuck with them. 
But it's been and fun. I've been, I've been nice yeah, little been matches. Good, yeah. yeah, they've been good. Yeah. It was like watching the Braun Strowman of old after he yeah. after he got knocked loopy because he couldn't run the ropes anymore. Yeah, he was, right. yeah. He was like running at it half speed and emphasizes how much he's improved. Yeah, it really yeah. does. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good way to look at that. Uh, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez retained the tag belts against Chelsea Green and Sonia Deville after lots of cheating. Yes, get in. Except no, yeah, you're right. Actually, boo, they cheated. Yeah, she poured she poured water on her. And then Raquel did the old yeah, did the... holding her legs down. With mm. Yeah. And I don't care about the tag team. I, Liv and Raquel, I would love more if they didn't smile <laughs> forced like that. They're like Tony Blair in the campaign. <laughs> I make all my references so Pachita can get them. What is it about <laughs> Raquel that makes WWE insist upon making her smile when she's a big badass lady? Yeah. You don't need her to smile. I know, I know. <laughs> it's not even a good smile. It's yeah. Oh, she looks very pretty. How dare you? She'd be the next China, shouldn't she? Just, yeah, just, just yeah. doing this with her. No, I, I struggle to care either. No, she's got a yeah. big back. That's her other thing as well. She goes, yeah, big back, but smiles. But then she looks over her shoulder now and smiles. Oh, yeah. well, look, I've worked really hard on my back. I'm like, we can tell. Yeah, we yeah. don't smile about it. Hey. And the death on the mic, it's got to be said. Oh, but lives charismatic. Lives all right, yeah. Which yeah. is all right. I'm so, so annoyed at myself. I went to look at the next bit. I hate that I've just done this. What's happened? I went and used my finger on a bit of paper to scroll up the text. <laughs> Instinctively. No, that sucks. Didn't. I went, wow. yeah, no. and then I'm like, no, you didn't I did. do that. That's to God. mad. Oh, no. That's really something, that. You can take his arm back and old yell at me now. <sighs> I hate that. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I've never heard that before. No. I thought, well, you, I thought you were going to say, like, oh, I, I reached no, my I went, reading I, glasses or something like that. Like that. You literally oh, scrolled a piece of A4. Why is the text not moving? I thought you'd, like, wet yourself Try or something. Try and scale it up. Yeah, what? like, I did it. I went, oh. I mean, oh, for... My nan doesn't do that. <laughs> what a... You're caught between generations, you. I really am. Wow. <laughs> making the mistake... I'm the last VHS making, in Oxfam. Making the mistake of an old person yeah. with the technology of a... Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So everyone's like, oh, I don't agree with Matthew's point, but then again, he is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Could the retain the IC title against Xavier Woods, who bravely gets battered? Yes, he did. I think they did a hell of a job here to make Xavier Woods look competitive as, as much as he could be, considering I think Pumper Jack had as much chance of him as winning the title against Gunther, he's, but he's, it was still a lovely little match. Yeah, there's a before and after picture of his chest. And he's going, I've not my, seen that. There's just one of him backstage. This is my chest with pre Gunter and then one after as well, and it was all nice. chopped up. Yeah, Take Gunther, I, not even once. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that that was his first shot at the IC title. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. well, I, I got a look in cage match, make sure I wasn't pulling yeah, porkies. Me too. And, yeah, I was like, no, surely, surely. You know what? With performances like that, the real ultimate underdog, Xavier Woods, he's mm. going to have his own Kofi Mania in like five years' time. Mm. Even though he doesn't want it, even though his whole thing has been, I want to be king of the ring and I'm not bothered about anything else, I think he's going to get this groundswell of support from the fans who are like who force him into the main event picture at the very least. And That'll I think cool. he'll probably... Yeah, I think it'll be brilliant. I think he's a good backup in case, you know, people get hurt or whatever and they need somebody to go against, you know, the unlikeliest person ever because he is that charismatic and talented. And, yeah, oh, he's yeah. amazing. And hot. A so friend, it's a nice to Matthews see that. Also. Uh, a friend of Matthews, that's just nothing to do with it. Absolutely oh, you not. won't know this. So one time <laughs> on AW, um, it was OS, you know OSW Review. Mm -hmm. They're reviewing an AW show. And at OOC, the very dry one. Who loves me. Goes, um, looking at Eva, he's like, looking at Eva Luno. Basically saying the state of him. He's got to be a friend of Matthews. <laughs> 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 and then I think you have correspond. You have I, I could. Because I, 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 I am a mate of his. Yeah. But... <laughs> It wasn't said complimentary, but I'm trying to turn it into a spin. Like, look yeah, at this, isn't look it this, great? And they, who knows how stupid? He's he knows what they were saying. Like, <laughs> you've got handsome mates as well, Xavier Woods. As Uno well, might, Uno, Uno, Uno getting done Uno dirty might be here. Handsome. We don't know. He oh, I've seen a picture of him. He's not. Oh, I'm joking. Oh, he's a really, handsome I, 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 man. Yeah. All he's in. We're still available for press passes. He's a good-looking lad. Fair enough. Yeah, Xavier yeah, Woods is hot, though. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, of course he is. Uh, maybe not the hottest in the nude. Oh, why are we talking about this? I don't know. Oh, I think he is. No, Actually, I'd no, say. yeah, I do think he is. Yeah, I do. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, you know. But they're all. Ooh. But some, I mean, Big E will be some people's type to a T, for example. We did the handsome man bracket the other week. We don't need to. Yeah. yeah. We can always do it Roman again. won. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, the Usos cut a promo saying they don't know how to feel about losing at WrestleMania because they don't look back. They say they'll win their rematch and dedicate it to the Tribal Chief before bringing out Solo Sokoa for the main event. 
I thought they were very good here because the nice little storyline right now was, are the Usos on the outs with the tribal chief? So mm -hmm. it's them going, we're not upset. Yeah, no, 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 no. Every everything's fine. And this decision to dedicate their assumed win to Roman yeah. Reigns kind of informed the whole of Raw. Like the, that was the main storyline running through Raw next yeah. the next week. I know the, the intensity they're doing is like, ring your mother and tell them there's a rematch next week. Yeah. They're so good. They've been my favorite tag team in wrestling now for years. Yeah. Um, but one thing that they do, I think, better than anybody else is because of the natural chemistry between them. It's not like when they're cutting a promo, it's not like one is waiting for their turn to talk. It just flows so beautifully. They, they, they're fade amazing. In like that. Oh, wait, I just tried to do it and failed. Sorry, I tried to do it. I thought that's like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. No. And Solo beats Matt Riddle in a no DQ match. Ha ha. The Usos get involved at one stage and put Riddle through a table after the bell. Yeah. They certainly did. Solo's been booked very strong. He is against everybody but Cody Rhodes. Oh, he lost a house show match, didn't he? To Cody. It was on Raw. Was it, was it on? Oh, I think he's lost course, two, sorry. Maybe, yeah. But, but he cost him at WrestleMania. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> no, not good. Cody deserved it. No, he day. didn't. I'm still, not over, I'm still not over it. Uh, also, oh. just before this, we got some matches announced for WrestleMania Backlash. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Omos. Hmm. With absolutely no build. Uh, even Rollins tweeted, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like a sold show or something. But yeah, Matt Riddle in his job here of getting beaten. You know, he's the LWO to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens' uh, Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Yeah, I got that out. It was, well good, it was a good main event, I guess. Just to go back to the Rollins-Omos thing there, I don't think that you can win booking Omos in a match with anybody. Yeah. So I think if anyone on the roster and... Imagine the fan reaction to it. Let's say he gets booked against Baron Corbin, right? Fans are just going to be like, oh, God, that's boring. I don't care about that. That's mm -hmm. the, why is that on pay-per-view? You put him up against someone like Seth Rollins, who is near the top of the company, is an incredible worker, possibly the best in the world, and you're also going to get that negative reaction. Name one person that fans wouldn't negatively react to an Omos match. Yeah. MVP, maybe. Maybe MVP for the story. Maybe... If it was Gunter, it would just for the novelty just to see him chop this big. That's big true. Amount. That's a good but, shout. But people would say we'd rather see Gunter against someone he can have like a five, like a yep. banger of a match mm. with. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say it's a lose lose with Omos just because if he beats someone, they've lost to Omos. It's harmful to them. But if you use Omos for kind of his purpose in wrestling, which is to put over the smaller, braver babyface. How many times can he lose before it doesn't matter anymore that he's losing? Because he's lost yeah. to Lesnar, he's probably going to lose to Rollins. The next time, people are going to go, does it almost be anyone? Like, it's not going to be the same. Yep. Mm. That's analysis. That's analysis. Yeah. That's what we do on the show. AW Rampage. Let's just say Jeff Hardy moved me to a bigger house. Hey. Mm. John Moxie. That's for right. you. <laughs> for you <laughs> there. It's more of the Usos chemistry. John Moxley chokes out Christopher <laughs> Daniels in the opening match of the night, but uncharacteristically breaks the hold immediately after the bell and shakes Daniels' hands afterwards. Possibly a fan of his work directing everything everywhere all at once. Daniels. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. That was good. That was, was an attempt. I've been in You know what? You put more stream. effort with that no, than I, Rampage put in the entire I episode. I saw a lot of comments being like, we love Ross's notes. And I was like, was quite insecure about it. So uh, that was my attempt to spice it up. Because Ross went on something. You can tell he was on the medication or whatever to make himself feel better. He typed up the notes because they were all out of the place. Oh, I thought he was just insisting that I go to an Italian restaurant with my laptop. He did bring that up every three seconds, yes. I will. Let's see if you, how many times you mention I'll it. I'll have to do it at some point. Mm. Probably anyway, by this I see the first comment on the podcast it's every, every week, week is... man. Do you know where it started? <clears throat> no. So Norm MacDonald died mm. and Matthew nominated him for the Hall of Fame. Nice. I nominated, I'd been for an Italian meal with my girlfriend and... That's the position, sorry. <laughs> it comes back to Norm MacDonald. <laughs> beloved, just, okay. beloved comedian that's not just dies. Like, that's not just like an establishing shot. Yeah. It was the week Norm MacDonald died. <laughs> um... I'd been for a meal with my girlfriend at an Italian restaurant and there was a couple near us who didn't order any food. They just ordered like a drink each, Got both got their laptops out and were just, but it's not like a cafe, it was a restaurant. And then they left and I found it really weird at the time. So I brought it up on the podcast and they've this couple, whoever they are, have received a groundswell of the support and people go, no, they're allowed to do that if they want. And, um, and now it's been, so I said, right, if that, if Norm MacDonald doesn't win the Hall of Fame, 
I will take my laptop to an Italian restaurant. And you've not done it. And Norm Macdonald lost the Hall of Fame because people wanted to see me do that and embarrass <laughs> myself. Which Matthew pointed out is exactly the sort of thing Norm Macdonald would have been in favour of. Oh, yeah, he would have loved it. He would have loved that type of comedy. So, there we go. I hope he's listening up there. Yeah. I think that's a nice... Oh, he's a big wrestling fan, Norm Macdonald. Now he's dead. And I've not not done it yet. They won't let up. Remember Sam and his hat? Yeah, yeah. That went on for ages. Sam and his hat. Didn't he end up being like an edible hat or something? Yeah, like a nacho hat. Well, anything, everything. can't eat a hat. We looked for... (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't have to say that. But we looked for edible hats, and it's not something that's readily available. So, in essence, he ate about 1.5 kilos of fondant. Is that a lot? For fondant, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, that's <laughs> that's a lot yeah. of sugar Ooh, in there. Very that. rich. Yeah. Ooh, right. So that everything's edible if you try hard enough. Mm. But, uh, and also, I had to point out that I said that thing. Oh, as if Steve Austin's going to come back and have a competitive match at WrestleMania. You guys are stupid and foolish. I'll have one of those bastard spices that's in the fridge. Yeah, the um. So Steve Austin with the matches of the year against Kevin Owens and thought, oh bollocks. So did you did do that. it? Yeah. Oh, do you not? Did know? you keep him waiting? No, it was this. It was like the week. I said next yeah, week. The I said next oh, week I'll do it. it. Did it the week after. And it was yeah, yeah. even worse though. The thing was, it was oh god, I'm never doing it again because I got my. Na- you're supposed to have milk or stuff. I'm lactose intolerant, mm-hmm. so I couldn't have milk. So what non-lactose milk? Only be told afterwards that the stuff that makes milk uh, nice for spicy stuff isn't in. Uh, it's part of the lactose. So all I did was have a really spicy thing down an entire uh, bucket of non-lactose stuff. I just felt very very bad. For several I'm hours not surprised. Afterwards. Oh, yeah. I don't know what was worse. <laughs> Would you it rather was... have gone to an Italian <laughs> restaurant with your laptop? Yeah, but that's not an issue for me. I don't mind. Uh, I put would... that thing. I'd, I'd be watching films with the the, the volume count, the speakers, and just like, <laughs> people have recently. Oh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> that wouldn't, wouldn't bother me at all. But obviously, Jack's a different type of person. So. People have recently been complaining, comparing me unfavorably to Andrew, of course, who took that body pillow to a restaurant mm. a good pet bet. Yeah, and had a good. date with it and everything, not knowing that he did that voluntarily. That's his idea of a good weekend out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the result of a bed. No, it was. Didn't know the cameras <laughs> were there. <laughs> oh. Sorry. That's all CCTV. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Anyway, right. Do you um, want to come with you? What? No, it's got to we'll be... We'll say on, we're on a date. It's got to be on my own. I want to... I'll get up the way. I, the, the right time to have done it would have been when I first watched The Godfather and to have made this, the, the restaurant the scene. You kept on bringing up how many times you've seen The Godfather. It's like, <laughs> where they famously go to I've never, Italian I've never seen it. And then I watched it and I was like, now we should, do, we should recreate that scene with me and a laptop. And the laptop behind the laptop toilet. behind the cistern, and uh, try, yeah, and uh, but it's gone now. I've already seen the Godfather. I reckon we toss a coin right now, right? No, I don't and if like it's me. heads, you take a desktop in. <laughs> <laughs> What's in it for me there? Two screens. What's in it for me? <laughs> what, and if it's tails, what? He's it's like, not, what can uh, I get you, sir? Can you get one of those multi socket, pal? <laughs> The table by the, t- tails, by the wall. Tails, you don't have to do it. No, no I, you no, should do it. You should do I, it. I, I should do it. Heads, you do it. Tails, you do it. Oh, this is not... Side, even, you It's do not it. even... In the grand scheme of things, that Scott Steiner thing outside King's Cross was pretty embarrassing. Was, the laptop wouldn't be as bad as that. But outside King's Cross, everyone just assumes that you're up to something. Oh, King's Cross, though. You can be on fire. Yeah. And no one's going to look at you twice. Yeah. But the restaurant was, like, quite small and family That's ran. And That's it. Does it have to be that one? Well, we don't know where it was, so you can go to any. Ah, right, true. Yeah, fair enough. As long as they've got, as they got, hey, what's the matter, you playing on the, the background? That's what they're playing. It's Italian. They play did the one in Bishop Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's Amore and all that. I like the fact that sometimes I will overshare because I'm reading about something on Wikipedia or I've watched a film or TV series and start talking about how great it is. And that's my version of oversharing and maybe it's mild OCD or whatever the hell. But like Jack's way of doing that is sharing like, well, one time I went outside and somebody looked at me and I looked away and I wonder if that guy thought about that an hour later yeah, like the, I did. The other day, it's amazing. That's such the other a day, lovely insight into Jack's The other head. day, Ashton from Triple Jump asked me if I was going to grow some self-confidence. It was a cutting remark. She yelled at you, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. Oh, she hates me. <laughs> what did you do? Stole this bear that they'd been given and put it outside the office. Or like upside down. I it was like the first week that I met her though, so I don't think I thought we were perhaps more friends than we were. <laughs> and then oh. she shouted at me, and I realised I've overstepped a banter boundary here because they got sent this bear called like Dunkelskirk or something from IKEA. Yes. And it was sent to them by a YouTuber, so they named the bear Emma because she's called Emma or something. Right. It was a gaming thing. Yeah. And the bear would, I'd go to the toilet, come back, and the bear would be wearing my hat and my headphones on my chair. And sat as if, oh, the bear is Jack. So I started like leaving the bear in, I thought, hilarious situations oh. upside down, outside the door. <laughs> and then she, she quickly nipped that in the bud. She went, no, none of that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I didn't realize they, so they'd done it to you. 
you yeah, into yeah, them yeah. and they yelled at you. Yeah. Oh. Well, they was just Ashton to be I fair. love that. hilarious situations upside down, <laughs> outside the door, <laughs> wearing his hat. Well, that was them. They put the hat on it. And, yeah. yeah. Not as bad as in a previous job when, oh, no. Let's carry on with Rampage. Oh, okay. Uh, we could just let them talk then. <laughs> Smart Mark Sterling and Jade Cargill are interviewed backstage. They say that Taya Valkyrie will be DQ'd if she uses the road to Valhalla next week. Ooh. I kind of like it. I know, I know it's nothing. It's, it's not revolutionary or anything, but I think Jade Cargill's defense is maybe a little bit stale at this point. At least it's throwing something of interest in there. I but should point out, me and Ashton are fine now, just in case anyone thinks there's actual beef. Mm. She saved Coldaholic FC when I was away, famously. So that, yes. Sorry, yes. I don't mind the stipulation as well, but I thought I think I've been proven wrong. I thought Tyre Valkyrie was going to be the for the person who eventually we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll actually, that, yeah. sorry. Yeah. The Hardys come out with Isaiah Castine Hook. Jeff says he's glad to be back, but his only choice is to retire. <gasps> From screwing up. Oh, oh he's so funny. God. Stokely Hathaway interrupts on the Tron to ask for details about the firm deletion match. And they go, you'll find out the results, oh, sorry, the, the rules when we get to that match. And then Stokely Larissa goes, oh, that's fine. Yeah, no worries. I'm working on being a better person anyway, so I'll see you then. Just to distract him when <laughs> his lads go and beat him up. I howled of laughter at that moment. Mm. He's the best, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. I, I got some negative comments for like about a year ago saying that I think Stokely Hathaway has the potential to be the next Bobby Heenan, but I stand by those yeah. words entirely. He's that good. Like yeah. He's so funny, so quick. The, the thing with the Heenan, the Heenan family, apart from old Red Rooster, they had some really like big, big names in mm. there, didn't he? He was managing the top dogs, and Stokely Hathaway has never had that honour, has he? Yeah, if he was no. given... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Imagine if he was the manager of Omos. Not, nothing against MVP. Uh, that would be if, really funny. Imagine if... In fact, I think he may have been in NXT, but they, he's never had it on a big platform, has he? Mm. He's never really... Yeah. 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 Give it's him, a shame there's like 15 of the managers at his level with... A random assortment. I mean, he instead oh, well. of QTV, if you really want to give Powerhouse Hobbs a manager, you could have given him Stokely Hathaway, for example. Yeah. Oh, well. What could have been? Julia Hart beats Kira Hogan, a.k.a. the f only time you'll see a Hart being a Hogan. Oh, hey! Whoa! <sighs> Go on. It's like 93 in Brett's head. But it's that by <laughs> Anna Jay afterwards. They have a pull-apart brawl afterwards. Yes, they do. Yes. Um... Don't mind this. I think the people wanted to cheer Julia Hart for a while because she's now a, a cool goth lady with the House of Black. So I think mean, that's good. I don't know why they didn't show her entrance in that case. Did they not? No, ah. I don't think. Uh, on the copy yeah. that I watched, which was... Um, oh, they don't care on, about Rampage. I don't know. On Fight TV, yeah. obviously, yeah. Uh, no, it was. It was. It was. <laughs> they didn't God. show her entrance. Yeah, they didn't show her entrance. Well, well, she's over, so much she's getting cheered. Why not hammer that home? There's right, so much stuff on, um, on Rampage, you know. They couldn't fit it oh, all in. Oh, man. And now they've got another show. Although Dark Elevation's ending, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they did like a best of, yeah. Like, so Tiny TV said the last of the la the last of Dark Elevation. On so the, I guess the now everything will move like one down. The, so Dark will become what Dark Elevation was. And I'll be honest, Dark Elevation was just, I'll watch this because it's on. You liked it's Dark, didn't you? I love Dark. Because of Taz and Excalibur's commentary. Exactly. Because they're just messing about. Yeah. Right, fair enough. The two silly buggers, mm. a.k.a. A.W. Dark. Mm. Is uh, Big Show still on? He was uh, on Dark, Dark Elevation, Elevation with... Um, Matt Stryker. No, God. No, the lad from uh, right. 3.0. Oh, Magic. Daddy, Matt Daddy, Daddy, Daddy I have to remember, because I had like 15 different names, so I always forget what it is. Him. He was the funny. Dark Elevation commentator. Yeah, big show. Before he was in the JS. No, no, that's what he's doing now. Is he? They've, they've gone back to the commentator. Wow. Because Mark Henry was doing I it for bet a bit. He's a funny commentator, actually. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah, fair but enough. But Big Show's actually very good. Hmm. Our little dude, because he always, often comments and goes, Whoa, I, I couldn't do that move. Like that, so. <laughs> I'm really selling it now. Now it's dead. Big show could do Somebody some doing a clothesline. Hey. <laughs> he could do some stuff in the 90s, couldn't he? He did the moonsault. Yeah. Lost wrestling media, that. Yep. Never seen a clip of it. I'd yeah. love to. Oh. The photos they did backstage in training or whatever, like to show we could do it, and no one wanted to take it. Oh, Everyone went, F that. One of my biggest disappointments trying to interview a wrestler and being rejected was uh, the bloke who wrestled Bret Hart and then it came out years later it recently came out that, that Tom match. McGee Tom, Tom McGee. McGee yeah he was at Starcade or Starcast yeah, yeah. So Star, the, you interviewed him no no he turned us down me oh. and Sam were there <laughs> can we have an interview please and he's like oh I'll have to ask the bloke who, I'll have to ask Conrad yeah. and he never and oh. just, he, he was, probably had he probably done like Several interviews of people saying the exact same thing on over again. Oh, so like, hey, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, Bret Hart. No. Well, yeah. Because that was a weekend. Yeah, it was that, that um, 
I was double last in 2019, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Also, it got turned down by Mark Henry as well. Okay. Oh. He went, <laughs> we went, oh, can we interview you, please? And he went, who are you Who are you with? And we went, call the holic. And then I think Sam mentioned like YouTube and the subscribers and that. And he went, I'll pass. And threw a handful of peanuts in his mouth and turned away. <laughs> it's like, whoa. We need to get a BBC <laughs> microphone flag, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody with would turn With your face on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was the GM of WCW. <laughs> <laughs> uh, backstage, the BCC interrupt. I'll get a BCC microphone. The BBC one doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. Interrupt a Christopher Daniels interview, but Moxie again shows him respect. Daniels says that maybe Moxley still has some honor left in him. Then he gets absolutely battered. Well, he Moxie rams says, his head into the locker. And, yeah. oh. Moxie says the BCC haven't changed. Everyone else has. Okay. I think that's... He's got a point, but I don't think it's true. Like you could say, oh, they've always been vicious and everything, but they are they had that the regal the whole regal origin of the BCC was like, no, you've got to be competitive, and it's all about the competition. Moxley's he's taking things too far for me. It's some analysis there of his character. He's a bad guy. Yeah, he? he's a bad man. It was funny. It was weird that they did that. Like, oh wow, he shake he shook his hand after a meh match. Okay, and then backstage just batters him. Like, I like that though. I think I played out nicely because I was a okay. bit confused after the after the handshake. I thought it was all right. I thought they were going I'm... to recruit him. <laughs> But no. Oh, God, no. Do you not know, like Christopher Daniels? <laughs> no, but at this position, he's just, hey, it's that lad. Uh, he's one of the... He's not a guy who's like known for his like uh, that type the, of artwork that hope, the other guys do. As the cool kids say, I hope the people give him his flowers. That's what they say, don't they? Give him his due respect. If you like him, I guess. You can give him chocolate or... Because everyone now is always... Everyone's like very much like, AJ's one of the greatest. Samoa Joe's one of the greatest. Well, I want Daniels to also... Oh, be okay. That's like, in the sort of the impact. I think he's earned it several times, but it's, 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 yeah. it's weird. I see. Oh, he's still going. Oh, okay. He looks incredible. It's crazy. He's great. I think he's older than Bobby Fish. He... If that's possible. <laughs> he saved our show once. Daniels? Yeah, you remember he came over last minute and defended the Ring of Honor title. Oh, right, you are, yeah. Yeah, because someone, was someone was injured or something. It was in Nottingham, I think. Oh, okay. And it was like, here's fight a... Back, it was like, yeah. I think it was like Adam Cole was like, I can't defend the title. I can't fight you tonight, but I know someone who can. And the pop for Daniels was huge. Yeah. No one knew he was in England even, I don't think. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea. Great guy. Really nice, back, really polite, back, really lovely man. Oh, yeah, Get it I for remember. free. What? Nah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. FDR re- re- reluctantly team with Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal to beat Slim J and some lads. The Brisco- varsity athletes. I beg your pardon, the varsity athletes. <sighs> Mark Briscoe runs out afterwards to keep the peace between the two winning tag teams. Yeah. yeah. But I know they've only done it probably once before, but I'm getting flashbacks to when FTR came in for the first time and they were like, you've got a team with the Young Bucks before you fight them. And I don't care about them teaming with the team that they're going to then face for the belts and everything, all that. It's not. It doesn't get me going. <laughs> Gets the people go. Gets the people. It doesn't get me going. Bing bong, bing bong. Mm. It, it was all right. Yeah. Sanjay Dutt's good, isn't he? But the yeah. big pencil. I think he, I think he, I think he adds a lot, like... right? I could, just his facial expressions at ringside. Yeah. I just find myself really entertained by him, and I don't think he gets spoken about nearly enough for like he, yeah. maximizing his minutes and all that. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, fair I enough. Know, it's a CCW original, so I'll always love Sanjay Dutt. And yeah. and Jeff Jarrett, obviously. Early X Division stalwart mm-hmm. as well. Yes. With this theme tune, that OSW mock all the time. Yes, they do. Yes. Uh, the main event, Drellistico challenges El Geo del Vikingo, the AAA Mega Championship, because you know what? We need more titles in AEW. Mm. Uh, Vikingo was attacked by Roosh and his dudes, but manages to retain the title, and they beat him down afterwards. They get... So, Drellistico, I think, is Roosh's brother, and they're both also brothers with Dragon Lee in NXT. Ooh. Wow. It's like Samoans. Yeah. Aye. I like this match though. Wrestlers in Mexico. Yeah, it was a good match. Yeah, amazing. I I worry about old uh, Vikingo. Just the stuff he does. That bump on the ramp and everything. Yeah, it's just you you can't do that safely for too long, can you? It's yeah. amazing. I love watching it because it's like watching a video game where you've got yep. all your finishes on. You do whatever you want. You're going to sign yourself every cool looking move. But yep. oh, I just hope it doesn't end in disaster for yeah, him because it's he, so mad. He does the the Lucha doors, stuff. they're all made of Teflon, it's all right. <laughs> but it, it, people were pointing out, okay, it was nice seeing Vikingo doing this thing, but it meant something when he was doing all this against a Kenny Omega. But it's like, oh, now it's against Drillistico. Oh, he's been built up so well in yeah, AEW. Right. And AW is guilty of this. It's like, this guy's a mega deal. And you're like, okay, then why do I not give a damn about this? And is it like, built into a... Eh. I assumed it was built into a, the real title match between like Roosh and Vikingo. 
You think but, so? Already, yeah. Like, yeah, but they did. They are guilty of doing that. Definitely. Yeah. Doing my um, monthly like solo podcast where I talk about the matches of the month. I'm worried that it's made me learn about myself that I just don't really like lucha libre as a style of wrestling. That's fine. Um, I feel sad about that. See, I'm the opposite. I I thought this was a throwaway match, but I like. Viking so much. I'm alright seeing him just wrestle something like Drillis to Co. For the hell of it. Because I made you go, yeah, I love Lucha. I like like the in... previous week, we had that, is it uh, Commander versus Jay White? When well, he did the. Yeah, he was supposed to build up to Jay White being a badass and also Sean Spears. He's getting built up. And all it made me want to go was like, I want to watch more Lucha. Yeah. But I guess I can see why if people wouldn't, wouldn't really like it. If there's a really good, if there's a Lucha match, and I can know, I, can, I like Lucha Underground, for example. And that was a lot of like silly Billy stuff sometimes. But. Sometimes it's too much for me. Like everyone liked that. You used to watch Super Card of Honor over WrestleMania weekend. No. There was a match between, I think, Vikingo and Commander, maybe. I think it was Vikingo versus Commander. That was a bit too much for me. Or I can't remember who it was exactly, but anyway. Yeah. The noise he made, Jack, when he saw this announced was Ah, which is the name of the company. Oh. Ho. Monday Night Raw. Did you know that Seth Rollins is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time? They've been really hammering this recently that Seth is one of the greatest yeah. ever. And he has a great theme song. And he has a guy on. Cody Rhodes opens the show and says it's his first time back in Chicago since the Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins, a match he credits the fans with helping him win. Ooh. He shows his pectoral scar and talks about Brock Lesnar, saying he's ready to get another one. Wee. Finn Balor interrupts and tells Cody that he lost at WrestleMania because he didn't have backup, and the same will happen against Brock. Balor offers Cody a place in the Judgment Day, but Cody turns him down. Finn tells him to watch his back, so Cody challenges him to a match tonight. Have you ever watched the Mr. Men animated series? <laughs> I have, yeah. You're, you went a bit like the narrator of that. Wasn't it about oh, Dad's Army? I'll take that. Mr. Happy went to the shops. Oh, wait, which guy from Dad's Army? Wasn't it Captain Mannering? Wasn't he the narrator for the Mr. Men series? I don't know. I don't think so. He'd be dead oh. by the point in time I came out. Oh, no. Have I made a huge mistake? Yeah. So I went so, so you think you are? there. Who do you think oh. you are trying to kid... Mr. Jack. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> You're trying to tell me that Captain Mannering used to narrate. Neville Chamberlain tweets you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. It's always good when you lose followers. <laughs> Mr. Because if you're not, you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to find out who narrated it. It was Bernard Manning. What? Not so you're your <laughs> favorite, <Captain laughs> favorite comedian. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Men narrator. Who is he played by, man? I'm on the Mr. Men wiki now. Oh. <laughs> it's got its own wiki. I guess, of course, it does. Well, well I guess one so. of the fan wikis. He was got Gordon Peters in the UK. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who that is at all. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe it was written by Captain Manorit? I don't no. know. <laughs> yeah, written by... <laughs> Him off the dad's army. What was I going to say? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So imagine Cody in the Judgment Day. That wouldn't be. That would be silly. That wouldn't look you know, right. goffed up, but he did do that in AEW. Oh, God, he did. Mm. He's got that he option black, of being yeah. evil Superman. Yes. Oh, he could be in the Judgment Day, but he didn't want to because no. he's a hero. I liked the... It was, oh, you showing off your scar. Uh, yes, I'm looking and seeing who the Mr. Man narrator was. Oh, you showing off your scar. I tried uh, we've all, Gordon we've, Phillips. We've all got... <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> we've all got them. You can stop looking with Gordon. And, yeah, but I know what you did. Mr. Tickle's funny, isn't he? I like him. Mr. Tickle. I liked Mr. Happy. He's just a nice man, right? Yeah. I like Mr... Is it Mr. Broken? He's covered in bandages. Mr. Bum, um, Mr. Mr. Bum, Broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Emotional Wreck. Mr. Bum. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was good. I like them saying, yeah, uh, speaking of which, he's like, yeah, we've all got scars, haven't we? And Seth's got that you rubbish for... You should do, you know, you used to do like Sabu dedicated botcha mania. Yeah, yeah. Was it Sabu mania? You call it? Yeah, yeah. Just do Mr. Bump mania. Just have all of his mistakes. Mr. Bump. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Bump falling over. <laughs> Mr. Bump going down some stairs. Oh, Mr. Bump's such a spot monkey. He needs to grab a <laughs> Hold like Mr. Tickle. <laughs> Mr. Bumps what <laughs> Mr. Bumps what Jack calls Lucha Doors. Um what are we talking about? Yeah, it's that, so it's Rolly, oh. Who's your favourite Mr. Man or Little Miss? Or Little Miss? They're equal. Bala has got the rubbish shirt. Done that? <laughs> <laughs> Bala. He's got the rubbish shirt saying 14 staples, but like Austin 316. But he mm. keeps talking about what was really vicious. And it was, but no one saw it. Because they could away. away yeah. So it's like, oh, that gruesome moment. It's like, well, we'll take your word for it, mate. He put it on Twitter. You can see it, can't you? Mm. You put the picture up. Yeah. But, 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 it's, but it makes it. WWE look a little bit hypocritical, maybe. Because they yeah. oh, you can't see that. Yeah, no, that's a fair uh, point. Well, it's, I, sorry, go on. It's just oh, my God. Know. To interrupt. Gordon Peters was from Shildon. 
in County Durham. Was he? That's a big deal for me. Sorry, Rose, it doesn't matter. Gordon. Well done, <laughs> He's from Shildon. Sorry. That, the three people that follow me from the area of that world are going to go, oh, my God. <laughs> well done, Please Gordon. carry on what we're talking about. I can't remember what I was going to say. The, the thing that I noticed uh, about, uh, one thing that I think they need is the commentary need to be given either notes on what Cody is about to say hmm. or avoid saying if they already have those notes. Because as he was approaching the ring... Um, Immediately, I think it was Corey started going, um, oh, this is the first time he's been back since Hell in a Cell. Uh, uh, and Brock is the most decorated combat sports athlete. And then Cody says the exact same thing, hmm. like word for word. And uh, C- Cody's whole thing, amongst all the melodrama and nonsense, is trying to feel genuine, isn't it? It's trying yeah. to have that human connection with the fans. And when Corey has just said what Cody then says, you lose some of that. Yeah. And I, I, I picked up on that, and I thought that's a bit. And also, it took him 39 seconds to take his shirt off, which I thought was a bit much. <laughs> you can tell, right, that one of Pacini's roles time it? in WCPW was he wouldn't that wouldn't have happened on his watch because he was the liaison between the commentary team. I'd have been down in the ring. <laughs> yeah, like, get your get your kid off. <laughs> no, I, I once did a stint on commentary for one match, and in the in my ear, she was the producer going, "Jack, take your top off, mate." Because we, <laughs> we were just <laughs> held it together really well. We were just blokes in a wrestling promotion having a laugh, weren't we? But I was furious. <laughs> that was my moment. And he tried. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I tried to hold Jack, it talk together. about his nipples. Talk yeah, about it was like nipples, that. <laughs> yeah. Italian restaurant. Italian restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, I get what you're saying, but the counterpoint to that is, well, the people in the arena can't hear the points that he's making. So Cody's going to go, hey, it's not yeah, just for the TV show. There's 15,000 in the arena, and there's however m- many hundreds of thousands. True. Millions for a live event, home. yeah. For, what do you mean? What? No, there's more people yeah, that, who would have heard what Corey said than didn't. Yeah, yeah. I know, but that he's also wanting to get reaction out of this live crowd. Or it's, you know, it's not SmackDown. They actually care yeah. about getting reaction out of yeah. Well, you've you got the reaction. They're, they're still super hot for it. What him. do you yeah. guys want to talk about? Yeah, all that stuff. I hate that. Is that his catchphrase? Yeah. Yeah, it's his catchphrase. <laughs> Russell's like saying the same thing over and over again. What do you yeah. guys want to talk about? He says it in such a sneaky little, little boy way, doesn't he? Yeah, and that... that people show, uh, God bless, uh, somehow the crowd were going, CM Punk, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about that? Yeah. yeah. That's, that is what, yeah. yeah so it well only done. works if he's talking about the actual thing that we want to talk about. Yeah. Do you not like that catchphrase? No, I think it's really bad. Oh. Yeah, don't do it. it doesn't do anything Are for me. Are you happy you lost at WrestleMania? Am I happy I lost? Are you happy that he lost at WrestleMania? Are you Mr. Happy? Oh, sorry. Um... No, no, I think it was a mistake, personally. Yeah. I, I, I totally understand why they did it. Um, I'm just not... Like, when he cycles back around, because I still think he'll win. I th- still oh, think he'll win the WWE right. title eventually. Um, but I just... if the, It felt like the timing was right. Will though. that moment, if it does happen, be bigger? Yeah, will yeah that be bigger after he's anyway? killed some time doing Brock Lesnar and all the other stuff, because yeah. it's, it's probably a, a way a ways. <laughs> he's going to lose to Brock, isn't he? Uh, the first time he might, yeah. And then they'll beat him again time. and then Triple rise H up. Is... Well, because they're not going to do it. They're not going to try to change it like WrestleMania Backlash or whatever. Thing. It... Gonna, it's got to be SummerSlam or WrestleMania. You'll know this, right? Is it Warhammer well, I... 40,000? Oh, here we go. Yes, that is. is renowned for its law being dark and depressing. Yes, that's right. Triple H is well, the done. Warhammer of bookers. <laughs> go like, on. his baby faces have to go through so much crap before they get a tiny glimmer of Aww. light. Yeah, well done. That's all right. Sweet. Yeah. I get that 40k likes. Okay. Uh, the Usos and Solo Sokoa beat the LWO in the six-man tag, because as you pointed out, they do lose a lot. They lose a world order, am I right? Afterwards, the Usos basically repeat their promo from SmackDown. Then later backstage, Sami Zayn confronts Jay and wonders why he's dedicating the match to, on Friday to Roman. Surely it won't look good when the Usos lose. Jay says, don't worry, we won't be losing. Yeah, but he, then backstage, later on, he, he was goes, confident at first. Hey, Jimmy. I talked to Sammy. <laughs> Why are you talking to Sammy? So I'm just saying, what happens if we do? Shut up, shut up. No, 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 no. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Later, lose. Jimmy confronts Zane and tells him that maybe he should worry about Kevin Owens' reaction when they lose the tag belts because there's no way Kev is really Sammy's friend again. That was a good point from Jimmy. Uh-huh. He's trying to play mm-hmm. mind games back. Yeah. Fair enough. Because, yeah, Kev has been mean to Sammy in the past. It's good. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a nice counterpoint point there about getting our heads about Roman. Here's our count point. Uh, shut up. <laughs> I, I love storylines where they acknowledge the past because really recently, WWE was so bad at acknowledging their own continuity and their own history. And I'm glad that this that's that's one of the big um, bonuses, or one of the big positives since Triple H started being more in a head creative role. Mm. Don't know if he is now like, but... Mm. Uh, He's a student of the game, that lad. Mm. Uh, in a interview... Where are we at? 
No, we're not. Backstage damage control interrupt the Bianca Belair interview. He calls them damage control. That's what he does. That's his joke. Like control over the control. Mm. So Homer says it on The Simpsons. Ah, oh, okay, right. Yeah, uh, everything's funny. Eo Sky wants to fight her tonight, <laughs> but Bailey turns into a six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, me and Ross, me and Ross have never once laughed at the Katar joke, but he just twists, he persists with it every week. <laughs> oh, I thought you said Katar at the beginning. No, damage Katar. Damage Katar. Mm. Yeah, that is fantastic. Thank I you. love that. Thank you. Finally, we got do down it all the end. The time, yeah. I'll do damage. What do you want to talk about instead? <laughs> In an interview, Trish Stratus says that. When they were still friends, Becky Lynch opened up to her about the pressures of being the top woman in the division. Trish can see Becky cracking and is going to put her out of her misery. Because mm. we've not heard from it. Becky even since Trish turned on her. Yeah. No, Good. she said she wasn't going to go to Raw tonight. <sighs> that was the week before, wasn't it? And but she still there. wasn't there this week. I, I love it. Like, bitchy, horrible Trish. Trish just making stuff up that yeah. Becky said. And the, oh, no, I think there is some truth to it. She might have said it. That's the thing. I don't think she There is some truth to what she's saying. It's like, look, I am... How dare you not thank me? I wouldn't be. The, you wouldn't be here. The I'm that, a trailblazer. The and she went. She went. She didn't go. Me and Lita headlined Raw. She went. I headlined uh, Raw. Yeah. The Kill fact that we've not seen Becky yet, we don't know if it's true or not. It's Schrodinger's. But it's not true, is it? I think it is true. No, because Becky's whole thing is that she's the man. No, and if that's all a facade, <laughs> don't make no. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. It started off. I thought you were mocking me, but then it sort of became Mr. Bean almost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't start with a Mr. No. Bean. Start about that relentlessly. What do you mean? When I dyed my hair, shaved my crappy little beard off. Nobody went, oh, he looks like Cody Rhodes. <laughs> they all said Mr. Bean, who doesn't have Mr. bleached Bean, blonde hair. Who, yeah, who's got black hair. I, I, I so on my that. face, actually, and I, uh, it, this I, wasn't on one stream. This was across loads Mr. of videos that I went on. I know my, yeah. my face without this <laughs> oh. is apparently like Mr. They Bean's Ron said, Atkinson, who is a, not a nice looking man. As well. could, oh, he's not bad. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> of course, <laughs> no, he is. He's not. He's still James A. Caster's girlfriend, apparently. Really? But yeah, apparently so. Yeah, right. she now goes out with um, Ron Atkinson. Wow. Ooh. Well, well, good, good for him there. <laughs> but he still does have like his face is comedic. It's like the most comedic face in when he's all doing of Mr. entertainment. Bean, when he's going like Hulk no, Hulk. just yeah. generally, it's just yeah. just a silly face. I think it? of him in whatever season of Blackadder is the Tudor season of Blackadder. Second, he's all like sort of suave. Then he's like mm, gr- thirty years ago. His beard. <laughs> 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 that was pre Mr. Bean. Yes. It was. <laughs> Um, I think today you look like Ryan Gosling in Drive. I was about to say, you've got the jacket. Thank you. Yeah, I've not yeah, seen yeah. it. Is that good? Yeah. Ryan he's... Gosling's a very oh, handsome yeah, yeah. one of the most oh, handsome yeah. men going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. He's, he's literally a Ken doll right now. Ah. It's good that... It's good that he hasn't deliberately tried to dress like Ryan Gosling in Drive because apparently when that film came out, lads started like uh-huh. trying to be Ryan Gosling in Drive. He was one for a while. It was like the oh my god, he's literally me for a lot of people. He's yeah, he's like the cool. Yeah. He's like what people wish they were. So yeah. you saw lots of people wearing his coat and like well, that's, it, that's all I need. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 because I'm so silent and. Oh. Joey Janela had it as his ring gear figure. No, hey. Joey, what are you doing? That's right, me, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I, the same thing. I bought Cody's coat, you know, with the fluffy collar that he used to wear when oh, he started nice wearing it. Because I thought it was a nice coat. And then you I really can't do that. No, 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 no. I just I bought one then. Oh, okay. Prime it's like a, a dark brown or black leather with the, yeah, with with the, the fluffy. Right, yeah. The sheepskin. Right. Yeah, yeah, sheepskin, yeah. Sheepskin, if I can get my words out. I like the thank you Trish thing. I think that's a really good <laughs> heel catchphrase, right? Why, no, right. no, no. The thank you. Uh, at the end, she went, thank you, Trish. And I think that's really good getting under the skin. And it reminded me of something that I did, which is my proudest work from what culture. I'm not saying she's watched it because nobody did, nobody <laughs> cared. Uh, but I did a thank you, Adam Pacitti video uh, <laughs> that we filmed on you the B side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the whole thing was on this, you know, this egotistical general manager oh, thing. Okay. And I, I wanted the, the, the crowd to thank me. And I did this whole video um, where it's like, oh, um, the wrestlers only have to work 10 to 15 minutes but I'm doing this every single day, <laughs> nine to five. Uh, and saying stuff like, oh, it's uh, this is about more than wrestling to me. It's about money too. And I was trying, yeah, but I think the whole, oh, you've got to thank me because she does have an incredible legacy, doesn't yeah. she? But to, to be great so renders, arrogant yeah. to great, great renders. <laughs> I think the best didn't go down well. The best thing I did was this pitch called Sims House, which didn't get picked up on, unfortunately. But you could do it on Twitch. Yeah, I don't, I know, know, you don't do, do it on do Twitch. It these days, but I did it with Ben. Once. Oh, yeah, you did, but you only got to create them, didn't you? Yeah, there wasn't enough time. Yeah. It was just, the idea was just us in The Sims. Just create us in The Sims and just see what happens. Um, will I become a rock climber or whatever? You know? And this wasn't a stream. This was a video series. Well, that people would it was going to be on Whopper Extra. 
wasn't it? No, so wasn't. there was no risk, really, was there? <laughs> now we are going on. <laughs> I remember the notes that came back because I compiled that document of pitches <laughs> for What Culture Extra, and I, I, I think the, whoever reviewed it, the boss, I think I remember which one it was. He just said, "Don't do that." <laughs> it's, it's Sims House, man. It would have been fun. Oh, it would have been better than the other crap we were oh, doing on yeah, there. To well. be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> That was so long ago now, right? Yeah. yeah. We've been doing this far longer than we ever worked at Walk Culture, which is crazy. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, Matthew. Do carry it's on. It's all right. It's fascinating always hearing you guys talk we about should, this. Well, yeah, we should really monetize our thoughts on Walk Culture. <laughs> carry yeah, on. Yeah, we should. We should. I think the best thing I ever did for Walk Culture is when you were interviewing people outside the O2, and I was like, uh, I'm going to go over and say hello to Jack. And like, Matthew, what do you think of the show? Oh, it was all right. I... <laughs> did you? That was rubbish. Yeah. Oh, I remember that because you were over the road. <laughs> yeah. And you, came, you crossed the road. But to I had, the, I had the thought of like, yeah, I'll go over and it'll be great. And I was just like, yeah, it was cool. You thought you were seeing punk crashing roll. Yeah, I, re I really did. It's hard. To say. <laughs> yeah, all right, Jack. Yeah, Jack was so professional, and lovely. I'm like, yeah, you're all right, yeah. Yeah. Do you expect I, him going to be like, well, I'm going to be a dick. No, I, Jack was just nothing but like, yeah, it was a great show. I yeah. thought he was just a normal fan. I'd never heard of him. But oh, you really? what? No, I'm joking. Nah, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here comes Mr. Normal. Also known as Mr. Bean. It's funny you get Mr. Bean. I get that still. Do you? Yeah. No. You're like, that you know, guy I've got the good looks, a... as you'll point out. I think you've brought this up before the bloke out of road trip. Yeah, DJ Qualls. Yeah. yeah. From the video of I'm Just a Kid. From Simple That's Plan. right, yes. Yeah, yeah. I know all his filmography now because right. people brought it up to me. Mm. Uh, the Street Profits beat Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. And I was happy seeing uh, these two lads get on Raw. They're yeah. just losers now. But it was like, hey, when the teasing the Hurt Business reunion? And it just didn't now, happen. I thought this was the match that Vince booked, weirdly. And it was one he's shoved in the show and took out some of the women and went, nah, we'll have this match instead. I don't know if that's true now. Oh, hmm. right. Maybe they're, I shouldn't have said that in case I didn't. It might not be true. Oh, they're rarely off main event, are they? So mm. it was nice seeing them. Mm. They got killed, obviously. They yeah. need MVP back. They do. Even like a hurt business without Lashley, I think is is fine. Just uh, give them something. Oh. Mm. But we'll see. Triple H has a big announcement. He praises Roman Reigns for his near thousand day title reign, but points out he doesn't work a full schedule. Not like out of Pachiti back at War Culture. Mm. He unveils a new world heavyweight championship. Whichever brand doesn't end up with Roman in the draft will crown a new champion with the title match, take, uh, title match taking place at bloody hell, Night of Champions in Saudi Arabia at the end of May. Could um, this be the big question? Or, or I, think I think it probably I, will, yeah. Yeah, fair enough then. We'll just go ha like what, like what do we think of it or who should be the first? Do you like the, or... do you like the look of the belt? I like the look of the belt, so but I, I pretty much agree with everything Tom said on his video, yeah. I think. Tom yeah. did a good video about it. I, then it he, went he down tore well. It apart. I'm glad he addressed the um, the fact that Roman doesn't have to defend it. He said something in the interview, which I don't think has been addressed before. He said like he he negotiated or he leveraged in some way the fact that he doesn't have to defend it. And I know the whole don't defend it in 30 days has been gone for a long time now, mm -hmm. but it was nice to hear that actually like clarified. It's like, okay, this is in Roman's contract. Right. He doesn't have to be around yeah. if, he, if, mm -hmm. if he doesn't want to be. But he kind of, in doing that, he kind of made everyone, every other wrestler look silly. I was going to say, that was He that did was what any bit. other intelligent wrestler would do. And also, well, no, yeah, one, no one can beat mm -hmm. him and we've got one champion for both brands and he doesn't work. So, the fact that all the other wrestlers are losers means we have to create a new consolation title. Oh, hey, yeah. The story never ends. Let it play out. Come on. <laughs> Stand up for WWE. All I thought was watching this was, yeah, Tyler looks pretty, but Triple H looks rougher on TV oh, every time hey. I see him. Oh, come really? on. And they keep on going. I think Triple H looks better now, more handsome now than he did when he had long hair when he was a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. No, that. that don't agree. Oh, no, I mean, the, the haircut's when not the issue. When he was trying issue. to be Ric Flair. The haircut's uh, not the issue. He was, a cook, he was the same colour as uncooked sausage. Oh, well, he's just getting on a bit, isn't he? He's just yeah. middle-aged. Middle-aged. Yeah. Well, he's in his 50s now, 40s. Mm. I want to say 50. Actually, yeah, I have no idea how old is Triple H. 52, oh. I want to say. Oh, God. That's 20, my guess. Can't take your guess. Is he? 53. 53. Uh, Good guess. Huh? Thank you. Damien Priest is getting ready for his main event against Rey Mysterio, but is also looking forward to beating a bad bunny if he tries to get involved in this business ever again. Yeah, he doesn't belong in this business. This business. This business of wrestling. Er. Bank of Belair teams of Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez to beat Damage Catal, <laughs> with Bailey taking the pinfall. <laughs> it's every week. I thought Bank of Belair, it's for this, it's what I've been building up for. Uh, I thought the Raw crowd were way more into Liv and Raquel 
um, than they were on SmackDown last few appearances. Matthew I think it's Bianca Belair. Chicago. Like me and Ross will look yeah. at like maybe the booking of the matches or the what happens or the the action itself. But Matthew always brings in a nice element which we often forget to mention, which is the crowd reaction. Mm -hmm. I like that you do that. Thank you. It's what's important to me. And it's yeah. also it's also funny if people are like, yeah, give it up. And there's no pop. It's like, oh, can you tell what for me? Fake, piped in. On SmackDown was awful. Was it? Oh, it was so bad. Every time they cut backstage, they have to like it was silence and then uh, you know, the SmackDown head. Was riot. it you who popularized or brought to the attention of the wrestling world the fan SmackDown cheer? Not the People have been pointing out for a while, oh, right, but I'm okay. one of those guys just like, oh, look at that it. mistake. Okay, right. I can't do it better myself, but I can point it out <laughs> that that's bad. Yeah. You'd think they would get better at it because it is still that, really that noticeable, the, right? Production has improved thing. so much. There's been times when you've be not noticed it because even AEW uses it. and it's, you know, If you notice it, you know it's being bad. But it's like, they've been doing it for a while. Right, you would have thought they masked it, not sounded crap. but Yeah, like you, you can have a big 3D tree pop out when <laughs> Roman Reigns comes out but that's you, easy. You, can't, you can't do it layer a sound effect in that's like, hard. is it just because it's the same sound effect each time and you, you pick up on it when you watch it each week maybe it's that maybe it's that vary it up you know mm, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. anyway yeah. nice little match good crowd reactions any other thoughts no not really it was no. just that um, this apparently was in the whole reports about like the show being changed last second and everything this was the kind of the one bit of this was like the only women's match, really. and Or was it? I think it was. And it was like a lot of other stuff had been sacrificed for this match, and it didn't turn out to be that important, really. Match up? No, I, I think it made sense if um, if damage control gets split in the draft mm. um, with Bailey going solo yeah. and the other two, the other two. <laughs> Dakota and Io. Yeah. Dakota and Io going to a different brand, succeeding as a tag team together, mm. and then essentially blaming Bailey for their constant mm. losses. Um, I think that works because yeah. it was Bailey that ate the pin as well, wasn't it? Mm. That makes sense. So I, I think that's probably what's going to happen as well. I'd love to see them have a really good tag title reign. I think like uh, they're an established team at this point. And I'm quite excited for Io versus Bianca because mm. that's a match I can't think of seen before. Maybe in NXT, but I can't think of it. Done a big match. They're yeah. both good. Not for a while good. at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Austin Theory cuts a promo complaining about his title defense of Backlash being a triple threat. Bobby interrupts and scolds Theory for not acting like a fighting champion. He reveals that he requested the match be a triple threat. Theory says if Bobby is so good at requesting matches, where was his WrestleMania match? Whoa. Wah, wah, wah. Bloody hell. The pair brawl, but Bronson Reed, what are you doing here? We haven't had that for a while. Joins in to help Theory beat Lashley down. Theory celebrates, but also gets taken out by Reed, who holds up the US title. Ooh. Uh, Theory's got nothing without Cena. Cena didn't give Theory anything, though. Yeah, he's minus one right now, Theory. Yeah, he didn't. That that It turns out... Beating John Cena didn't really help him, which is not what I expected. <laughs> I think it got him heat because one thing I like, the crowd were going, uh, you tapped out, oh, you did, tapped. they yeah, were playing along. Yeah. And I thought that was quite nice. I think it's going to be, because well, obviously this is happening after the brand split, I think it's going to be really obvious who ends up winning this match, depending on where people end up mm. in the brand split. Oh, it's happening after the brand split. Yes, of course Yeah, the brand split starts tomorrow oh, and then Monday. Could Backlash just be, wow, could the whole card be affected in that way? Maybe. Well, people like they did this before, Do you like when that happened with it's a battleground or something. Yeah, yeah, it was the match in the limo, Orton and Wyatt. There was a uh, Moxie and but but Harper. Orton was feeding with Wyatt, but they, oh, didn't, they didn't want the oh, belt to oh, change hands because the brand split had already happened. So they just had that match in the limo and or not in it wasn't in the limo. Yeah, yeah. In the house, and then they got the limo back. Oh, to the, the House the of Horrors match. Yeah, the House oh, of yeah, Horrors yeah, yeah, match. Sorry. Wow. What with a the spooky fridge. <laughs> oh <Yes>. my god. <laughs> Orton walking mm. around the house going, Argh. <laughs> I have a sheet over his head going, Argh. <laughs> That's one of the longest God. pay per view matches. Behold in WWE. the ravages of age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's a mirror. <laughs> Backstage, Ch 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 Gable. <laughs> Max. The thought of Orton looking in a mirror. And, oh, God, I'm not that long, am I? Uh. That's right. Chad <laughs> uh. Gable and Backstage. See, like Randy Orton revealed that he'd read uh, Randy Orton ex Cody Rhodes fanfic. Has he? Because he, he, he hadn't just like looked at it and went, oh God, he read it and he gave oh. a description of it. It's like, what do you mean? What happens in it? Well, we're at, we're at the gym and the story and then like my sweat goes onto him. Mate, and then, I've yeah. read and all, yeah, I can't believe you read that far into it. I used to read all the What Culture fan fiction. It was mad. <laughs> Me and Sam often ended up together. Because like, you lived together. I don't know. I think because we were pals on camera and, that, yeah. and off. Because <laughs> we were pretending <laughs> oh, to be according to this one, yeah. Oh, I used to read all of it. It was mad. 
I was often like the little subby sub boy, you know. Uh, I, I read one. Did you? Yeah. Were you in it? No. Which one? It was... Was it the one when I'd go out with... <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> well... And with which one? Go on. There's one where um, it's, in an, an, it's in an imagined universe where Daniel Bryan and Nikki Bella... Um, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella have a son who's an aunt of like 18 and goes out with me. <laughs> and I'm like starstruck when they come round. Because that, uh, oh, you no. meet the parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meet the parents. I've taken this lad for like fish and chips because I'm English, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> we go back. No, no, they're on the road with WWE. The first day we were fish and chips. They're on the they're on the road with they're on the road with WWE. And then Nikki Bella's babysitting. Or oh, she's like, babysitting for you. Babysitting. Oh no, for the guy I'm going out with. Oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> Nikki Bella's babysitting an 18 year old. And then, and then, oh god, I hope he was. I mean, it's not real. I don't know why I care. But, <laughs> but then Nikki Bella's around, right? And I'm like starstruck when we get back in. And she's like, where have you been? Oh, you've been with this boy. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> Nikki Bella. Nice to meet you. It was a weird one. Not sufficient, Jim. And then I, got to, I almost got like disappointed when I got to the, it was like next chapter and I clicked it and it hadn't been updated for like four years. Like, oh, Aww. I know. Who's writing it? George or Martin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was as good. And there was one where we were all uni students together. Um, and do you remember that one? We were all uni <laughs> students together. Mm -hmm. You were um, my brother. Okay. <laughs> and we were called King Pacini with a hyphen. <laughs> 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 <That's nice. laughs> um, I, I, it was like, I was so uncool in that one. It was like, we all sat around drinking, but I noticed that Jack had put his anxiety armband on to let us know that he was feeling anxious. <laughs> Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, but it's blue, so it's all right at the minute. But I think the point was that it changed color. Uh, right. I'd put on my red one. And, uh, <laughs> and it was like, I asked him if he wanted to go and sit upstairs, and he nodded at me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was just a little oh loser boy. Oh, my God. There no, was I didn't read class, that one. Class, class. Yeah, no, really I read the one where you lost Soggy Biscuit. Oh, that one was horrible. That one was horrible, horrible, horrible. It didn't. No, I'm not seeing them. All right, fair enough. Um, he just uh, ate the... Yeah, yeah, you know. presumably, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that one. It was shorter. That was like a one-shot a one shot kind of... It was a one-shot deal. Don't, don't. Yeah, it was, yeah. Backstage, <laughs> Chad Gable and Maxine Dupree argue over who wrote this. Well, uh, who cares? <laughs> Mustafa Ali arrives and says everyone needs to be more positive, but also claims that Gable has no chance of the match tonight, and Gable wins pretty quickly. Yeah, they were busting out dragon suplexes for this one. It's good. Good what? match. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it was a good match, but it's just... Oh. Not to sound like a, a smarky man, but that give them the world. Those two boys, they're so good at the wrestling. Yeah, they are I, internet I, darlings. They are. I agree, King Pachidi. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Rhodes beats Finn Balor in their singles match. Just some nice good stuff here. Mm -hmm. I can't really think of anything more dramatic to say than that. They held back, didn't they? Because it's probably a future pay per view, potentially main event. Mm. Little taster. It was grand, mm. it was predictable, and everything. But it was nice. We're good yeah. together. I feel so bad for Mr. Varley that this is his weird character now. That he just is a motivational speaker. What's that about? Worked for Bo Dallas. It was fun. Yeah, but yeah look, look what he's doing now. Ali's good, but he's been serious though. Yeah. No, it's not good. Was Bo <laughs> Dallas Uncle Howdy in there? Well, no one knows. He was playing him, apparently. He's been seen backstage it, and stuff, hasn't he? It never got properly revealed, though. Like, a lot of the bollocks that Bray Wyatt was giving us. He was off. Not was, is, as well. It's not over yet. Mm, it the, was story never never, over. the story never ends. Exactly. In it was over the first two months. <laughs> Seth Rollins arrives and says he should be focusing on his match with Omos, but something even bigger has caught his eye. The World Heavyweight Championship. Ooh. Seth points out that Roman hasn't beaten him during his title run. What? He, he yeah, no, he lost by DQ. He got Seth no, got in his head. But the Rumble match, yeah. Which makes him a deserving new champion. No, yeah, Seth won that match by DQ. Yeah. Oh. Mm. He came out in the shield gear. He Roman... He's technically right. He I beg your right. pardon. Seth's always had Roman's number. Mm. It's the rock, paper, scissors thing of the shield. Uh, yeah. Seth can't beat Dean. Dean can't beat Roman. Roman, Roman can't yeah. beat Seth. Yeah. yeah. Almost an MVP interrupt. MVP warns Seth not to think too much about his future because after backlash, he might not have one. Mm. Seth says that Omos is a once in a generation because he was born that way, whereas Seth has made himself great. He's going to win at backlash. He's also one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He's also one time. of the greatest wrestlers of all time. It was crazy seeing this because Seth's mega over now uh, with the crowd going, ooh, ooh, ooh. But Seth's had nothing but Logan Paul and Miz bollocks for the last few months. <laughs> 
so it was actually nice to see him doing a serious promo <clears throat> and being really good at it. Yeah, he was great. I was like, oh, this is actually a good promo. Neither of you boys were particularly fans of Seth for, for the longest time. No, authority Seth mm -hmm. didn't didn't care at all. I think it's the, the past two or three years, for me anyway, that he's really oh, coming to his I own. Remember the, the I, know, I, know, I knew how good he was, by the way. Oh, he yeah, was very course. good yeah, in the yeah, ring, yeah. but I, it never clicked for me. I remember the days of babyface Seth. I felt like I was on my own because I was like, he's not that bad, guys. But everyone hated him. I thought I was the only one cheering him. Yeah. He's had good runs and bad runs. Like I said, it's the bit he's at now is, you know, bat run YouTubers in the face. I mean, what's not the he's like really there? He's really good at it. Yeah. yeah. And he was good, like, I'm good at a serious promo. Or dress like this. He also like, seems yeah. to have, um, I was going to say he seems to have mellowed a bit, but I remember he recently did that interview where he was like, I hate Sam Punk. <laughs> I just think he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like the, 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 um, I wrote them down, what it showed on screen as he was coming out. So the the four boxes, yeah, yeah, Seth Freakin' Rollins, yep. the Visionary, mm. beat Logan Paul and KSI at WrestleMania. Yeah, he was a, he's apparently beating KSI. Yeah, who wasn't in the uh, and has a pretty catchy entrance theme. Damn right. Who's he upset? What's, yeah, that's a weird. Like run. all of the stuff that he's done in his career, and I know they they like focusing on the recent stuff. Has a pretty catchy entrance theme. <laughs> what? I think that's working well for him. No, the, have you the not theme. heard the crowd? Oh, yeah, no, no. Well, hey, ride it, man. But it shouldn't be one of his accolades. Especially if he's coming out and going like, yep, I'm going to be the first champion. I'm going to be. I'm going to go after that world heavyweight mm -hmm. title belt and everything. And I've got a pretty catchy entrance uh, thing. I thought at first I was like, oh, not him again. Because I thought in my head, I thought he was the first universal champion, but it was Bala. Yeah. And he got injured. For a, for a with day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is your mug say blobby, blobby Adam? Yeah, someone sent it in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's just the back says blobby, blobby Adam. Yeah, I don't understand it. Ah, it's personal. It's, it's sweet yeah. dot. Pink with yellow dots. Seth will be wearing that next week. Yes. In the locker room, Kevin Owens is frustrated that Sammy has been talking to Jay and tells him that the Usos deserve everything that's coming to them for Roman when they lose. Ooh. Kev storms off, but Riddler reassures Sammy that they'll be okay because they're bros. In a similar way to himself and Wandy Orton. <laughs> Sam, what? Sammy what is happened? surprised that riddle is actually making sense. Me? Surprised didn't say like weirdly piddly <laughs> or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. So. The the other day the the <laughs> other side of the office that I basically triple jump learned about my weird Ned Flandersisms. I suppose they're similar. Yeah, to they that. are. Yeah. I said something. I said that someone was like. Um, so like t two of the lads have had Joel happy birthday for the other day by the way oh happy birthday Joel um, two of the lads are going to rise with a group of us because it was their it's like they both had birthdays at similar sort of times and they said to me oh is your girlfriend coming along and I went nah she's at a house EP house party but it, it snowballed from there to the point where like it's been a brief I, I'm sick of my own whatever they are jackisms socky walkies and feety weetums and all that stuff. Oh. I don't do it that often. What was that, Joel? Did you say disgusting. It's disgusting. Disgusting, <laughs> says Joel. <laughs> In your Yorkshire drawl, that sounded amazing. Feety weety. <laughs> you sound like salad fingers when you said that. <laughs> so do you just get bullied by triple jump? No. Oh. Does it go both ways? No. no. I fear them. Yeah. yeah fair. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Moving on. In the main event, Damien... Oh, ben Bo was like my road buddy in WCBW. Me and Ben used to sit in the cars together. Neither, of us, were, neither of us were driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say chippies, you. That's your thing, chippies. Fishy wishies and chippies. No, no, chippies. not fishy wishies. You say, you say, you say chippies. This is just Sonny doing a spell. And it always pops me, Does as they say. Why? Because you, I hear you say it maybe twice a year. So whenever you say it, I'm like, he's still got it. He still yeah, says yeah, chippies. Yeah, yeah. Big it's a song. seldom, it's a seldom seen catchphrase. Yeah, I like an American making fun of the British. Oh, go for a cheapy whippy whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's like a almost like a shield to deflect. If I'm saying something and feel a bit uncomfortable or nervous in the conversation, well, if I make them laugh at me, they've already laughed at me, so they can't You're laugh at me for it. any real reason. Wow! Nice. Wow! God! Wow! Control yeah. your narrative. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> No, that's good. Wow, I'm that's a good defense mechanism when you're getting bullies. Yeah, yeah, but, I'm, yeah but I'm 30. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't need to do this. 30 worthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I also like this in, in KV. Uh, Riddle is just annoying. Yeah. Well, Riddle just was right. Kevin. Riddle, Riddle. Stop it. <laughs> Riddle, Riddle was right here, wasn't he? Yeah, but no one's paying attention but right Sammy now. But Sammy went, well, you're actually making sense. 
Like, even and a broken clock. Honestly, one of the weirdest things, because so much changes in wrestling, like two weeks, I came back from my walk and suddenly it's Owens and Zane and Riddle. I was like, what? I don't quite get it. Well, yeah, they've... <laughs> Sammy and Kevin have beaten the Usos, so they need somebody to lose this solo every week. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. I, the one thing that is really good with the whole bloodline thing is every time they manage to get a whole thread out of it, every, every episode... Um, and it's even in Roman's absence, it keeps him fresh in the memory, um, and it just g- gives you a reason to keep watching. And it's clearly working because they're doing it every single episode. Yeah. The, the thread is always, almost yeah. always, the bloodline. The I think it's lost it's something after WrestleMania. Yeah, agreed. but it's still there because I want to see the Usos lose and Roman get mad. I think it's like what the Young Bucks try to go for, but they can't quite like. They've not had as much success with it consistently. Yeah, because they care about being cheered or respected, <laughs> even when they're supposed to be heels. The Usos are like, no, it's fake. Okay, yeah, fair <laughs> we'll, enough. We'll say what we like. Yeah. In the main event, Damien Priest gets himself DQ'd and beats down Rey Mysterio. Bad Bunny saves the day with a kendo stick and chases Priest up the ramp. He announces a street fight between himself and Priest at Backlash. It was funny because uh, oh, Bad Bunny's been present, uh, he says he's hosting. No, he said in the promo, he went, I'm not hosting it That's the thing, like, he's like, I'm hosting it because he's been in every match graphic. Mm. So it's funny. So is he going to be? Is he in every match graphic? Is he still going to be there and in the one that he's in? No, he said in the twice. promo he went. I'm not hosting it anymore. I'm taking. I'm kicking your ass. I hope he's in every. It, I thought it was a great. Anyway. Even though half of it was in Spanish, we're in Spanish. Even though half of it was in Spanish, I thought it was a great promo. He's got oh, yeah. fire. Yeah. yeah, you can tell he's a fan, can't yeah, you? Yeah, those kendo it. stick shots as well. Mm, he yeah. laid those in. He's good. Yeah, I'm and at the end, match. yeah, me too. Damien Priest said the worst thing ever off mic, but you picked it up on the camera. Did you hear it? Don't just something you should never say in a wrestling context. So I'm gonna kill you in Puerto Rico. I was like, oh no, oh, oh no, oh no, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I don't think he meant it. I don't think he meant it as a reference, but yeah. Did no one else? Wow, I didn't think about that. that. No, oh. for the best. Let's take a break. Ha! <sighs> NXT Spring Breaking it says here, pretty dead. Pretty dead. Ooh. The roster having a totally radical spring break picnic. Ugh. Hank is in charge of the barbecue and is FaceTiming his mate, Tank Ledger. He's new. Sadly... I was away when he uh, turned up. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. Oh. Uh, Ivy Nile wins an arm wrestling contest against a man I honestly don't recognize who storms off angrily. I Grr. took a screen grab of him and sent it to Ross and he went, don't know. He went, never message me again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Even Ross didn't know who this man was. The blonde guy. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't recognize I thought it was him. Griff Garrison for a second. Yeah, it Long did look show. like him. Yeah. Yeah. Big Body also... Javi. Sorry. Sorry, go on. That was it. Big Body Javi tries to take out the last burger, so Dabakado chases him off. Could have won that easily. Uh, the witches are hanging out by the fountain, but gets interrupted when Kato throws Javi into the water. They laugh at him. Ha ha. Any other thoughts on this magical? Yeah, it just set the tone opening. for a great two hours. I, I need to uh, preface all of this by saying I haven't watched an episode of NXT in full for two and a half years. So I went in totally blind on this. All I know is that you're very, very passionate oh, about oh, NXT. We might be the most passionate wrestling podcast. So I wasn't sure what to expect. All I've been told really is that it's gone absolute bat poop crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put this out there early on. This was my favorite of the shows. <laughs> that I watched uh, in preparation for this podcast. Right. I thought it was really fun. I think it was a real variety show. Andrew described it beautifully. He might have said this on the podcast already. I'm not sure. Um, he said it's like the TV show Zap it with is. a few yeah. bits of wrestling. Yeah. Because it's all over the place. It is. With Daisy Dares You. And totally. It's everywhere. Yeah. Love it. I genuinely loved it because it, it's not good. <laughs> It's bad. It's, it's really, really bad, bad, but it's thoroughly entertaining throughout. It's actually really good. Yeah. And that was the theme, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I like this, right? I'm going to say I like the uh, the little spring break party thing. <laughs> I think it was an interesting way to hype the show without just throwing to the commentary team going, this is what's coming up. I think it was good. The acting was absolutely terrible, yeah. almost universally. Yeah. But I think that's part of the charm, isn't it? There's only one good actor in NXT, and it's Josh Briggs, randomly. He's a good actor. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's weird. Me and Ross have noticed. Um, but no, everyone's bad at acting. Some of them are good at wrestling. Some of them. The re- yeah. Some of the wrestling's good. Yeah. Um, I liked just the... They needed the witches to be in the fun spring break segments so they were like well we need to put them in a bit more of a spooky location so just a... listen to that sentence isn't know, that fantastic it's crazy, isn't it? it's mad. <laughs> and there's like it was a fountain but the water was a bit green like, Ooh. 
Oh, was that intentional? I, I thought, thought it was that was just... Fil- I thought put a filter on the... I don't know. No, I think it was just slightly dirty water. Was it not? Oh, poor... Imagine turning up to that very obviously public park and nah. just seeing this ragtag group of morons <laughs> <laughs> and having a big <laughs> fake party. Poor, I'm interested... Well, no, you wouldn't have had much context about Big Body Harvey. The guy who got thrown in the... the, no, guy got thrown in the so he's... <laughs> so his whole thing's that he's like a comedy guy, but he's not... He's not being... I don't know if it's his own fault, but he's not been given any funny writing to okay. take advantage of. He's been... He did the Bret Hart El Dandy promo once. All right. Like, he didn't oh, I remember yeah. reading about that. Yeah. So it's like, ha, ha, ha. He did the reference. Mm. Just said, who are and you to that El Dandy? Was, was, that it? was that it? Bret yeah. Hart was funny, way funnier than than Big Buddy Harvey's. It's like just the reference, nothing else. And then he came out and said someone else referencing, and it was but like... But part of the... Part get of, it. Part of the reason Bret Hart was so funny was how earnest he was, even though he's smiling clearly through it. But also, it's kind of improvisational, whereas it, you can't do comedy like that when in the rigidly scripted NXT land. Mm. What a... That really epitomizes the whole thing, though, doesn't it? Um, when... When they're trying to be funny, it doesn't land, mm. but it's unintentionally funny it's so throughout. Funny. Well said. Yes. And if Ross Unlike here, Zap, which was scripted I and do, very funny. How, has, <laughs> Ross had, has Ross had ever admitted that it was bad, or does he maintain the solution that it's Oh, no, I'm sure we're asking us what you're on about. Big Body Happy's great. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> um, he's, he's, he's in on the joke. Very much. He's in too deep, I'd say, actually, Ross. Ross is drinking the Kool Aid and then pouring out more Kool Aid in case he runs out of Kool Aid later can't on. can't get him out. He's too far gone. It's like in The Simpsons. Why do I keep on referencing The Simpsons? Oh, you and your Simpsons. Where Homer goes to the 3D land and Frank I, needs to... I thought I've got exactly right. Did you? Did. When? When I was saying he's in too deep and then you pull him out? Yeah, because I pictured The Simpsons all pulling the rope. <laughs> wow. Wow. You didn't well, hear it, but Blaven Joel went... And all that. You didn't right. hear it because obviously this far away, but Joel went, can you stop talking about The Simpsons? Please? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> Tony D and Stax beat Pretty Deadly in the first ever trunk match. Mm. Look in the tunk. They drive off to an under... It's a Simpsons reference, Jack. Oh, I they thought that was a Botchamania. Off... I thought you were referencing your own video series there. Sorry. Is it Ralph a video Wigan. series? Oh, mm. they... thank you. They drive off to an undisclosed location. Dot, dot, dot. More fun to come. Uh, the match was okay. It's not uh, about the match, is it? It's My thing with Tony D and Stax is they're mafia guys. But we've been given no other reason to cheer for them or get behind them other than, hey, the mafia. In the spring break party at the start, they're talking about them as if, oh, our boys, Tony Dean Sachs, are definitely going to win. I'm like, why do you like them? They're dangerous. There's been nothing on TV they're other evil. than the fact that they've gone to an Italian restaurant, which gives Ross Carp Blanche or Kate Blanche, yeah. as I sometimes say, to mock you for your little laptop thing. Uh-huh. But apart from that, it's like, why, why should we? They were bad guys for ages, but now we should cheer them because. Well, because Dean Martin, because they drank in the man's pub with Gallus. Oh, there's going to be some. If we mention anything from previous, that might just fly over your head. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So this was a. It was an alright match. They did some moves and hardcore stuff, but there's been loads of these type of matches Didn't in NXT, turn... which maybe you look like oh, it better. Right. I guess. So that's why I liked it. There, it reminded me Go of on. like a Christmas episode of Raw, mm. where they've got all I'll the go thunder that. kicking about, uh, and uh, like had seen it pulling the chair out of the box and all that sort of stuff. So I thought it's fun. But if they're doing this every week. Maybe maybe it's, it doesn't work for yeah. you in the same way. But uh, this wasn't uh, a on. particularly, even though it was spring breaking, so it was like one of their little specials in between the live the pre, the PLEs. It really just felt like a normal episode of NXT. Okay, this, right. is, this is very much what a normal episode of NXT okay, cool. is like. Yeah. Pretty deadly though. They got their chance to show off their character work, which is incredibly English, incredibly camp. Yes, boy. And that, works with, that works very well I for me. I love Pretty Deadly. Yeah, they're yeah. brilliant. They're getting called up, aren't they? Apparently so. The well, I'll call them up to mine anyway. Well, this is them being written <laughs> off, I guess. They've been yeah, yeah. killed. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, spoilers, but uh, yeah, the finish was hilariously anticlimactic, I've written here, with one of the Pretty Deadly getting shoved into the trunk and they were getting back suplexed into a table and then shoved into the trunk as well. And then very little pop as they were backstage at the time and they cut to the crowd after the finish happened and it's just a sea of people going, oh, is that it? Uh, so well done there. The fire extinguisher bit was good. Yeah. When, he's in, when he, the trunk opens and he's got the fire extinguisher yeah. ready to spray him. I, Fun. I don't know if it's just because we're English and go on England. But yeah, I, I'm pretty, deadly, so pretty deadly we're not the bad guys here. I'm, I'm, I'm cheering them. Hey. Did, I'm you know, did you know one of them was on first dates on Channel 4? I did, yeah. It's, that's him. Didn't he look different? Yeah. Wow. They're so good well, looking, If he showed up they? like that to first dates, there would have been a second date. There were two dates. Oh. On his episode of first <laughs> dates, the girl's really rude and they don't get along. And then she walks off. She's like, I'm just going yeah. to the toilet. And she's like, 
get me out of here. I, I remember like that. Yeah, yeah. Then he had a second more heartwarming date with like a normal girl. I didn't know there was a second one. The, no, he was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Oh. Only in the second one does he mention that he's a wrestler. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, okay. No, not with the same girl. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Bad connotations. Mm. Yeah, Being a British yeah. wrestler. That, that's, British wrestler on TV. That is, that's why my band's called American Rachel. Because you I don't want to be a I was wrestler. on a night out once getting on really well with this American girl called Rachel and then one of my mates was like he talks about wrestling on YouTube and she lost interest very fast. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Well she said she had to go and she could have been telling the truth but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well yeah. we won't see we'll never know. That's right. Yeah. Unless that's we track her down. down. Don't want to do that mm, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> put, put a bull's angle look what you could have won. Can you remember what she looked like probably this was years ago now. But you made a song about her. No, a band. A band. Band. Oh, a band no, about band. it. Well, it was my my guitarist. Makes me sound so egotistic. My guitarist was the drunk one who ruined it. So it became oh. an in-joke. How did he band. ruin it? By coming up going, he's a YouTube celebrity. Oh, he's a... Oh, right. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Shocking yeah. behavior, that. We were in Leeds. We were young whippersnappers. We were in a student night, which we couldn't do now. It looked weird. It was called... F- you could. Fruity or you something. You aged. You don't know. I don't got many. Fair enough. Fruity's a good name for a student night, isn't it? It was. Ours was like flirt, that. which flirt. I think is a bit much. Ours was clute. Clute. <laughs> the nightclub itself was called German clute. for ball. It was the worst nightclub in Europe. Allegedly, that was the selling point. Oh, oh I'd go to it if that was the selling point. Clute in Durham. Anyone else who's been in Durham will have been to clute. Wait, well, how is it the worst? Oh, the joke was like, well, the worst one was somewhere like in Poland, but it burned down. <laughs> and it was the second worst, so then it became the worst. It was just, oh, okay. just very sound like that, yeah. small, really sticky floors, really cramped. Okay. Don't know why we used to go. Um, Sounds like Gotham. Played like cheesy music, like Reach for the Star and all that. Mm. And everyone, what you drank in Clute was quaddies, which they weren't legally allowed to sell, so they'd give you a double and a single and you just... Oh, sorry. Two doubles. Two doubles, a right. treble yeah, and a single. Yeah. And I, got, oh. I got banned from RSU for doing that. Really? For making my own quaddy body. If you make your own. No, no, it's, it's, apparently it was illegal. Oh. Apparently I'd broken the law because they're only allowed <laughs> to... to but I, I don't know how true that I mean, is. Did you, they, did came you out, write... they confiscated my student ID and I had to go in the next day mm. and go, listen, I'm really sorry, I'll never make myself a quaddy body. It wasn't even a quaddy body, it was a quaddy ginny. <laughs> I had a, a gin and tonic. Uh, and I poured too much in, and the bloke with the bouncer was watching me, and he wow. grabbed me and pulled Bloody me out. Yeah. I mean, Tosser. did you do it in I mean, front of the bar stuff? Like, I did it to wind him up because he told me not I to I mean, do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. To be fair, looking back, qualities are too much. Yeah. It's too much. Not At once, either. bloody hell. Like. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't know how how I survived. Bless you. So, yeah, pre Delia dead. <laughs> <laughs> Andre Chase <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Andre Chase is ahead of his match with Bron Breaker. Delightful Hudson gives uh-huh. him impassioned pep talk, and Chase is fired up. He goes out and loses the Bron in a minute or two. <sighs> so there's this crazy thing that Ross comes up with where he thinks that Delightful Hudson, he's put Duke here for some reason, is... I'm Jack. Hello, Jack. Is, I wrote those notes. Hello, Jack. How are you doing? I'm you Matthew. said Ross wrote those notes. And What's I'm, going on? I'm, I'm What's shut up, there? man. I'm trying Did to... you notice that? What's going on? He hasn't he hasn't watched NXT in months, so I'm giving him the feedback. He on. said there's this thing that Ross does, even though he's written here. And I'm like, I'm Jack. Usually on the weeks out where it's Ross Why doing the notes. Why is he like, I'm that, the mad one? That, that, <laughs> I'm this, listening. I'm trying I'm my best. Gaslit. Do you, yeah, I don't understand. Ross usually writes Duke Hudson as opposed to Delightful Hudson. I write because, these notes every week. <laughs> because... because on Ross's notes that he brings with him on his laptop. Oh, Christ in the right. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. I'm like one of those little boxes you see in comics that says, please read ne- last issue for more info. So Ross writes some bollocks, I don't know what I'm talking about now, um, about how Duke Hudson is a bad person. Right. We, obviously me and Jack, the sensible person, know that delightful Hudson is actually right. trying to help him uh, chase you as a stable. It seems so from this mm. promo. This is all I've it, really right. seen. So some people will look at this and go, wait, he's removed chase you from ringside? He'll just be him? Helping him, that, that of course, because he doesn't need the help. He's all he's got himself, and that's all he needs to get motivated against Bron Breaker. Oh, I thought you also didn't trust Duke Hudson, by the way. No, I love Delightful Hudson. I, really I love Delightful Hudson as well. Chief. We originally called him Dull Hudson because his character was so boring. Then he joined Chase U, and it's just been a revelation. Can I read my notes on him? Yeah, please do. Duke Hudson is fantastic. Heaps of charisma. I thought Chase U was super hot because there were so many shirts in the crowd, but it was just one section of very passionate fans. Plants. Um, Plants. Booker T isn't all there. 
<laughs> oh, God, hi. <laughs> so, oh. Vic, Vic Joseph talking about how Andre Chase might be barking up the wrong tree, and Booker T goes, we call that barking up the wrong oak in Texas. <laughs> and then the camera lingered. Booker T is just making noises now. <laughs> yeah, he uh, really is. Yeah, very well <laughs> noticed. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. it was, I was somewhat speechless when like the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Awards, but worst commentator came out, and Corey Graves... <laughs> was nominated number one. I went, you must be joking. Uh, when JR exists in AW uh, and Booker T exists in NXT, there's absolutely no justice there. So the, there was a, a, a month or two ago now, There's the, so that Mandy Rose had to help us, Toxic Attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay, yeah. With them. So then they, Mandy Rose obviously got fired and then Toxic Attraction split up and turned on each other. Mm -hmm. And the heel was going to pilmanize the other one's neck. Like she put the chair around her neck. And at this point, commentators should definitely be like, well, it's too far. And Booker goes, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Vic's going, what? Like, Vic can, Vic's like yeah. genuinely like, no, she shouldn't. He's like, oh. Yeah. He's just buzzing. Vic's kicking Booker under the, the thing and like, no, no, this is a bad thing. He's got the hardest Booker... job in the world, Vic Joseph. <laughs> controlling yeah. that mania. Like, Lion like, taming. Like riding a bull, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but and it was constant as yeah, well. Yeah, the the whole thing. <laughs> People are pointing me out like, well, you hear when Booker T said that? He goes, I don't hear anything. It's just a dull roar now because it just, all he speaks of is in noises. Yeah. And in like cliches, it's like, so what do you think of this match? Well, they're going to be ready to rumble tonight. You know, you pull, you grab the bull by the horns. You get better ready to do the thing. He and also, he's just like, you've said nothing, Booker. He you also, said literally he nothing. Sometimes he'll get bored and start adding details to characters that don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I was talking to so-and-so backstage. Like, no, you weren't. No, you no, weren't yeah. doing that. Nope. Yeah, uh, like, like Kip Sabian trying to poison. clarifies an existing, like, flaw in the oh, plot or something you. When, you can, when you can stitch it up a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't no, really. yeah. I, it, You know what? Like, Booker, when he's on the pre-show for the pay-per-views, which is really the only time I see him now, it's like five minutes, and you just think, like, oh, okay, that's a fun little five minutes. Yeah, he's right, he can mad. do that. Yeah. But two hours. Yeah, yeah. One I thing, loved it. Yeah, great. It was really funny. Good. One good thing is the time when Grayson Waller called him a bitch, and then Booker just sort of got all serious and it reminded you oh you can't mess with Booker T though oh. he's still a hard man oh and uh, New Day came out for the run between brands I guess to win the NXT tag oh titles and God. New Day said we have won the tag titles more than any other tag team in the week and uh, Booker went no that's not true <laughs> he's hate. burying them <laughs> yeah he's like no we have as well and Vic's like no we, we've, we've checked and he's like no 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 we won more so on Wikipedia <laughs> he counted his indie ones as well oh <laughs> like, no yeah, 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 yeah. he hates the New Day apparently yeah. Yeah. So it's like, God, yay, new days. Like, I don't like them. <laughs> he's amazing. This he is. But he does work good. in a weird freak show kind of way. He yeah. does work for NXT. But it used to be Agreed. just Wade Barrett being horny, which was also excellent and as Vic, well. Vic and Wade had good chemistry because they knew, like, you know, hey, what do you think of this match? Well, the, this match has got two good things going on for it. <laughs> <laughs> they were both, you know, it's the, all that. In and on then, the joke, but Booker's just on his own. And then, hey, what do you think of this match, Booker? He's just like, ooh. No bread, no water, yeah. all me. Like, <laughs> what do you think of this match, Booker? Like, there's just absolutely it's nothing. So it's good. fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Bron beats this to set up uh, Delightful Hudson versus Bron Breaker, presumably. Oh, right. Well, Bron's having a rematch against uh, Carmelo, That's isn't right, it? Yeah, so but yes, yeah, something's going on in Chase U. Yeah. It can't be Duke's fault, though. No. Uh, then Ilya Dragunov is attacked backstage by Dijak, who traps him under a door. Uh, it's hilarious because this is another example of Booker. Dijak tries to kill Ilya with a draw, uh, door as dozens of referees show up to help. We then cut to the arena and Booker's like, yeah, spring breaking, baby. <laughs> he didn't say that. He's like, no, no, no. I've got, I, I've got it written down. He said, spring breakout, man. This is spring breakout. <laughs> Getting the name of the show wrong that he's, he's commentating <laughs> for. He said, I'm pretty sure he said spring breakout <laughs> twice. Like, how, no, no, we shouldn't be how, celebrating this. He's clearly hurt, how Booker. How is this on TV? Isn't it on TV? <laughs> Technically, I guess. How is it on TV? It's used to go head to head with AEW. Just want to point that out. Uh, Cora Jade beats Lyra Valkyrie to finish. Lyra oh, Valkyrie. Whatever. whatever. Every week. <laughs> whatever. I don't Every care. week. Lyra I'm Valkyrie. putting as much effort as these two did. Um, this was. I just put this match happens. Hey, now. I like the finish, though. Uh, Cora tries to use a bat, but the ref grabs and stops her. Valkyria goes for a massive kick, but somehow misses despite Cora visibly not moving. Yep. Cora lets the referee take, take the bat away, <laughs> go, yeah, my bad, hits a low with the referee behind, and then pins her. Yep. Yeah, I thought she, uh, it was actually a pretty funny ending to a match that was just going nowhere slow. Oh, I, I thought it was a messy ending. <laughs> I, I, 
think that's what they're going for, but she was supposed to hit, or Cora was supposed to at least duck or something. She forgot, and then just went the finish. It was right. a bit weird, the penultimate move being a chop block. It that was weird. And Whatever also, works. Especially yeah. weird because since she's debuted, Lyra's actually been presented as pretty strong, like she's been beating established names and stuff. And this was felt like a really weak loss for her. Mm. Against Cora, who was rumoured to be one of the names thought about for being called up. Oh, I think after the some of those previous to... mic bits in this match, I think she can <clears> stay in here for I a I think bit. she's got a strong character. Yeah. Ross, I'm glad, isn't here because he'd sound biased because I fancy her. I don't. It's just that Ross... She's which one do you fancy? Sorry, Cora. Apparently, she because she's them. like a skater punk girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ross is like, oh, you'll fancy her, and it really caught on a lot. Because oh. Jack can go if you heard my band. Right, yeah. Cora, right? Did you know her background? No. There's a video once when she was a teenager of CM Punk at a meet and greet, and she's really emotional to meet him and stuff. And then Punk has a really nice chat with her dad, where he's like, the straight oh, edge I've stuff. seen that. That's I've seen her. that. Yeah. Oh, right. That's, That's Cora Jade. Yeah, yeah. And now she's made it. And AJ Lee wow. had that with Lita. That's yeah, right. She gets all emotional. Yeah, Full yeah, circle. In hindsight. Yeah, creepy. Because they both went out with CM Punk. Yeah. Well, one of them is married. Oh, God. Too, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, <what> my God. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts on this match, yeah. Pacini? Uh, no, no, no. I've got, I've got nothing down there. Good, good. Carmelo Hayes retains the NXT title against Grayson Waller. After the match, he challenges Bron Breaker to a rematch at NXT Battleground. Bron then blindsides Hayes, but Trick Willie takes a spear to protect him. It doesn't last long, however, as Bron smashes Hayes through a part of the set and, made of balsa wood. Oh, and the the crew all acted in peck. They were all shocked. Yeah. They were like, what? It was really good. Yeah, I thought this match was lovely. Yes. I'm surprised it was happening midway through the show, but whatever. Uh, well, we need that big women's title main event. Absolutely. Uh, Waller took out Big Willie with the big chair, uh, which I thought made sense. Waller did a crazy bit where he appeared to land backwards on his head in succession, as in he went, he got bopped and went <laughs> bang, and then he got up, and then bang again. All right. Uh, and that then set up, uh, what have we got here? He appeared to land backwards, and then Melo nailed a beautiful springboard DDT, DDT out of nowhere, amazing. simply by going and doing the DDT like I've that. I've seen a gif of this match being mocked on social media. Which really? bit? The bit where Hayes goes for a springboard, yeah. and Waller does his the rolling, rolling animation into the stunner. Yeah, right. And, yeah. They, and the point is, he's in the corner, he's about to roll out of it into the stunner. Why is Hayes going for a springboard into a not to no one? But I need he can to travel watch, that far. I need to watch the full context of the moved again to know whether it was worthy of ridicule or mm -hmm. whether like wow. often in wrestling it's been taken out of context I don't know if you there's a lot of stuff you take you, you give and it's like yeah I'll, I'll, well, obviously we did bloody Osprey and Ricochet all those years ago you just give that one moment it's like well it looks a bit like dur, 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 yeah. Dur, dur. but yeah if you watch the match oh, wow here's me defending the NXT yeah I thought that just meant well these red these was watches footage you know she's going to go for that one move they are two of the better mm -hmm. wrestlers in NXT like yeah. Hayes is probably the best wrestler I think I'm too NXT. negative about the other bits that are crap on this show no. I think I might as well defend the bits that are actually good so I thought they, they were smoother than peanut butter Hayes is really, really, really good. Yeah, really good. He is. Could, was that apparent just from even one match? I've seen Kamo. Oh, like, oh, I, I, I've seen full matches of the whole thing. Okay, so I've just right, never bothered right. watching an NXT I see, weekly yes, show. I've watched the takeover equivalents and yeah. stuff. But they, you don't get the storyline stuff. The specials are still way better than the TV. They still do deliver yeah, I watched specials, the rest, don't they? Yeah. The WrestleMania weekend mm. one, I watched it in, in full. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. I don't think this match went too long either, which I'm all right with. It wants to be like epic, epic, whatever. So, mm. yeah. And everyone goes, oh my God, he's dead. Did you and pick then, up on uh, Vic Joseph doing the old Matt Striker after that balsa wood spot? What did he, he did say? the holy S and then censored himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to rip off someone, you might as well rip off the best. There you go. Uh, I like that one. Oh, my God, he's dead. He went through the stage. Ah. We then cut to Roxanne Perez saying, she wasn't like the other girls who play with Barbies. She watched wrestling, so she has bows in her hair. And then returns to the big no. hole taped up with warning labels, <laughs> do not cross. The, bo the, the bows in the hair are to symbolize all the young girls watching like what she was like in mm. the back and when she of was Of course, a kid. I'm not mocking the message. Because it was the fact it was the contrast. Of, He's dead! She anyway, Roxanne didn't Perez. care about being a Disney princess or a supermodel. She wanted to be a real wrestler and that's why she wears the bows in her hair. I hated it <laughs> because, because, no, 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 her, she was fine and everything. Um, she was talking about the people that she grew up watching. And it was like Bailey, AJ she's Lee, so the Bellas. It, I, yeah. I was just like, oh man. I think she's about, <laughs> I think she's about 20. 21, I think. It, she, they said. But she's already been like Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Like she's got an amazing, she's really good. And it's a shame that her match was bad, basically, later on. Well, she's also know. Booker T's daughter. <laughs> no, but he, I can see the he trained her 
and gets really emotional when she wins. Aww. They wheel him out to cry when mm. she wins. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah she won the um, iron. Oh, was that called? He, yeah, the, uh, throughout, from the moment she hit her finisher to the three count, he went, oh, <laughs> like, all the way through. And then when she collapsed from anxiety, he was next to her ambulance as yeah. it drove her to the hospital. Yeah. Cuddling Sean. Him and Sean were like, oh, no. Yeah. She's collapsed from anxiety and exhaustion after winning a match. But mostly anxiety. So they made Roxanne Perez, they turned her from a plucky underdog but fighting women's champion, beating these more experienced names and everything. And then she lost her belt or she nearly vacated because she collapsed from anxiety. Yeah. And then ended. Then it was like, who's going to be in the ladder match? to defend the title that she's had to vacate. But she was there, was and, and she just didn't win she it. She just lost it anyway. And yeah, it was no, a great story. There was, like, no reference to the anxiety. She, she's like, I need to be in this match, Sean. And Sean's like, I can't put you in. It's like, yes, you can, please. I have to show people that who have anxiety that they can overcome it. Oh. And he went, damn it, that's a good point. Urgh, take off my glasses. And You're she, in it after you pass the medical. And then she lost, she proving lost. that, no, you can't. Yeah, she lost. Oh. It was an amazing story. I <laughs> was worried there was going to be a moment where she climbed the ladder and then couldn't because of anxiety. She'd be like... I feel like they just threw a dart and it landed on anxiety because yeah. it had no relevance. It was weird. It was really weird. Better yeah. than anal bleeding. Yeah, yeah, better than that. <laughs> they said it on TV. That wasn't just random. <laughs> that wasn't and me. JR, yeah, yeah, yeah. The funniest dress up in the world. <laughs> yeah. Joe Coffey is creeped out by Joe Gacy and RVRA. All right, Marky, mate. All right, mate. I tell Wolfie to pour me a paint. Hey. Gacy challenges Coffee. Fraser loves these guys. Gacy challenges Coffee to a match next week. If Gacy wins, the Diad get a title shot against Gallus. If Coffee wins, the Diad will never get another title shot as long Diad. as Gallus are champions. Every week, Diad. Yep. D Y A D. You saying Diad? No, 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 no. The no, Diad. No. All right. Wow. All the, all the, the Gallus dyad. versus Jism. So is this to write off? Um, Gibson My and, interest in the Gibson show. And Drake, yes. Then is this to write them off? Yeah, I, it looked like that's what I gathered, sure, yeah. not knowing anything about it. How long's Jay, uh, Gacy been wearing the David Koresh glasses? Has that been a while? Recently, I think it's been a while. Uh, has it? Yeah. What really? They've not been paying cool attention one. to the show. No. Oh, that's <laughs> no, sensible. Uh, um, yeah. Why did Joe Coffey kind of turn into Ric Flair a bit at the start? He was going, like, oh, "Save me a paint, please." Man. He did like a little wiggle, <laughs> which was the least Joe Coffey thing. When I think of how Joe Coffey stands, it's square with arms folded, and he's going, "Oh, I save me a wee drop of yeah, lager yeah. beer." It's funny. It's like seeing an alien impersonate a human being and trying to blend <laughs> Sugar in. Sugar and water. Yeah. <laughs> more, more tenants. But the, more. The, 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 so the thing that they've turned Gallas into is just lads who just drink but don't get drunk because they're solid and then they play pool and the um, heels but the faces and then no the heels again and the proper heels but they act exactly the same when coffee and wasn't there uh, they became lovable boring, boring. boozing faces but when oh. coffee came back now they're heels again Gals boys on top Aye. which is now his battle cry in matches he goes Gals boys on top Aye, we're here to cure insomnia and they're not winning <laughs> Uh, elsewhere, the mafia guys have kidnapped pretty deadly, but they keep making noises in the back of the trunk. So uh, one of them gets out and beats them up some more. Oh, They're yeah. so lovable. <laughs> yeah. Good guys on top. The weird thing is, this would have the comedy, the kind of the the conceit of the joke here, if you will, is that it's where we know that the noise in the back is pretty deadly. Going, let us out, and they're going like. What's that noise? Oh, I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah. And then it's blatantly obvious. That's the joke. It's blatantly obvious that there's two blokes in the back of it. But that only works as a joke if we've not seen them be put in there previously. Because otherwise it's just not a joke. It's just here's one thing that happened and now here's another thing that's happened after it. I don't get yeah. why it was funny. Yeah, here's the second part of the thing. The joke would have been if we hadn't previously seen them get locked in, yeah. and we'd have, we'd have to assume ourselves through dramatic irony that... Like in the intro to Goodfellas. Yeah. What? That film you like? Yeah, I do. He bought intro. me it. Matthew bought me Goodfellas That's once because right. I'd never seen it. And oh, it, was so nice. it was nice of him. Be nice of him. I was annoyed that he hadn't seen it. I was annoyed that I went, well, I've read, I've read the Wikipedia page. I read the plot synopsis. And read a video summarizing it. And I went, it's only one film. It was, a funny, before I watched it was a funny yeah. bit. It's really good. I've seen the real Goodfellas. What's the real Goodfellas? It was a like the real banged up abroad documentary about it. And they told you the things that you weren't meant to know or weren't allowed to be in the film. But I hadn't seen the film, so I didn't know what was <laughs> what was and what it wasn't like allowed. a good thing to watch. <laughs> it's very good. Valen Henley and JB beat Connor James and BJ after a miscommunication. 
Afterwards, kind of tells BJ she never loved him and storms off. I'm reacting to the storyline. Oh, and sorry. BJ's old pals confront... No, com- comfort him, I should say. Not confront. Later backstage, BJ apologizes to JB and Fallon for his recent actions. They forgive him and head off to the bar together. Yeehaw! Everything gonna be all right. Everything <laughs> gonna be all right. That's her theme tune. That's, That's right. Fallon's theme. I love it. Yeah. I put it in the chat the other day because I love it so much. I, I thought due to Ross's love of this feud that there'd be more heat from the crowd. <laughs> I, I just imagine Ross going, yes, finally. Uh, Book asked Vic if he'd ever been in love. And Vic yelled, what's that got to do with this? And Booker made noises like a chainsaw starting. He also mentioned, have you ever smelled the pheromones of a woman? Yeah, he went on hard and Vic's like, no, I'm not having this. Yeah. Um, oh, no. They kept it basic. The match was fine. <laughs> Booker was right, though. Jensen looks great when he's been scrubbed up. Uh then kind of hits him and Jensen is like, I thought you loved me. And they're going through that entire bit at the end. That was like three segments at once. But I, think, I guess they're worried about the draft and getting this storyline out the I way. I think Fraser pointed out to me that Brooks Jensen looks like Post Malone. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Can you Good see it? Yeah, yeah. Do you know Post Malone? Yeah. Do you think he looks like Brooks Jensen? Pichette, no, I can't looks... picture him. Okay, I, 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 can, I can picture Post Malone. I can't picture Brooks, Brooks Jensen. Jensen. Yeah, sorry. just the other day. Yeah, oh. literally like two hours ago. He was the emotional heartbeat of this show. Well, um, they, they seem very good. <laughs> I've got nothing to add here. No, they're good. The takeaway seemed to be that women are trouble. No, no, this one is. <laughs> no, no, this Kiana James. Oh, Booker was trying to yell. I was like, no, no, because Mike, because Mike. No, no, because Fallon is an example she's of a sound one. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't know how to say this. Few yeah, and far no. between, eh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? Know what I mean? Yeah. Nudge, nudge. The old ball and chain, right? Oh, <laughs> so their the mother-in-law. So Fallon has been right all along. Yep. She suspected Kiana from the start. Yep. Then they broke into Kiana's office because she's yeah. a businesswoman. That's her gimmick. Mm-hmm. And they they found flowers delivered by a man called Sebastian and a note that said "Thank you for last night and this morning." Ooh. And then they went, "Who's this bloke who you've been having cheating on our mate with?" And she went, "Oh, we were never exclusive." And then I don't know quite what the point of it was. It was like they were writing it week on week rather than one story. Very progressive. It's not. Nice. Yeah, no, because, resonate he, he, with no the... because he was confused. He thought they were exclusive. So there was a total miscommunication or uh... she was lying and troublesome. And she never loved him. So. She, yeah, she did. She said that, didn't she? Yeah. She was just using him to get ahead in the prestigious NXT women's tag team division, I guess. Yeah. Well, what was she getting out of it? The bar, I guess. No, that got nixed as well. So they first encountered when Kiana was trying to buy the bar that Fallon yeah. owns. Fallon owns a bar. <laughs> oh, Ross is this and this going, why do you guys not know this? <laughs> Originally, right, Kiana actually wanted to buy the land that Chase U was built on, which would have been an incredible storyline. Like the uni has to band together to save the school. And yeah. Duke Hudson and Andre Chase and them all trying to save this. That would have been amazing. And they didn't follow through with it for some reason. And it became her trying to buy the bar instead. It was, oh, I was really disappointed. This is still wrestling we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. In some way, yes. You uh, know, Luther's and Nick Pop yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Catch as catch can. Yeah. Backstage, we learn that Dragon Lee has his eye on Noam Dar's Heritage Cup. Suddenly, the backstage monitor is taken over by Scripps. Ooh, Scripps. Who has a message for Axiom. It's the usual stuff that midway through, he starts to use his real voice. Sadly, his mask is still there. We know and who he is. It's still now, crap. You know who he is? Reggie. Yeah, it's Reggie. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't get it either. <laughs> it was so funny because they had this promo making him look all dramatic and stuff. After he, he already like looks a, like a scrub after like Axiom Super Kick. Like a stone gargoyle, so like, like the edge of a building. Yeah. yeah. But then we went from that crap to the best promo package that NXT has done in years. What was that? This is a Sol Ruka thing. This was what's his name? Mm? Obafemi. Oh, why was this? I can't remember the video package. Obafemi throwing couches. I thought oh, yeah, part. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Is that this week? They showed it again because it was oh, that cool. Well, I didn't include it. Because Throwing a fridge time. and a cabinet and everything else. Obafemi <laughs> is here and he's going to lob ye and your mum. Did you like it? The package of just seen so sort of thrown. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. And he came out and his match was okay against Oramensha. Mm-hmm. It was all right. He didn't launch him. No. He thought he was just going to like, you know, dunk him. He threw him a bit. Yeah, but you know, he was immediately undermined by Booker T. Of course, <laughs> oh, no. um, of course he was say. he was billed on the graphic as six foot six, three hundred and ten pounds. Uh, less than thirty seconds later, Booker T said he's six foot four and two hundred and seventy pounds. <laughs> oh, he's a shambles. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, embarrassing. Like a real jack, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the Sol Ruka bit. No, no, Sol I've written Ruka. it down. Oh, I did see. Backstage NXT Anonymous films Sol Ruka being beaten up by an unseen figure. I must have skipped this. I apologize. Um, uh, it was really, really bad. So <laughs> That's why I skipped it. So is... So 
this whole time, scripts before it was revealed that scripts was um, Reggie, Reggie, which it still hasn't technically been revealed, but yeah. Um, there was also a, a second concurrent mystery going on. Who is NXT Anonymous? So we were confused at first because we were like, is it the same thing? But clearly it's not anymore. And NXT no. Anonymous is their own person. But, Who's going around filming the stuff backstage and has the Twitter account, I don't right? know. Yeah. Or Instagram, maybe. But I don't know whether NXT Anonymous is responsible for this beatdown on Sol Rooker or if they just happen to be there to capture the beatdown and it's a second mystery, who beat down Sol Ruka. Oh, okay. Also, we're still waiting to find out who ran over Nikita Lyons yeah. in the car park. So there's been, or who beat her up in the car park. There's like four mysteries going on at once. I hope they remember to tie up all those loose ends. <laughs> Do you think they will? I think a really hurried season finale before the draft ruins also, everything. There was once an incident where Grayson Waller invaded the performance center and beat up someone and filmed oh, yeah. it on his own Instagram. It was also filmed by NXT Anonymous, who was stood in the opposite corner. By looking at Grayson Waller's footage, you could see someone in the very distance. with the, You could see NXT Anonymous. Intentionally? No, uh, oh. maybe, but <laughs> I think I was the only person who took it seriously enough to look to freeze it. <laughs> and I think it was a dark-haired woman. or They had long dark hair, Yeah. but it was too blurry. So that's... Right. Oh. Mm. But this was this was like five months ago now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Person by the grassy knoll. Yeah. Oh God. Ooh. Bit of JFK there. Yeah. Okay. Is a Pruder film. Yes, that's right. Uh, Oberfemi. What do you Back think? Back into the left. Um. Good. Oberfemi. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Imposing. Yes. He's yeah. one of the NIL lads, right? Next in line. Yeah. That's right. He's a college athlete type man, which I think is what they. I'm worried though that they want to exclusively make NXT just a bunch of really athletic people. Wrestling should be for all different shapes and sizes, man. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, but they've all gone AEW now, so. <laughs> uh, show's called Takeover, right? Gigi Dolan, Commandeers. Commandeers? Commandeers. 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 Is that what you say? Okay. Uh, I, commentary. Wrote, I, wrote, I wrote hijacks initially and then was worried about the sort of like <laughs> implications of the word hi. Oh, and that as well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, commentary headset and cuts a promo on JC Jane. She wrote a letter to explain. My biggest fan. She says her brother will be ringside next week to watch her beat JC. So I missed this, but I'm assuming that JC's been mean to Gigi's brother or about Gigi's brother. The brother seems no, no, because no, no, because she, Gigi did that thing where like, here's my family and my history, and it's all bloody terrible. Right. And then JC Jane showed up next week. And went, <laughs> Lol. <laughs> all right, like, okay. Lol at your family right. and your brother. So that's how well, my family's gonna watch. So her you. brother's gonna be there to yeah. watch Gigi beat JC's ass. So it's gonna be really horrible if she doesn't win. Gigi's uh, promo style was different, I found. Uh, she yeah. was putting on like a spooky voice almost, like, oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> but I liked it. I thought it was just the heat of the moment. I don't think she's... No, but it wasn't... Um, I wasn't against it. She was like a cartoon character. She's like an 80s wrestler. It was great. JC Jane, you will be King Macbeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Accompanied by Charlie Dempsey, Drew Gulak says he's going to take Wesley's North American title. And elsewhere, Talibay offers to be in Wesley's corner <laughs> and do yoga. Wes accepts. This, I get that. The meditation thing, is that his gimmick now? Tyler's now yeah, like Tyler's, a, hipster, oh, a hippie. Yeah. So he comes along. Tyler's gimmick now is no longer excellent wrestler who takes on men multiple times his own size. It's now, he turns up backstage. Everyone finds him really charming and class. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he goes, you just need to calm down, take it easy and meditate. And they go, you're right, Tyler Bay. And that's what happens. They, yeah. it, it felt like just from that promo, they stripped away everything that made him really interesting. And I, like being this, this but, but prodigy, basically. He's so young and so talented. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that was his gimmick, that he is now uh, a yoga or meditation. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's now, he's the youngest middle-aged Englishman <laughs> who like grows his own vegetables and makes jam. He, but he's a wrestler. So he... Um... I described you, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he... Thank you. He comes in. I think this might be the first time they've ever like met in character, him and Wes as well. And he goes, yes, Wes. That's how he greets him. He goes, mm. yes, Wes, which took me back so strongly to university where the word yes was used. Yes, mate. Yes, boys. Yeah, it's like pretty deadly promo. Mm. Oh, what's going on? But yeah, the way he went, yes, Wes, to introduce himself, I thought, oh, that's so early 20s behavior. That. Like lad baby. Not like lad baby. Not like baby. lad baby. Come on now. Yes, mate. That's what... That's their catchphrase. Isn't is it? it? Yeah. Yes, mate. He's a deplorable <laughs> yeah, man. Really That's Sorry, the catchphrase. Yes, yes, mate. Yes, mate. Oh, That's that their catchphrase? catchphrase. Yeah. It's not really a. Was oh. it LA Knight? I've Come seen on, that they've got their own podcast now. That couple. Oh, have they? The Lad Baby podcast. I think they are wife, a yeah. disgusting pair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, let's stop talking about them. We uh, built this city on sausage. It's well. good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's good. Oh, it's so good that it replaced Four the thing with sausage ones. rolls. Yeah. I saw, an, I saw an American advert recently where it's a it's a service where you it's like a remote handyman so he walks you through on FaceTime what you're doing and it's this woman going we fixed this toilet on video <laughs> yeah. have you had this as well when you're looking at something at YouTube and it obviously plays an advert it's not paying for bloody YouTube premium and it comes up with like it's an advert but it's supposed to look like a TikTok so you look at it going what's this dude doing and it's just like my face or POV when I just save money on car insurance oh. like, anyway, hey this isn't a real TikTok you tricked me <laughs> So, just me? All right. No, I get what you mean. Uh, in the main event, despite sustaining an injury, Indy Hartwell beats Tiffany Stratton and Roxanne Perez to retain the NXT women's title. So, uh, Roxanne Perez with a massive, awkward smile. Um, with a massive, I, awkward smile? Well, uh, WWE's got this uh, thing like, show your face. No, it's no, just like, no. It's not she's natural only, looking. No, you can smile one, and not look like a weirdo. She's one of the ones that I think <laughs> is naturally smiling. That's natural. When you watch her when she was no, when she was Roxy outside of WWE, she was a smiley baby face then as well. She'd come out going, Wee I'm Roxy. I would have booed her. What oh. if that's a natural smile? That's a normal just... smile. That's a natural smile. She didn't get fixed. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, oh my god. And you know it's a big deal. Oh, it's oh, yeah, a main the event. Clearly very ugly Roxanne Perez. I'd say it's super ugly. I'd say like, you're not this is my natural lady. horrible smile. If I saw though. someone smile like that in real life, I'd assume they're doing something guilty. Like they just robbed a bank. Because you're saying that it's so you're not saying that it's an unattractive. So you're just I didn't saying, say it was unattractive. You're you said that. Because you're, just, you're a very negative person. She said that. You're saying, I think it was implied. You're, <laughs> you're saying that I pretend an, not to I'm hear. staying out of this. You're saying that it's I don't know who it is. Un, you're saying it's an unnatural smile. Yeah, that's it. It's a natural. If you can you can look, you can smile and be like, yeah, and be like, oh, that, you that's wish she was a cool baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she's she smile like lad baby, exactly. <laughs> yes, and you know mate. it's an NXT women's match and it's a big deal, it's a main event because they go to break immediately mm. as soon as the match starts. Thanks, NXT. Perez has some lovely map work, which she shows off with Tiff. Uh one slightly awkward attempt at double arm drag aside. Mm. The action was fine. Big Tiffle off the top rope, the outside of a swanton. And would you believe it? They actually catch her. And what happens is they apparently injure Indy for real, real, not for mm. play, play. So Oh, Tiff, I didn't know that. Right, so Tiff and, uh, I think Roxanne, she was selling. Right. No, I think this was real. Because right, oh. they didn't the, show her after. There was a report yesterday that the finish of the match changed and then changed back. So the finish, they had three yeah. winners of the match. Right? Say, they were going to give it I'll, to Tiffany, apparently. I'll run down. So sorry, Tiff and sorry. Roxanne wrestle without her. Rox delivers a top rope Frankensteiner. Looks very nice. Indy returns. Hey, limping the whole time, bless her. She lives a spine buster, so as Jack said, she must have said, yeah, no, I'm fine, I can go in. That's a spine buster. And it's like, ah, bugger. Rolls outside, no, I can't. Um, crowd went silent after this, the injury occurred, by the way, because it's hard, like, okay. Yeah. She, you know. uh, Tiff landed the split-legged moonsault, and then Indy stole the win with a sliding D. It's like, okay, hit one move, then I'll hit one move, and that's it. Uh, well done, Indy. Oh, yeah. Um, for, you know, managing to do that. I think it was, you know, it was what it was. Someone gets hurt during the match, you just bought the finish. It's like, uh oh. But I think they handled it well. Like I said, Rock and Perez look good. And Tiffany is one of the best characters in NXT in the women's division right now. So, yeah. Yes. Um, I agree with everything you've said. And it sucks, though, that is that, well, you had anxiety. You could have had your shot, but you didn't. You lost. <laughs> now I've given you another shot. You lost again. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm assuming now then maybe that Indy is would have anyway been a transitional champion soon. Is Tiffany going to be the next champion? Is that who they've got designs on? That would make the most sense. I've just had a Tiffany epiphany, and I think <laughs> that's, that's what she says sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I caught Tiffy time. That actually Tiffy sounds, time. That actually Tiffy sounds time. like something you'd say, though, Jack. I love Tiffany. Tiffany, 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 Tiffany epiphany. Ross is the... He was the original... He spotted her potential early, I think, Ross. Early in NXT, when we were still like, what is this show... There's too many mad characters. Ross was like, no, no, she's a good one. Yeah. But I think we were too busy going, there's too much <laughs> yeah. colors are going on. What? Yeah. But no, she um, she probably will be the next women's champion, I guess. You think? It's a good guess. Yeah. 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 And any of the thoughts there, Pachi, your first time watcher? No, nothing. I really, really, I, I, I didn't pick up on the Indy Hartwell thing being legit. Um, and I think she's amazing. I think she's got something like really, Ooh, really like special. Indy. Really like Oh, I think Indy's great. I, I... It was surprising <laughs> she won the women's title after losing nearly every match up right. until that point. Right, the wind point. came out it, of nowhere. It was yeah. like, no, Roxanne would have made more sense or Tiff or whatever. Also, but... Dexter Loomis won for her. Yeah, it was... Uh, he, like, boosted people went, yay! Line. And I'm yeah. like, we're cheering because Dexter Loomis is here, but this is making he was, sense. He was and, doing like, a James Alvarez. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. And even worse than that, to close the show, we see Tony D and Stax, to an unnamed body of water, Murder is implying murder, yeah. they've killed pretty deadly. Those wacky baby faces, good night, they're dead. They're, but then it was like also like an emotional, like, come on, Stax. Why would you Peter Griffin? <laughs> 
What was that? Go on, do it again. No. Carry on. Can't I like. can't do a hey. I can't do a mafia mafioso. That was good though. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. <laughs> what? Hey man, hey man, yeah, it really wasn't good. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah, hey man, yeah, you guys. It's Cartman, yeah. So Tony D goes, hey man, yeah. Um, no, he was going like, uh, well, I need to get in the car. Hang on. Go on. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> Hey, Stax. No, that, that was, was good. more, that was more, that was more, was more. What are we going to do now? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah Shaggy from Scoop. Scoop. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah. you do a good Shaggy impression. Yeah, yeah, you do. What? Anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Often. Yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't him, that was Jamal. So then... Do you remember Carry him? Carry on. We've never seen him again since. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Why are Tony Dean stacked? Why are we cheering them? Because they killed the English. Americans don't like us. Well, that's true. No, on my walk, there was, I saw loads of Americans around Hadrian's Wall. They were loving it. Well, the ones who've flown over here, we assume that they're like... You know, I think they were looking for like Jon Snow and wild, wild oh, white God. waters and all that stuff. Because they were like loving the history and that. Because it's older than anything that since like America as a nation started. Yeah, because it used to be us. Because it bloody used to be us lately. Yeah. But um, no, yeah. Loads of Americans around the wall. And the wall. I met a couple from Indiana. Oh, grand! Yeah, I don't uh, know what else to. No, that's say lovely. That yeah. she was. She, well, I only talked to one of them. She was a very nice woman. Oh, that's nice to hear. The, the dad was looking after their eleven-week-old son, who was the quietest baby I've ever. They've gone him. on holiday after eleven weeks. I know. That's well, crazy. He was, I don't even know he could was bring a kid on. Hadrian's wall. She was like driving some of them. Like she wasn't walking the wall mm. eleven weeks after having this new baby. Oh, okay, right. The baby was so well behaved. I walked down for breakfast. And they're just there with this baby. I didn't know anyone else was staying there overnight. We didn't hear a peep out of the baby. Oh, that's nice. Shout out to you, young American family from Indiana. Well done, baby. Now live in London. I'm the baby. Quiet baby. <laughs> NXT. Yes, mate. Yeah. AW Dynamite. <laughs> Orange Cassidy retains the international title against Bandido. Did I not do a funny subtitle for it? That's just <gasps> blank here. Do you want to guess one or? Oh. AW Dynamite. Quiet babies are the best babies. Oh my god. Sounds very Victorian, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? A quiet child is a good job, whatever they used to say. They're all pally afterwards. Backstage, <laughs> they want an interview, but Rene is too busy interviewing Adam Cole, baby, who says he's going to call out Jericho tonight. Yeah, did you like Orange Cassidy and Bandido's match? Yeah, I thought they lovely. The... <laughs> <laughs> what? Hmm? The Zor- you just skipped it. Have I got mine out of order? No, no, sorry, those do like mine. Oh, right, sorry. I have not got those. I didn't read the notes, pal. um, Did you like the match? I did like the match. I thought Mm -hmm. lovely chemistry. I mean, Orange Cassidy, like, is doing the international title thing so regularly, it's hard to... It's just a match at this point. But at the same time, I like his style. God, he's good. He can Uh, adapt really well. I think it's it's shut a lot of people up who just viewed him as a comedy guy. Oh, I think it's just... Don't worry, it means we've gone on for When we did the um, Handsome Wrestlers bracket... Orange Cassidy got further than expected due to Matthew, I believe. You think it's quite dashing. That sounds like me, yes. Right. Right. I didn't know this. You're not under OC? Not particularly, but yeah, right. I, I don't, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that... All right, fair enough. No taste, apparently. I was going to defend my, my taste. Me and Ross were more like... Um, like the Adam Coles and stuff we were pushing for. It was like the pretty boys, I suppose. Yeah. But Orange Cassidy, pretty. I guess. They're all pretty. They're all pretty. Oh, that was, a, that was a hard fought contest. Yeah, that was a really good week that the handsome men bracket was great it was tense was that a Reese's Pieces it was like yeah there was like two there was an AW side and then WWE side and it it took we really took it seriously yeah yeah Yeah. who won the AEW side Adam Cole I think and then he lost to Roman in the final I think that's right yeah really good shout from us yeah Yeah. we did did well done yeah Yeah. Yeah. awesome Hot lads. Great content. <laughs> <laughs> to the father Ted. Finish. They're all lovely lads. They're all, they've all got lovely, <laughs> yeah. Backstage. <laughs> Backstage, Jungle Boy, speaking of which, tries to make friends with Darby Allen ahead of the Four Pillars Tournament final. There's still tension between the two, though, and Darby reckons he could beat Jungle Boy uh, Darby in a, a who's worse at talking Darby match. Darby was a bit of an arsehole here. Yeah, who who's thought Who's worse it? at talking, did you just say? I didn't say that. I saw a lot of flack on Twitter last night for the, um, they were like, this storyline has proved that the Pillars thing is a myth and that they're not that good. I was it, like, wow. Uh, in fairness, 
Like they were like MJF's the only one of these lads who can tour. Right. If you're not somebody who watches wrestling on the reg, or AEW, I should say, on the regular, and they keep on harping out about the four pillars, the four pillars, the four pillars. All right, all right cool. I've not watched wrestling before. What does that mean? Well, one of these pillars has the world title and gets massive reactions and is really good at the, the microphone. The other three are also there. It's it's not quite mm. pillars keeping up the company, is it? It's I one like guy. Jungle Boy on the mic, personally. I can I can accept it for the other two. It's the, not I, the I, fact I, that they're not. He's not. Bad. Not, it's step, not that obviously. they're not good or they're not great or middling or the crap or anything like that. It's because MJF is so far above. Yeah. All you're doing is highlighting their negatives and they put them yeah. out there to, to basically take on MGF. And MGF could take all three of them in a handicap match in a, in a promo. The only it, one who's really... Oh, he's not one of the pillars, man. I was going to say Ricky Starks. I keep on thinking he is. It's Ricky. not like the four horsewomen where people can actually argue about who's the best one. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's there's yeah. a very obvious one. So far one. in AW's history, MGF is leagues. Above, yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, the pillar, the house that the pillar's built on is it's like that. The, well, the pillars thing came about, I think, because everyone was excited about this young alternative company and really wanted, and, it, and we were excited at the time about AEW weren't just using XWWE guys. They were having their own stars that they yeah. got from the indie scene and building them up. And it was really exciting. And people were quick to be like, these are the four who will be the future. Mm -hmm. And that was obviously before they brought in Punk and Brian and all the other massive names they've brought yeah. in. So. And that's the thing. It's nice that they're giving them something other than just one big opponent, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's right, the three pillars. Which one of, which one of these three lads, the pillar lads, are gonna, is going to win the title? You're like, none of them. I'm just going to retain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's funny as well. It's like, oh, the alternative style and this and that. Who's the one who's accomplished the most? The guy who's most like the really style. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Marks. <laughs> I think it says a lot that it wasn't the focal point last night. Um, the, yeah, the, the, the world title scene it was just sort of slotted in, yeah. in, like, in in the show somewhere whereas the BCC stuff was like yeah. the main event yeah. I agree with that uh, Jeff Jarrett beats Dax Harwood after interference from Sanjay Dutt and poses with Harwood's tag belt afterwards because Jeff Jarrett's the best I he am is. now confused about where we as a collective not just us three but where the internet wrestling fandom community sphere lies on the layers of irony when it comes to enjoying Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> How deep are we now? There's <laughs> Jeff Jarrett's good, but he's not that good, but he is, but he's not, but he is. Where are we? Now, how many? How deep are we in the cheese? All game? I know is that's a good point, Jack. Mm -hmm. All I know is I like watching him. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I is think he, I like he, him on ironically. Is he funny again now? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Even I mean, he's it's funny. He's just good. good. Yeah, he is good. I don't really care too much about the stable that much, but Jeff Jarrett just him existing, him doing his act, him doing all the wacky stuff they were doing with. Um, the acclaimed mm. when it was like the most Memphis stuff, some of those old school stuff you're ever going to see on mainstream TV and wrestling, and people were reacting to it. That's what I liked. It's like, hang on, some of this stuff's 300 years old and it's still getting pops. It's like vaudeville. I'm worried when he arrived in AW Jarrett because I knew I know that he hadn't been like the Triple H of Impact Jarrett for a long time now, and he'd even in Impact started doing that funny mixed martial arts stuff. He, he learned, he became self aware. Yeah. But then he joined Bullet Club and was popping up in AAA and throwing tacos about. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, is he turned into, like, Hulk Hogan? And then he, <laughs> like, as in, like, trying to desperately cling on to relevance. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. then, but now he's funny again. Yeah. Okay. Hey, all down. Are you, what did you think this match then, Jack? Well, I just, I'm a huge fan of Dax Howard and I'm sadly lost. <laughs> Basically, I'm salty is what happened. Oh. Yeah. But do you think that's just because it's a solo match? He's going to get ready for the tag match? Yes, I do. I do. If, I, if I have to be honest, I do. It's almost the battle of the Conrad podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think the turning point for Jarrett as well was when he was in the Rumble and everyone realised he's got better punches than all of oh, the Oh, that was Rumble. it. Like, yeah. everyone else, doosh, 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 he's there like, yeah, get you. Yeah. 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 Strut, strut, Quite strut. Joke. Boo, I ironically, not ironically hate you, ironically. Yeah. Hey, whatever works, man. Backstage, Tony Khan announces the return of the Owen Hart Cup. The final will take place in Calgary. What's your favourite city? Alberta, Alberta Canada. Canada. Yeah, well done, Jack. You you love that place. I love this city. Have you? Has anyone ever been to Calgary? No. No? I went to... I can't remember where the hell it was. I had, to, I had a long layover, so I spent 10 hours walking around in Calgary. Eating, you? You've eating, been to Calgary? Il, eating poutine. poutine? The chips poutine, and gravy. Yeah. 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 Chips and gravy. Cheese curds. Cheese curds and gravy. Yeah, and it was, I had that, and then I was waiting in the airport, and it was <laughs> showed a... It's the most American thing ever. It showed like the, I don't know, Fox News where it was, uh, in Chicago, they're taking the latest uh, Canadian cu cuisine of poutine and turning it into American version. And it was just like, uh. instead of uh, potatoes, it's fries. Instead of cheese curds, it's mayonnaise. The locals are calling it 
disco fries. Oh. And I was just like, Ugh. I looked around to see people watching going, oh, ah, they're not nice, are they? Oh, that's a good Canadian. Thank you. Oh, hey. Hey, oh. Hey, ooh, hey. hey, oh. Hey. Hey, Fargo. Hey. Fargo, hey. Oh, that's good. That was really good. That was <laughs> that was and horrible. also, that that's, was not, good. that's not even set in Canada, but it's up there. It's, it? it's it up might as well be. Yeah, yeah. It's close enough. But um, yeah, so that, that was just looking at it like, hey, oh, okay. Can you say, hey, neighbor? In that accent. Hey, neighbor. That's really good. Oh, another crap act. You sound no, that's not crap. You sound, like, of, uh, you sound like Brock Lesnar. Do that for Tubman next week. Yeah. That's way do, better. Do that sounds more T- like Tubman, Tubman in than Canada. Did it. <laughs> hey, I think I'm lost. <laughs> that's really <laughs> good. <laughs> Some Mount Fuji in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> I took that wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> so... Okay, no. I can't um, believe that. That's really good. I've never heard you do a good accent you do a before. Good, you yeah. And you'll you never Bret will Hart. ever again. You do, Bret. you do definitely really good Bret Hart. No, uh, now he's under pressure though. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no, Bret, no, no, what do you think of the seconds. women of Japan? What? <laughs> 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 no, nothing that we said on this All right, podcast. what do you think of Hulk uh, Hogan? <laughs> well, again, I think well, the thing with Hogan is he lied to me in 93 mm. and said he was going to lose the best there is, the best there It's me, Bret. And that's really, that's I good. think he's an asshole. <laughs> That's good. Wait, can I say that? It's a solid Jason, breath. sensation at your heart. That's genuinely <laughs> really impressive. Thank you. my damn nose. What else can you do? <laughs> do Bobby Lashley. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bastard. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, who can you do? No, I'm really bad at oh, yeah, you, 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 you can do Gold Dust, though, the boys. Gold and Dust? He dressed up as him. <laughs> I can't do that. I can do. I can, hey, I can inhale. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, no, I can't do you accents. Do accent. I wish I could because it's you a very likable character you do trait. Impression. <sighs> okay. Oh. It does his impressions. You think they're real people? <laughs> I don't. He did I an think, Italian I before. I think I'm middle of the road when it comes to impressions. I'm not. Uh, I think you're good. Yeah, if I was to pick out anybody in the office, I'd say you were the oh, best Fraser. one. Fraser. And yeah, Matthew as well. Picked. I'd say Matthew. I haven't heard this, Matthew. I haven't heard when he when he nails one when he does a good one. <laughs> no, yeah, I know what really you good. and Ross do. Is the best impression of is me. Oh, how, how are you doing, pal? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just it's more of a caricature than a real impression. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but all I get is people going, "Wow, it sounds just like you." Whenever mate. Matthew's not here and we have to cover, <laughs> there's a lot of Matthew impressions. <laughs> Welcome to the Gertie Cultaholic Video Podcast. <laughs> I've never sound more northern than when <laughs> Jack, who is technically more northern than me, does impression. I am. Exactly. Ross is way more northern. He's up near. He's up more. Ross, is, Ross is near the moon when it comes to my <laughs> accent. It's amazing. I'm from the beach, allegedly. The beach, I am. Aye. So Tony Khan says, Are you doing, pal? <laughs> well, no, in Hot Cup. <laughs> uh, and I can't believe it's been up. a year. Yeah. Until, it didn't really. Oh, they got it so wrong. It, it, what, Cole and Brit? Yeah. Well, it didn't go anywhere. Obviously, I know no, why it, they did it and family and obviously oh, blah, blah, blah. But cool. it just, for, for watching it, the TV every week, it was like, all right, so this Ruby went Ruby uh... could have really done with that. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, I didn't mind Dax not winning because there's all things that he likes Bret Hart. And then everyone was like, Dax Owen. should win. The... Well, no, but <laughs> yeah, that's, it. It's just, that's it why they cut the podcast. I hate Owen Hart. Uh, but I thought Kyle O'Reilly should have won, I remember, because he's Canadian yeah. as well. But yeah. It was weird. Wardlow squashes a jabroni, it says here. That's not nice. I didn't get his name. There yeah, I will. Arn Anderson compares Wardlow to a number one NFL draft pick saying he could carry AEW in the future. Isn't that saying that Arn Anderson's a bit of a loser? Because don't they give the number one draft pick to the losingest team? Oh, they do. That's was that an NBA? Oh, wow. No, that's all the Americans. That's the yeah. American sports system, yeah. Because wow. then that's at the end of it. Like, the people who are doing lower, like, I oh, stog It's this. to maintain, oh, like, a right. balance, isn't it? Yeah, but then the, you, the lower they are, the better the pick. So it's like, near the end of the season, because like, we're not winning, so let's just lose. they pick the best, like, college athlete to join their yeah. ranks, yeah. So he's just insulted him saying that? I don't, no, he's insulted himself, on. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's so one say of the, got, say yeah, the gotcha. Miami Dolphins do worse that season. They've got a higher chance of getting a better pick the next season to keep mm-hmm. like a balance in the league in theory. Mm-hmm. But then it leads to like accusations of teams deliberately losing. Yes. To get a better. Am pick I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's no relegation. Yeah. Uh, Christian Cage and Luchasaurus interrupt, but don't say anything. And are you appreciating the nuance of having uh, the dinosaurs around with the Christians? Uh... <laughs> See, I can use it on him because I know that. Um, is this the first time? Because obviously I missed a couple of weeks. Is this the first time Christian's been back since he died? No, he appeared two weeks ago in like a promo. It's like, that's right, we're back with a change. And then Luchasaurus was there looking exactly the same. You oh, know, you he's thought darker those... now, isn't he? He's, he's, he's well, the, the, the mask a bit. Well, okay, that, yeah. Oh, that, sorry, sorry. I beg your pardon. Um, they had the lawsuit about the mask, so I assume like other oh, people yeah. like to have a different mask. But apparently they settled it, so the mask was the same. And obviously, the yeah, colours around them a bit different. But... Right, with you. And then last week he came out. It was weird last week. No news has come out about it, but last week, Wardlow battered Hobbs. 
won the title. Yep. And then seconds later, Christian and Luchasaurus appeared. And it was like, has Hobbs done something? Or has AW's really rushed? Maybe. It yeah. was like, a, oh, well, let's move oh. as quickly as humanly possible they, on. And it's like, okay. So this is actually the second example of this happening then. This is the next step of that storyline. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's why they've not yet set On Operation, anything. let's forget about Hobbs for whatever so it's reason. Presumably setting up Wardlow versus Luchasaurus or yeah, Christian. Mm. Okay. I'll cover that. Right. Wow. On versus Christian. Think of the footwork. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I really hope they're called Beauty and the Beast because that's what Arn said on the mic. Oh. I hope they run with that. Yeah, it, Christian's a handsome man. I don't think you can call No, it. no, no. He was saying Ar- Arn yeah. and, um, and Wardlow are Beauty and the Beast. Arn was. Oh. Oh. Again, demeaning himself. But Christian oh, yeah. and Luchasaurus should be... Oh, well, okay. One's a literally a, a dinosaur. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. The daddy Sauruses. Is Wardlow an animal? Does he get compared to an animal? I know, I know Wardlow's a human being. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an idiot. But is Wardlow compared... You know, like Ryback's a gorilla and yeah. stuff like that. Wardrobe. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> What? Yeah, he's wardrobe. Swear one time he was called a wardrobe. <laughs> right. He was in that Firefly Funhouse fun match when they went upstairs. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. MJF and Sammy Guevara are being busy mates backstage and exchanging matching items of clothing. Ooh. Elsewhere, John Moxie attacks RJ City and says it's going to be a big night for the Blackpool Combat Club. Hasn't RJ City having a tough enough week? Did you see the David Arquette video? I heard it was a bit of a nightmare for him. So I thought <sighs> that he was at fault, but I don't know the full story. No, David Arquette, the fact they say a few ways that, no, David Arquette was not on drugs. He's just very happy to be there. He was an excitable kid that's had too many Coca-Colas because he wouldn't, he was just all over the place. No. Right. Watched, oh, it was crazy. I watched the first like three minutes and I had to turn it off because I didn't think David Arquette was getting a word in edgeways. I just said he just kept... Talking well, I mean, it's half the shtick because RJ doing double puns and stuff. But, but I don't like it then. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't enjoy the oh, series. Um, wounded by these comments. I want to know what he's got to say. But um, was he meant to also play along and be awkward when really he was just like, yeah, I shouldn't have been WCW champion. It was bad. It, it, uh, David Arquette was just happy to be there. Apparently, is Arquette playing into the whole? Is he is he doing a heel bit now where he's celebrating the fact that he was WCW? He's champion been outrageous. Oh, has he? Okay, he's well, appeared at WF events on TV with signs saying "I former WCW World Heavyweight Champion." Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, so now nah, he's he's been a big ham about it for ages. Do you but... when he made Nick Gage's life flash before his eyes? God, oh, that was amazing. Imagine imagine David Arquette being harder than Nick Gage. So yeah. David Arquette oh, and yeah, Nick Gage the had a death the match. Oh. It was an episode of Dark Side of the Ring. I knew he was doing death match stuff or had done death. I think Nick that's Gage, the last one he's ever Nick done. Nick Gage like. accidentally like cut him too much or something. Mm. And he like rolls on top of him and he's like, what are you doing? Like, no, no, he gets him and he, he yeah. tries to go, goes, oh, oh, David oh, Arquette been hurt. gets on top I've of Nick Gage. Yeah, and... I've been hurt. Can we like do this? And Nick Gage either doesn't hear or understand. So he goes to the next bit and tries to get another set. So David's like, no. And then she takes him down and grabs him and goes, what are you doing? He's like got his hands around his neck above him going, stop. Yeah, no and Nick's, and Nick's, oh, like, and Nick's wow. like, oh, sorry, I misunderstood. He's like, all right, let's go to the finish. One, two, three. All right. And, and, then, yeah. and then David just but walks he, out. Goes, I, I, I'm bleeding to death. Get out of the way. Yeah, you know. like walked off. It was an accident. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't think it was just a misunderstanding during the thing. But it's just that David Arquette, like, was on top of Nick, getting the hard, scary Nick Gage was getting taken down by It was weird. It made him scream. I would never bring this up in front of Nick Gage. I'm a coward, but, you know. MDK. Yeah. Mm. MDK. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, and, yeah, John Moxie looked good here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah, dare yeah. he beat up RJ City? Well, because he's who is now turned, annoying. Who's turned, turned grey after talking to David Arquette. <laughs> I don't like RJ City I need to grey, re-watch I kind of do, the but, uh, thing, because I already thought it was the other way around, but I haven't watched the whole thing. It doesn't get any better. It's that style throughout the rest of the thing. But It reminded me of when we did a podcast on the history of it was when WCBW shut down and we did like a oh yeah, here's yeah. our happy memories of WCBW I watched it back and I, I just don't know what I drank but I was I was talking I thought I was talking over Adam and Sam the whole the whole what? time yeah 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 no you were good mm, it was years ago anyway now but yeah I remember that thing really I thought it was you're not thinking at the time that's a relief no, because I watched it back a bit and I was like oh, I, think you're, I think, think you're very that, critical though. of yourself though a lot of the time I was I think the reason I didn't like it is because I was the host of that podcast and should have, I felt like I should have let them talk more. I don't know. I certainly didn't think that. Fair enough. And it's really easy to walk away thinking that. Like I, I, I was saying to Matthew in the kitchen a minute ago, I dread doing these podcasts mm. um, because quite often I've come away from them thinking like, okay, I shouldn't have said that. And it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? When, you, when you're in here for four hours or oh, whatever God. filming, it's, it's like streaming. It's just a conscious, a sort of stream of consciousness. Right. Um, and 
nobody else picks up on it. Like you're worrying for no reason. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That is true. Whereas conversely, which on, is why I think that, <laughs> <laughs> which is conversely why on YouTube, the thing sometimes you'll something you've not even given a second thought to will be scrutinized in a shorter video. Yeah, not as often, but like it's just weird how that sort of thing works. Yeah. Oh, quite introspective there. Well, good, good thoughts. Oh. But you should also celebrate your victories. You know, yeah. every week here. The Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. The Cultaholic Video Podcast. Where we talk about uh, Sammy Guevara beating Dibon via DQ with the Eddie Guerrero finish. So Chavo was obviously mad on Twitter afterwards. He and MJF beat down Darby afterwards until Jungle Boy chases them away. Tony Schiavone announces that next week, if Darby and Jungle Boy could beat MJF and Sammy in a tag match, they'll be added to the title match at Double or Nothing. And everyone goes, oh, okay, good. Got there in the end, eh? Okay. Tony goes, listen, MJF, you little prick. <laughs> yeah, it was good, that. Yeah. It was really good. And I, you know what? I actually liked the, the message from Tony on commentary and then Shivani going, oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought it was quite fun. I've done it before and he's, he, Tony's good at it. Yeah. Tony, Tony's good at talking to Tony. Yeah. MGF then drives off without Sammy because there's no room in his car. Well, as it was pointed out on Twitter, he's all sweaty, he's wrestled with no shirt on. He doesn't want him to get in his car like that. Fair point. Yeah, fair. Sweaty Betty. Adam Cole calls out Chris Jericho, who <laughs> appears on the Tron to distract Cole. The rest of the JAS attack Cole from behind, so Orange Cassidy and Bandito, who are now friends, try to make the save. That's nice of them. But they're not numbered until Roddy Strong, what are you doing here? Didn't even know he'd been let go. Yeah. No. He, uh, uh, and he, so uh, last time we saw him in NXT, because obviously we followed this August, week after week. August, I looked it up. Right, was Man, he'd been wow. left in the hospital with the, the diamond mine. Oh my God, And he they never came back for him. So I think so, he just quietly, he just... Like, might have sat himself out and left to win an AEW. He's been walking there. He's taken him so long. <laughs> How do you think Bobby Fish is feeling him right now? I know. Old. Yeah. Probably, no, it doesn't matter. Probably still scrutinizing you know, CM Punk's kicks. <laughs> with just with the wrong. whole thing, when they jumped to uh, AEW, it didn't feel right without Roddy. Mm. But I think it'll probably work. Without Bobby. fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. And he wasn't even the original three. No, no. Yeah. To me, like, Roddy originally st stuck out like a sore thumb. When he first joined, I was like, ooh, I'm not sure. I'd, no, to, uh, just personal taste. Okay, personal okay, fair enough, enough, yeah. I, I didn't get it for a few months, genuinely. It took, it took <sighs> a while, but now it's like, oh, but, but the only thing is their, their faces, which is fine, but Roddy Strong is such a good heel. I don't really get him as a face because he looks like the villain in a teen movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, just exactly like that. But, you know, I'm glad he's there. And he's got his Kill Switch Engage song, apparently, which he used on the That Indian. was crazy. I'm like, wait, you're playing Kill Switch, right? right? And I'm like, wait, I was trying to go through my head, like, it's been so long since I've heard proper licensed music. I went, wait, who comes out? And then, yeah. I always prefer, I'm not a metal boy in real life, but I, in real life, but when I'm okay. watching wrestling. No, in real life. Um, I always preferred CM Punk's Kill Switch theme to Cult of Personality. Which no one really agrees with. Oh, I like Remind Kill me because it's been forever. Even which kills through, through the oh, darkest yeah. day. It would be funny because like 2009, you'd be like, you know, Jack Swagger's theme or whatever, or Triple H just bow down and then you hit like Kill Switch. It was a, mm. it was a mood changer. It mm, was. Anyway. All I ever wanted. Yeah, right. Yeah, no. bah, bah, bah. And speaking of mood changer, oh. it's time for another exciting no, edition of QTV. No, 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 I, I didn't. I, no. Is, is that the one that Orton had for like a week? Apparently that's, so. that's the one, yes. That's the one. We've seen it. Him in the slightest. Ooh. No, no, it's no. weird. A furious P -P -P powerhouse Hobbs threatens QT after losing his TNT title. QT promises Hobbs he'll be a champion again. Hobbs leaves and QT says it's time for plan B. I hate QTV. <laughs> I really hate it. Apparently so does AEW. God. Uh, My notes Not here. sure what's happening there. Point 0.10 there. Every other bit. QTV really... happens. I don't get it. it. Everything else got like paragraphs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. QT goes out the loop. Uh, and shame on. See, this is actually a perfect example of it to get your opinion on something like this because QT's been using these little things and they've been doing little shots at people on Twitter he's been beefing with, hmm. which is the most gotten to energy I've seen from a wrestler in some time. So I guess we're supposed to go, I saw that on Twitter. Ha ha ha. And so, we all go out and buy QTV shirts. Yeah, they make references that I don't get because I've not been following yeah. QT, QT Marshall's drama on Twitter. It's like, oh my, what you the... know that Paddy Pimblett, the Scouse yeah, MMA yeah, yeah. fighter, who had this beef with Ariel Helwani? And lost. And then Ariel Helwani proved that this lad was wrong about him. Then he goes out and has a fight in the UFC, wins a dubious decision, and then in the interview with Joe Rogan afterwards in the octagon, goes... 
makes a reference to the beef with Ariel Helwani. Yeah. He goes like, hey, these journalists have been paying me for my interviews or something like that. Some sort of reference. Yeah. And no one, it was really uncomfortable. That's kind it's of never been a greater like. decline over two days than Paddy, Paddy over oh. that, that thing. Because he, he, he oh. he'd lost that match. And then his, his crew was at Barstool who were like, yay, Dana, match of the night bonus. Or bitch of a, and Dana's just like, mm. <laughs> it wasn't nothing to do with this because it's like, you didn't, you didn't win. They want him to, because Conor McGregor was so popular in that, they're looking at another guy with probably to them a similar accent. And I think they want him to be the next oh, yeah, the blonde yeah, yeah, yeah. On the ring camera. Yeah, on the what? There was a video of him on a ring camera. Where, oh, yeah. me dog's just... Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, a yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he's got, well, he's a good character, isn't he? That I can was see why they would Yeah, yeah and but that. that he just took so much away. Did it really? Cause I cause don't cause follow it, it, so. well, he was, You don't want to be... For, uh, if you're going to be for El Hawani, you want an army with you because he's got all the notes and all the receipts, so we just... Uh, he also was One sucking up to Dana by deciding he didn't that like Errol Hawani because Dana doesn't. So he's sucking up to the boss, basically, and going like, I hate these yeah. vast journalists. The yeah. word journalist is fantastic in this car, <laughs> It is good. Like Celebrate. Like He's a journalist. Sorry, she's a journalist. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, you you, you tell the truth, Scylla. It's just rude. That, that episode of Blind Date. Oh, oh it's God. incredible. Um, Thank you for bringing it back around the British TV there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I can see the cheeky going on board here. I'm, like, hey, Blind I'm not bored. I feel like <laughs> I'm, I'm not contributing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I feel I'm like I'm watching. Is it. What is it you've been watching? Hotel, host, host, uh, the Hotel with the, Mark not Jenkins. Not Hostel, The Hotel. The Hotel is excellent. You'd really like what it. What is it? It is about um, a hotel called The Grosvenor um, down in Torquay, and it's like a real life 40 Towers. Oh, it's really, right. it was a Channel 4 thing that, uh, 12 years ago. Or so. Are they, oh, okay. Are they crap? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, everything's just going. It's a disaster all the I time, a, but it's really great. I had a bad experience on my walk that I've not talked about on camera because I come across like a bit of a dick, but I'm, I'm going to go. talk about that. Yeah, come on. Go. Come on. Yes, do it, Jack. Self-confidence. So uh, when after Sam had been to see me in Wylam, we'd had a few pints. I was a little bit merry. Ooh. Oh, I know. And then um, Sam went, got his train back to Newcastle. I was like, right, I'll go back to my B&B, which was above a pub that night. And I was walking back up this slope where I'd come down to meet Sam. Past, I'd Googled like, I was so hungry and it was like that kind of sort of drunk, I want crap takeaway food. But Wylam's a very nice place, so there wasn't, wasn't many like greasy takeaways about. So it was like, there's a pizza restaurant called The Wood Oven that does takeaway. So I was passing The Wood Oven. I've really named them publicly now, wow. Go for it. Oh, well, went in and there's like a group of like four teenage lads ahead of me in like football gear. They've been playing football. They play stopping for a pizza on the way home. They talk to the bloke in the restaurant order some sort of takeaway pizza, and he's like, yeah, just take a seat. I'll get the pizza for you. Then I'm next in the queue. I go, sorry, can I order a pizza to take away, please? And he goes, no. Oh. And I'm like, oh, right, okay then. And then he starts going, is it just the one? Is it just the one pizza? And I was like, no, it's all right. And I left, because I thought, I'm not playing this game. He wanted it to be like, I got the impression that he wanted it to be like, I'm doing you uh, a thing. It's a real chore that you're making. Yeah, oh, you'll have this. to like, Order more or whatever. Wait, what? No, he went. Is it just one I can squeeze? He started saying like, "Is it just one pizza?" So I went, "Can I order pizza for?" Because he was so busy, and I was quite cheery because I was drunk. I was like, "Can I?" I wasn't. I wasn't like fun, like knocking stuff over. I was like, "Can I order pizza for delivery, please?" And he went, "Nope." And I was, was he like, joking? Deadly serious. And I remember being like, didn't know what to say back to him because we were just looking at each other. And I was quite shocked. You're not expecting like, anyone to say no to that question. Gone, I'm pizza, so please. sorry, mate. Like we're busy. I'd be like, right. "No worries, of course. I can't demand a bit." But he went, "Nope." And I was like, "Oh." And then he went. Start going, is it just the one? Is it just the one pizza? As if like, I'll squeeze you in with these kids, I suppose, like I'll put your pizza in as well. And I was like, no, no, it's all right. Oh. Left, got more annoyed thinking about it, went back and went, you were really rude to me there actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, back. you went back and told I went oh. back and went up to him and went, you were really rude to me before. And he went, no, I wasn't. I went, yeah, you were. You were. He went, <laughs> no, he went, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. You, were, you were really rude to me. And then the actual bloke walked out the back and I was talking to the wrong guy. Oh, I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, I'm so sorry, and then started having to go at this bloke. I wasn't shouting. You but cracked I, on with it then? Oh uh, yeah, because I was drunk. I didn't give a crap. Oh. But um, as I left, the lad who was just the only similarity was they were tall with dark hair, but one was like 40 and one was 20. And I was shouting at the younger lad, not shouting, but. And then he was busy waiting, like waiting a table as I walked past on my way out. After the bloke had then denied that he was being rude, I, I didn't win the argument. And I went whatever and left. And then as I left, I was patted him on the back. And went sorry about that, mate. <laughs> just like left and went. Oh. What did you have for tea in the end? I can't remember. Um, Meal deal. I went think out there the was a, there was a spa on the way back. Oh I, no! Just a cold sandwich out of the no. thing. No. And then oh, FaceTimed my girlfriend and went, you're not going to believe what I've just done. <laughs> like, yeah, it was sad. It's so rare to get, like, 
restaurant or customer service like that over here? Like, he was, I think he thought that I was just maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I shouldn't have come back. <laughs> like, um, it was just the fact that when he walked out the side door, when I realized I was talking to the wrong guy. Because uh, yeah, you, you would have won because you say, all right, fine. It's like, you're a pizza place, pal. All right, fine, go and somebody else. You would have won I that. I felt so bad. But if you've gone back and yelled at your own guy, it's I felt like, so oh, bad for that lad. Man. I just gone in and gone, like, you were really rude to me before. I went, he went, no, I wasn't. And then the guy, and I remember I said to the actual guy, <laughs> I went, you were really rude to me before. And he was so, like, confident and smug. I hated him. And he went, like, <laughs> he was like, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Like, oh, you're not that important, mate. Shut up. Like, he had this real air of, like, you're nothing. And he's like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. And I went, like, uh, I felt like he was a teacher. And I went, like, you were rude to me before, and he went, when those kids were in. So you remembered the uh, incident. Oh, getting annoyed thinking about manners it. Manners cost nothing, eh? No, they don't. And I was polite. So stop though. shouting at people. <laughs> <laughs> and I never shouted because it was a small restaurant and I was embarrassed already. Yeah. Oh, God, why have I admitted that? No, it feels nice to get it off my chest. No, that's good. Therapeutic. My mum did that recently. What? She doesn't listen to this podcast anymore now that like, the nine hours long. But she said that she'd gone into a shop for a mobile. A certain thing, yeah, a new phone or something, which is already like out of her comfort zone anyway and he was she was waiting to speak to somebody and the guy basically ignored her to speak to like the chat on and basically try and pull this this lass whatever oh uh, yeah and eventually that is rude. and she wasn't even buying anything they were just chatting along and she, my mum stood there in the queue with the way she says it and eventually he got to her and started doing this and she just went nah it's all right yeah and left. but then she pulled a jack um, no. She went back in and went, no, 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 I'm going to have a go at you. I've been waiting there and you taught me just because I'm not as bloody pretty or have that woman, Whoa. have the age of that woman. And the guy was going, no, 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 no. But it's like, what Jack, hopefully imagine the guy was like, no, 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 I'm so sorry. You know, sweating for a manager right there going, you didn't even talk to me, you didn't even look at me for five minutes, wow. even nudge me as a human being. I don't know what the bloody hell a phone is, whatever. I didn't help with these things. She probably did. And better. all this, and then all yeah. this. And the guy was like, no, 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 I'll help you. And I was like, I don't want your help. And she went elsewhere. Oh, I'll, that, that, I'll do it without. That. I yeah, should have done fine. that. Turns out she was shouting at a broom the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'd have a glasses in. <laughs> She's yelling at one of those like those cardboard policemen that <laughs> you open shops and rest I'd, like I'd just like to clarify as well. I Mom, if you do if this is the first one you do in years, I'm sorry. I'd just like to clarify as well. I I I've not I, I used to work in retail. Like, it's it's a hard job, obviously. Know, yeah. Being I've never worked in a restaurant, but I imagine it's stressful. Mm -hmm. This bloke was clearly like the floor manager. He was yeah. older than all the other kids around him, and none of his staff backed him when I was having a go at him as well. I'm just saying, I bet they hate him. I hope they hate him. Um <clears throat> but he wasn't one of the kids running around giving people pizzas and that. He was in charge. I wasn't having a go at the well, I did accidentally, but oh, no, I'm gonna I, stop talking. Okay. Have you ever the do anything like that, but you I'm, I can't even return a pair of jeans if they're the wrong size. <laughs> I'm not a fan of confrontation at all. Um, no, I don't. I, 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 I can't remember the last time anybody was rude to me in a That's in good. a shop. And you know what? If if I get somebody who's rude, like uh, or some like like the Uber driver thing I was talking about earlier, I, I don't say anything. I just sit. You know what? With that Uber driver, I I couldn't be asked, and I just I just went, yeah, I guess so. I wasn't trying to. It's not worth it. No, it's I, not. You're right. It and I'm, I'm it. It, it, you, you just it manifests, doesn't it? You walk away and you're thinking just about it. Just because you've and also just because you've if you'd gone, no, I don't agree with that. Actually, he's not going to go. You're right. I yeah, just changed my opinion. Exactly. This, no, yeah. no, yeah. It's a, it, you're not going to win. You, no. you, like, ultimately, you're not going to change somebody's mind no. in a 30 second interaction. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. We're like, oh, shop work. It's, it's, it, I've worked in retail as well. I've probably been short with people in the past. If I'm having a bad day or I've accidentally ignored somebody or not given them the time they deserve, Jack's is, is an exception there for sure. And, and in fact, your, your mum's as well, in that they were actually actively being it rude, was weird. weren't they? Yeah. Um, but generally, I'm not the sort of bloke who goes on Google reviews and goes, wow, one no, star I didn't or do anything that, like yeah. that. When the bloke delivered my Greg's to the wrong city, I didn't say anything when he came along. He was like, I just was like, yeah, cool, mate. Yeah. I didn't go, no. Give me, my, give me my cold coffee, please. Yeah. But uh, actually, actually, I'm not sure if it's a good thing, my self-confidence or bad, but Uber drivers haven't talked to me in forever. Oh, I, really I don't know if that's because they go, oh, okay, what is this thing? It's got oh, car. Come on, <laughs> I'll just <laughs> drive. Whereas the look at Pachiti and goes, oh, he obviously hates maybe women. They're, maybe, they're, maybe they're starstruck. <laughs> what is maybe this? They're, maybe they're like, oh. 
Hey, look at that, hey! Look You're on the level, right? <laughs> look at me going, I don't know what he is. That's that no, worried oh, me. I was like, do I look like a misogynist? Yeah. What's the, what's yeah. the deal they're like, oh, I, they're starstruck. They're like, I love insipid Taz commentary segments and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's Taz. I say every single one of them. <laughs> Locks the doors and goes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen. God, we need to finish. Dynamite, sorry. Yeah. That's my bad. Oh, it's all right. We'll get away from Jake Cargill retaining the TBS title against Taya Valkyrie as the latter couldn't use her finisher. Oh, that's why I say Valkyrie and Valkyria, because... No, yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah, She rolls her up with a handful of tights, so an angry Taya almost hits Aubrey Edwards with the move instead. I think this match would have gotten a lot more heat if it had been at a big show instead of a random match on Dynamite. There was no way, Jay. Oh, losing. I got the impression they're going to do it again. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay, yeah, obviously build up so you can actually hit that move, but like that's what I mean. The crowd was nowhere near into it as I think they could be. No. If fair. they build up and go, wow, this, now she can mm. use her move. I think that... Even if Tyre is the one to beat Jade's reign, I still won't really enjoy it because, as we said a few weeks ago, it should have been Willow, Nightingale, or Chris Statland. Like one of the AEW ones, not the really new Tyre Valkyrie. Yeah. But yeah. Just the flavor of the week. Mm. I like Shivani when he, God lady, when he, uh, <laughs> when, 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 sorry, <laughs> Tyre hoisted up Aubrey. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Backstage, Britt Baker and Jimmy Hayter swear revenge on the outcasts. Yes. Good. They do. They say, we're nice until you give us a reason not to be. And I thought, no, you're not. You're, you were heels 10 minutes ago. But yeah. But they're good heels. They are good heels. Though. It's AEW. Mm. The main event, Kenny Omega and Kanesuke Takeshita beat the Butcher and the Blade. He's kind of done it. Oh, he's kind of... Uh, B plus. Afterwards, Brian Danielson tries to recruit Takeshita to the BCC. Did telling... you say B plus before Brian Danielson on purpose there? Or was that just a coincidence? Did I say what? B plus, <laughs> Brian Danielson. Oh, yeah, I get that. Wow, yeah. just a, wow. Yes, I'm really clever. <laughs> Telling him that if he sticks to the elite, that's why Ubi drivers don't talk to me, he'll end up a joke like Michael Nakanakazawa. It's a fair point. The BCC blindside Omega and beat him down, but the Young Bucks make the save, uh, allegedly pace, as always. <laughs> Kenny tries to use a screwdriver on Moxie, but Takeshita stops him. It proves to be a silly decision as the BCC regain control and Moxie attacks Takeshita with a screwdriver. Mm. It would be good if Moxie had done this and then, you know what, actually fair play and shook his hand up <laughs> like Christopher Daniels. Uh, I'm loving the BCC right now. It's all This is all just building up to this. Danielson is amazing. Just being yep. a dick. Mm. Yeah, he's excellent. On commentary, he was just really, really fun. The American like dick. Yep. You know what? One, one thing that was really noticeable with um, MJF when he was on commentary is... It sort of gave me shades of bloody uh, Michael Cole commentating Daniel Bryan matches, oh, no. where it took everything away from what was going on uh, in the right, ring and everything. And I, don't get me wrong, that's MJS thing, and you're meant to hate him and, and everything. But Daniel Bryan, a little bit more reserved, but still really, really effective. Mm. Really enjoyed him. He on doesn't commentary. make it all yeah. about himself no. too much. But that's MJS character. It is, of course. So yeah, I get it. But Bryan's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fair that one of the best in-ring workers ever is now also becoming so... Well, I say also becoming. For the past 10 years, has been really good on the mic as well. You know Elite I mean? BCC to look forward to as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Really I can't good. wait for the BCC just to beat them up. Oh, no, I'm worried that the Elite are going to win and you're going to go sour on it. Yeah, I'm going to flip this table. <laughs> it's massive, like, so I'm going to have to do some work <laughs> now, but I'll do it. And that was a very long week of fortnight of wrestling. Uh, any complaints about this length? You can obviously come out to call the holic. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just go to your local takeaway yeah, and shout, yeah, yeah. Oh, shout oh, at whoever yeah. you fancy. <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, mailbag. Number one. Hi, guys. Hi. I've been watching since the name redacted days. The truth of that statement is, I bet it's starting to feel like a little cliche at this point. We love cliches. Yeah. And I am a huge fan. I'll be honest, this is the fourth or fifth time I've sent in a question, but Ross keeps leaving me out of the show. No cap, unhappy foos. But I digress. I'm a big fan of Gunther's IC title reign. I would love to see him bumped up the world title scene. However, as we all know, that would lead him dropping to sorry, lead to him dropping the IC title, most likely with a loss. It's a fair point. This made me think, is there a better way for a mid-card title to be dropped that would keep the momentum of that person moving up the card? Away from the obvious injury angle of being stripped of the title, I am struggling to see better options. They reminded me of the time Option C... Oh, I remember this. Option C strategy that TNA would use, and I think this would be an interesting concept for WWE to use. For example, if a person of the IC US title reign makes it past one year, they could use Option C, drop it and get a world title shot. Oh, Ooh. I'm interested to hear your take on this. Apologies if this didn't make much sense. It did. Love the content that you guys put out. Keep up the great work. Cheers. John from Northampton. 
P.S. Thanks for using my artwork for the short-lived Jack on Film segment. Oh, it was me oh as, I think thank it was you, me John. As the Godfather poster. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Nice. Cheers, John. Thank, thank you, you John. Question. I really like. Uh, I I thought Option C when they did it with uh, Ares, wasn't it? Was it Ares the first? Yeah. Person I was the man who invented Option C. That's right. Um, I I I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's perhaps a dangerous precedent to set in WWE where, you know, you have to continue that with the, the mid-card title. Um, but they don't have to take option C up, so that's fine. And Gunter is actually the perfect guy to do this with. Yeah. This super dominant champion who has gone through everybody on the roster and the only person left to beat is your world champion, your Roman Reigns or whoever it might be with the world heavyweight title. Um, I think Gunter's the guy to do that with. I think it's a really great shout. I think it's a good shout as well. I don't think they'd ever do it, but I think that, like, if I don't think Gunter would ever be the guy to beat Roman Reigns, unfortunately. Mm. But um, I think that in this instance, it is a really good shout. My all, my issue always with like option C or those sort of things is that it's like treating a different belt as a stepping stone, whereas I like to keep the other like the other belts to be kept strong. But and then especially with. The, the ups and downs of the IC title over the years and whether it's been prestigious or not, and Gunter's done a really good job of making it really prestigious again. But well, I think I disagree. Okay. I, I think the, the IC title and the US championship, they, they are the stepping stone. Well, I think that's, that's, the, point, that's, actually, yeah. that's what they should be. You right. should be working to get there so you can get onto the world championship. Everybody wants to be world champion, not IC champion, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I actually think viewing yeah. them as a stepping stone is, is maybe a sensible thing to do. Well, damn it. Sorry, right. I didn't mean to... No, no, damn. <laughs> Matthew I like your opinions uh, but I like to think the, the old school way when they're trying to get the IC title off someone but don't lose any heat like Shelton Benjamin or someone sort of like that is to just have a good old three or four way like the one oh, they had at WrestleMania it was great it was and then Gunther did not lose mm -hmm. Gunther, you're happy about that though right the ring oh, general I would have been happy if all three any, all three of those lads should have all won the title together yeah, it's one big good, staple. I like the fact that he's denied Sheamus the, the that, big win that as well. Was, I was trying to think because it was like it, Sheamus versus Gunther was obviously amazing, but like that three way was great because of Sheamus's little like, oh wait, mate, let me, let me win this. And Drew's like, well, no, I'm uh, in the match too. Mm -hmm. And it's, that made it was a lovely little story, yeah, as well as the hard hitting action. You know, three, two, one, get kicked. Yeah, I was ah. Oh, really that's hopefully good. on your matches of the the month. It's all right. I've already done a WrestleMania edition. So I did I that before so, my big God. walk, and it was it was the, the top one of that month. Good. What else could it be? Yeah, of course. What else do you think? I think say? it might be ranked at the minute in my own personal standings on the podcast as Ooh. my favorite match of the year so far. It was really good. Did you prefer the three way at Mania or the single work clash at the champion? Well, that was last clash year. Of, no, no, no. Oh, do I just, I just um, I'd need to watch that Wales one back. I think. Mm -hmm. I think, just from the innovative things they could do with a third person, maybe I prefer the triple threat. Oh, really? Okay. I bet the answer for most people is whichever one they saw live if they went. Yeah. The li sure. Live, it must be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah mm. an answer. By the way, can we have that? It's on the Slack chat for me. You can I'll get Jack on film for the lovely, <laughs> lovely like lad. I'd like to see. John from that Hampton while I get the next question up. Oh, you've got the... Oh, there, there it is. It, is. Oh. it looks like she's about ready to shoot up, but I do like it. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does, actually. Fantastic. Oh. Thank you, Sean. That's terrifying. Yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> uh, you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. I can't, still can't do it. That sounded like Mark Wahlberg. My wife and I... What? Is it an intro? Got a wife. Oh, oh, there we go. Two. Diddle Me Timbers, faculty of Cult U. Diddle oh. Me Timbers. Arr. My wife and I recently produced a wrestling-themed burlesque show, Search Glitter Mania on YouTube, bloody hell, which featured Goldust, of course, Hulk Hogan, uh-huh, Ronda Rousey, okay, Nakamura, uh-huh, Triple H, right, and Jake the Snake, among others. I've always thought wrestling was basically burlesque with more punching, which made me wonder, <laughs> what other art forms are closely tied to pro wrestling? Bonus question, what would your burlesque name be? I feel like Jack is a great one in the Boner Bus. The Boner Bus would be my nickname. <laughs> that's just not a drag name. That's, yeah, that's, well, that's, drag that's just an name. insult. I thought they were kind of clever sometimes, like, yeah. like Charitza May when that was the Spanish right. drag queen and stuff. Right. Uh, former Derby counter, Wunderkind striker, Paulo Wanchop. Oh, it's Paulo Wanchop, okay. Um, A.K. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris, your lovely sense of humour. The uh, boner bus. <laughs> it's not even it. It's just, ha-ha. I talked one time on one video about one time, maybe... Uh, it's what you talk about, like one little bit will get scrutinised. Getting her on a bus and then stuck with You'll me. get one person saying, that was a great point you made about the Gunther Icy title reign, and then there's 19 comments going, lol, boner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we never grow up, do we? We're always yeah. mentally teenagers forever. Um, 
what art forms are similar to wrestling? It borrows from loads, doesn't it? Yeah. Rock music. Rock music. Yeah. It's, uh, like in a, your face. I can yeah. See that. yeah um, so it's like the like the power metal stuff, which is all like being the mightiest and the greatest of them all. Theater. So, oh, sorry. Theater. Soap operas. Ballet. The same ballet. It actually is in some ways similar to ballet. Uh, what did someone say like the sort of like a uh, total theater? Where you can obviously, What's that? it's where you oh. like immersive theater. Where you no, it's the opposite. It's where you can see like the the stuff. It's deliberately like you can see the, the ropes holding up the. Oh, oh right. right. And you're supposed to be like, like wrestling is a form of total theater right. because you, you're aware of it. And it's, I've not heard uh, of that. Have you seen? It's way too deep. The BBC right now, thing, the show that goes wrong or whatever, where they do a pantomime. Oh, I keep getting told to watch it. Right, it, they but. do a pantomime, but everything goes wrong. So like the one I've seen is Peter Pan. Yeah. And there's a bit where all the kids are singing in the bedroom. Like, oh, you just need to believe and all that. And then they're on like a triple bunk bed, the three kids, and one of them falls and the, the kid in the middle is like, ah, like they're all played by adults. It's fine. But um, doing things wrong looks harder than actually it all going well. Right, right. It's all very slapstick and stuff. Slapstick comedy is another thing. that. Oh, you know, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm going to say battle rap because oh, okay. it turns out quite a few rap battlers on the UK scene are wrestling fans and I've therefore uh, soft pro what's his name shotty horror yeah Frankie Fraser's the one that I've met lovely guy um, he's not involved with soft pro he's just a battle rapper oh, okay. I used to meet him at Fight Club Pro shows and that. Oh, nice. um, really nice guy and a lot of the UK battle rap scene that I used to watch 10 years ago are now wrestling fans and know our channel oh. stuff. it's really bizarre but um, from talking to them they don't really all hate each other when they're doing the rap battles against each other. Oh. It's all performance. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought Some it was like... Them, sometimes they do. Or right, sometimes, right. like in wrestling, a work can become a shoot. If one of them says something too personal, then backstage they're like, what the... No. But if, no, if they, they come to blows and they've, they've lost, then if they... But you're not allowed to hit people. That's what I mean. Like, if you say something that's world. so bad that it's going to get someone to punch you, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. aha, I that's, won't. That's also happened before and yeah. stuff. And it also... I hope I'm not out of pocket here, but also Ooh. it seems that the battle rap scene... <clears throat> is subject to a lot of the same crap politics and politicking of the wrestling scene as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Mm. nothing safe from politics, though. No, no. Especially on this country. Mm. Uh, Adult films. <laughs> That's a good one. Because people only remember the finish. Oh. Hey. <laughs> what's your uh, What's your name? What's your uh, Luke Warm? Name? Luke Warm's good. Oh, we're doing another a burlesque name as well. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. You can't go on. My real bus. name, Jack King, is quite a... Yeah, that's oh, quite, it's quite a smutty yeah. name, isn't it? So, yeah, school was hard. <sighs> but, uh, especially on the school bus. Oh, for... F oh. <laughs> Sorry. Dear me. A, a, a damn he... A damn he's sexy. <laughs> she's sexy. <laughs> A dummy. A dummy. Oh, no. no. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Joe could be like... Good enough. Yorkshire pudding or something? I don't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Joe had the Yorkshire pudding. Yeah. Right. Cool. Lovely. Andrew would be a good drag queen, I reckon. Oh. He's got the, like, the, the silliness and the overt sexual jokes, hasn't he? Yeah. The noises. The noises. And the noises, the noises yes. Noises, the yeah. sex noises. Yeah. His name would just be, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, lads. Y'all are my heroes, says y'all. Daddy Ass is such an excellent father to his chosen children, the acclaimed. Simple question. If you had to pick one wrestler to be your daddy, which has a capital D, which is meh, who would you pick? Which has a capital D. Josh from St. Louis. Rhea Ripley. P.S. <laughs> Damn it, you got that for me. Alternately, <laughs> if you had to pick one wrestler to be your father, who would you pick? What's yeah, the, I didn't get it. We'll be the joke there, Josh. I didn't Josh. get it. I didn't get the difference there so he so he means in the sex way that was the joke but then he also no, means, no he mean, but he actually means but then he who, adds, who, who which wrestler would you want your dad to be would you actually want to be your dad so in the sex way i mean i don't know we, we did the handsome man bracket a while ago now mm. and we covered all the bases there i think roman reigns then um mm -hmm. drew drew's a bit of a daddy isn't he mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. actual father Anyone but Benoit. I think... Oh, oh sorry. Oh, no. That <laughs> pops into my head oh, and no. came out of my mouth. I was oh, like Pachiti yeah. on this podcast because he makes me look like a nice, song, think, <laughs> sensible, normal person. I think I was going to say Regal for the way he tells stories. No, oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a good punishment if you, you know, break a window. We talk about Mark, Mark Robo Rocco. No. Squawk. <laughs> there we go. Uh, hmm. Kevin Owens. Hmm. Nice oh, Disney. Oh, he's, he's, he's a good father. He's a good father. That's his whole father. thing. I like rides, so go to Disney with Kevin Owens. You've been a and good you know, boy, let's go to the zoo. Yay! He doesn't look like a, a, a typical wrestler, so nobody would be going like, oh, who's that beefy beefy lad no, over there? No, just your dad. Just be this bloke with a beard. Yeah. 
Oh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Gunter? Imagine that. Oh. He'd be a rubbish. Mine and God. If you oh, do something so... wrong, enough have to get spanked. Yeah, yeah, and he'd be so strict as well. He'd be so yeah. the rules in that household. He'd be, be the house general. You don't want that. No, I don't. You'd but be, I kind of do. Like, it'd be like... I'd, 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 I'd learn discipline quick. I was about to say? Don't It'd be like, like the game Prisoner of War on the PS2, sneaking around that house. Wow, what a throwback. I know. I had that game. Brilliant. <laughs> really good. You're a POW <laughs> in Germany. Anyway. Sounds fun. Mm. Yes. Well, I think we answered all those questions exactly <laughs> as expected. Really good game. Really good. Yes, it is. You know what else is a good game? Sending us your emails, your thoughts, your queries, your dodgy stuff that's on your mind. Please, please, please don't hesitate to send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Ah, Reese's Pieces. I had an idea Whoa. for him. He says wrist piss every week, uh, and then he's got Reese's Pieces. Oh. Sorry, wrist piss. There we go. Had an idea for Reese's Pieces that could be a laugh. Should have sent this during Rumble season, but maybe I'll do another in January. If you enjoy yourselves, here's how this works. I'll start with two names, i.e. first entrance in the Rumble. Matthew reads the names, Jack and Ross, or whoever fills in, choose which hello, which they would prefer to win the 2024 Royal Rumble, oh. with Matthew playing tiebreaker if needed. From there, move on to the next name and choose between that person... Or the person that survived the previous vote. It's, it's a like game, a scramble match. It's a game of stick mm. or twist. It's, yeah. Yeah, okay. You might risk may make a risky decision early and be stung by a lack of preferable options Whoa, later on. Oh, I like yeah, it. I like yeah, it. Really it's like good. blackjack. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, sort of. I hope this makes sense and that you enjoy. Thanks for the laughs. Lots of love. Journeyman Irish forward, Connor Salmon. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor. So, if I'm getting this right then. Right in is insane. Number one, Cody Rhodes. Did you give us the two? Two, us two. Seth Rollins. Right. Well... They've both won recent Rumbles. I'll, I'll go Cody. I'm going Cody as well. Yeah. All right. Keep picking him, yeah. So now it's Cody and number three. Johnny Gargano. Cody. Cody. The Miz. Cody. Cody. Big E. Ooh. <laughs> and you don't get that right. Big E, because a return will be great, a great story. Returning from injury, winning the Rumble, Big E. And he had such an underwhelming WWE title reign the first time around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Big E. Ooh, Big E. Santos Escobar. Big, Big E. e. Baron Corbin. You, Adam's not even chimed in there. He didn't vote. I thought you sorry? Said, I thought you just said... Oh, Big E. Oh, did you say Big E? Sorry. sorry. Uh, Baron Corbin. Big E. Big E. Seamus. Big E. Seamus. Oh, oh God. Tiebreaker. No. Tiebreaker. Between Seamus and Big E. Come on. He doesn't, he doesn't want the world title. Oh, yeah. He, he wants to oh, that's, that's a very, that's that's a very, very good Fair. point. Big E. Big E. Jey Uso. Oh, that's good. <sighs> Big E still. J. Ooh. Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. I'll say J just for the story. Ah, oh, fair. Montez Ford. Montez Ford. Really? Yes. Okay. J. Oh, well, Matthew went really. Ah, oh, damn it. Brock Lesnar. Uh, J. J. Okay. <laughs> Drew McIntyre. J. J. Come Tuesday. Von Wagner. <laughs> J. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Which one? Wait, really? oh, oh. J. Ah. Oh. <laughs> no, not even in a dream. No one come to win. Nakamura. J. Oh, He's back next week. Back in the main event picture. Yeah. Uh, didn't work out well last time. I'll go J. So I was split. J. J. Oh, J. As well. Ricochet. J. J. Bobby Lashley. I didn't want J to win, and now as he, as he warned us in the message, mm. we might have a lack of J. J. What number are we at? Our number 16. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't have with you. Dominic Mysterio. J. J. Rey Mysterio. J. J. Finn Balor. J. He got screwed last time, didn't he? Well, he didn't get screwed. Mm. Fate intervened. Mm. Balor. Ah, J. Oh. I just, I don't know. Kofi Kingston. J. J. Gunther. 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 Yay. There we go. Okay. Damien Priest. Gunther. Damien, no, Gunther. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Edge. Gunther. Gunther. Logan Paul. Lo Gunther. Uh, Gunther. <laughs> Gunther. <laughs> Gunther. <laughs> Jesus. Roman Reigns. Oh, Gunther. Gunther. <laughs> Brom Breaker. Ooh, Gunther. Gunther. Shane McMahon. Gunther. Gunther. Sami Zayn. Oh, That's tough, isn't it? That's Sammy. Tough. Go with Sammy, I'm afraid. Gunther. 
storyline or hey, favourite, Matthew? Great, I know, this is a that's, great I hate, this is like Daddy or Chips. Um, I like that. He's good enough to be my daddy, but not good enough to win the Royal Rumble. Uh, Sami Zayn. Oh. Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn. Oh, actually. So I've already said it. Sami Zayn. Sammy. Oh, no. It's no. hard, isn't it? It's hard. Oh, because you could book it so that Kevin screws Sammy at the Whoa. Royal Rumble. No. I'm, I'm, I'm adding extra bits. Sammy. Yeah. Oh, Sammy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sammy, Kevin. Oh, sorry that. So the number 30 is Barry from EastEnders. <laughs> Mustang Sally! Uh, <laughs> right, wait, Sally, is this right. the one? Is that real? Is yeah, this yeah, the I'll guy, tell you, it's Barry from We're gonna do it anyway. That's him. him, from the meme. Yeah. More of a Coronation in... Street boy, so I'm going to Sami Zayn. <laughs> oh, that's the reason why. Going Sami Zayn on this wow, one. Wow, yeah. right. Matthew, Didn't he fall down like from? a big hill? What? Is that how he died on his standards? <laughs> he's dead. Is, isn't his character Free dead? Fun. I'm not sure. Oh, I, don't, sorry, I, don't, I don't know why I, I thought you were on there anymore, but I'm not sure. No, he's been on there for ages. It's tempting as to pick Barry and picking Sami. Cool. That's that was fun, actually. Is, that yeah. was really fun. That was a really good one. Thank you very much, pieces. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Connor Salmon. Thank you, Connor. Ah. The footballer. And if you have any recent pieces or wrist piss to send our way, please, please, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. What a lovely podcast. Yes. And so quick to say hello to our producers, Chris Routh. He's back. Yay. Chris Routh. Mike Staley. Hello, Mike Staley. Hi, Mike. Hello. Reno 2200. And Noah Anderson. Anderson. We do a thing. We do a thing with the producers. I get it. Like, I get we, it. Need, we need a thing for... <laughs> like being in a, a sexy cave. We need a thing for Mike. Is Mike the new one there? What's Mike's full name? Mike Staley. 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 Daring General. Mike Staley. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Daring General. Yeah, we Thank you. Thank you, patrons. Thank you. Patrons. Well, my thing for most of them is just repeating what you've said. So that's not really fun. funny. Yeah, I guess it is fun. Yeah. They almost like it. They're still, they still stayed with us for yeah, ages. True. Uh, the big question this week is Probably who... Chris Rasper. Sorry, carry So on. happy. Is who is going to be the first. Do, now, wait, am I getting the name right? I'll make sure I do this. Is this the WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Correct. I think it's the. They're using the name? It's the World Heavyweight Championship, but. They, it's been also referred to as the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. On the before. website, oh. on their website, it says WWE it? World Heavyweight right, Championship. Right, just want to make sure. That, is so, it part of the original lineage? We don't know yet. That's the know. weird thing. People yeah. point out it's almost to the... It was the same week as uh, when they first introduced mm. yeah. the original, original, original WWWWF. Mm. Um, well, title with Boy Rogers and Bruno splitting off at the NWA, etc., etc. Not the boy. That was a really good point. Of, oh, I don't know if actually me and Tom were talking about it off camera. I don't know if you mentioned it in his video where he has a lot of good critiques of this as a as a concept. But we were both wondering, so the legacy with Buddy Rogers and Bruno and Stasiak and all the, the, the big one, is that now just kind of buried underneath the universal title? Like it's still going on, but well, no one cares no, about because, it as much. Like, I think it's just because one person's got both. I mean, it shows if well, they ever get the belt off him, then there'll be three. The crowbar. And, uh, but are they going to. Uh, yeah, it's weird, isn't Does it? Is the WWE Championship now just, is that now just the Universal Championship? Uh, no. Weird. I don't know. <laughs> is but, it unified? Mm. Is it one title? Not no. yet. There's but two it, belts. I, I bet it will be sh- soon, though, now there's a third one in the mix. They should have scrapped the Universal title. What if Roman just wins it? That, that is, the, <laughs> just... That is the, the thought. If Roman Reigns does win this, it would be funny. It would be funny. I'd prefer... So I picked that. Brock Lesnar to win it and then drop it to Roman. <laughs> Just so uh, yeah, one more of those uh, as well. Aha, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, you didn't say anything about me being this. Be, <laughs> yeah, 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 you challenging me for the title, Roman. Uh. I've got a serious answer though. Oh, go on. Guys, um, CM, no, uh, I think that the <laughs> first champion should be probably Gunter because of the reasons that I kind of accidentally stumbled upon before, which was that I can't see them ever having him beat Roman. So why not let him? It'd be like a slightly bigger version of his IC title reign. So I think Gunter. It's a nice pick. And if Tri- this will be the real test to see if Triple H is in power or not. Because if he gets it, it's going to be something like Big Daddy Gunther. You have the title for eight years. Because right. that's what Triple H likes. Yeah. However, if Vince is back in control, he'll want a hard work in baby face who has a great theme song and he dresses lovely. So Seth Rollins. I thought you were going to say Cody Rhodes. That's where I thought you were going. He was a slight swerve, but I realised oh. that. I think Seth the, Rollins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit Seth all the way. He's, he's, he's been around for bloody ages. Yeah. He's over, and yep. he's not Cody. So oh. Vince will love him. <laughs> but Vince is a. He's like he's looking good. He hasn't been built down enough. He always does this. Brings people over, has to take them down to their yeah. level, then bring them back up. Yeah, it's always been the way. The crucial thing is it has to be somebody that Roman hasn't beaten because if you have somebody. 
the Roman's point. beaten, it is a full on consolation prize, yeah. isn't it? Lashley? So Seth is the obvious shout. Mm-hmm. Seth is the oh, obvious shout. Oh, yeah, no, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to name fight. somebody that Roman has beaten, although in screwy circumstances, okay. God forbid. Finn Balor. Oh. For the, I oh. mentioned earlier because Finn had a t- like 24 hour reign with the title, yep. had to drop it um, uh, straight away. And Seth wants it really badly. Seth and Finn were in that match at Sum- SummerSlam. Yeah, 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 yeah. SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Everybody's expecting Seth. He's already yeah. laid claim to the prize. So have Finn do it. And then you've got Judgment Day with uh, two world titles. You've got Finn with the mm. uh, men's, the World Heavyweight Championship, Rhea with the women's title. Yeah, well. that's cool. And it would be funny. The two daddies. It would be funny seeing Dom be like, I'm cool as well, guys. And they're like, yeah, yeah are you? That's why I like Judgment Day because it's like, like Dom loses. Like, ah, oh, it's okay. You're still the best. Yeah, it's nice. They're yeah. wholesome, actually. Yeah, they're the most wholesome goth. Uh, polyamory group. There's some. Good, wait, that's not confirmed. There's some. <laughs> there's some good. I was gonna give Joel some bonus picks for the uh, thumbnail. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, we'll have to put Rhea Ripley then just to get the hits. I was gonna say prove and draw. After he smashed Carmelo Hayes through that set, I was like, Braun Breaker. He's not good enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Remember when people were talking about Braun beating Roman and stuff? I was yeah, like, he's good. Those are the days. He, he's, does he need he's to be good? good? But, Although if they're gonna have it as this work rate belt, then he's not. Then. <laughs> Well, then he like again. It's gonna be like the person who's gonna be the world champion of the brand because there hasn't uh, been yeah. one because Roman's been bloody you know showing up when he wants to, which is being made great TV. But I mean, as a touring company, it's like well, who are gonna put? Mm. We can't just put bloody you know the no. tag champs for every night. Imagine so. if it was Solo, and then it's just Roman and Solo. That's too much. It's too much. I think that'll be a good thing to come to eventually, but it's the first champion now. Right, right, right. Nobody said Cody. I don't think it makes sense for it to be Cody because his goal is the WWE title. Because that's gonna look like you got like no a se- bum. Yeah. Wow, you couldn't beat Roman Reigns. The ultimate uh, consolation prize yeah, there, isn't yeah. it? Oh. Who well, else? Good for the thumbnail. Okay. Drew? Yeah. Um, uh, well, held the company he's, together he's, during yeah, COVID deserves times. It, deserves yeah, it. Yeah. If, if, it, if it, he's still there. If he then oh. unleashes his heel stable of Gallus. <laughs> no, I don't want him. Um, well, so you mentioned Lashley. Yeah, Lashley. I think... Almost. I don't know if we had Lashley uh, Roman. I swear. Is it like Survivor maybe? Series time we had that? or Might have done. One I was going to say, oh, which... Is um, oh Biggie of course as we mentioned in the oh, Reese's nice. pieces it would be nice. Uh, oh, that. that's a good one. I don't mean we don't know yet his status really or how he's gonna. So maybe maybe that's looking ahead too much. Um, if it's one just out of the realms of possibility that I would just like to see in my own fantasy world be the champion, then Chad Gable. Oh. He's just a lovely boy. Yeah, Ooh, that'd really be amazing. Good. Yeah, he's really Montez. Good. Oh yeah, Montez is a great shout. Yeah, Montez is a great shout. Anyone else? L.A. Knight. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. God, he's That'd over. Great. That would be great. I oh, think they want a show. baby face, but L.A. Knight would be... He is, no, no, he he is, is a face. No, he is, he is a face. Yeah. He's turned. Okay. He's going to Seth and turn face by being a dick. I thought yeah. he was... Before Mania, he was like basically on the verge of being a face. Yeah. And then he just wasn't there. Yeah. Really weird. Uh, anyway. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll agree with L.A. Knight. Are you locking yeah. in here? No, I'm locking in... Um, Gunter, my first pick. Ooh. Okay. It, it contradicts what I said, but I'm going Finn. Okay. Oh, and like Finn, I'm still picking Seth. Nice. Uh, he's loud, obnoxious, people love him, and that's all you need. Workhorse he's champ there. as well, right? He's there. He's, he's there. there. That's it. And he hates CM Punk, so he's got brownie <laughs> points to Vince. You've also picked the correct answer, because that's who they will choose. Uh, it will be Seth. <laughs> It's not who I you really think. think no, 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 I man. really think it will. The fact they've been doing this whole, he's one of the greatest of all time. Of course, if Vince is in charge, then we all know the real champion is going to be Charlotte Flair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can we have her in a tiny <laughs> little... Tiny <laughs> little... <laughs> <laughs> well. Ah, on that bombshell, this has been a fantastic, lovely experience sitting next to you two lovely human beings. And you, Matthew. Jack, what have you got for us until next week? Um, well, I'm I'm away again. I'm off. I've, uh, yeah, I know. I'm barely oh. here. I booked some more days off. All right, off. Roman Reigns. Yeah, but I didn't remember that I'd done it. So I got back from my walk. I'm like, I'm ready to go, lads. And then yeah. next week's off. Have so. you got something fun planned? No, like, I just had it off. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's because of the bank holiday. I was going to take advantage of the short week. Makes sense. Uh, so save I'm a day, right? in a few holidays. Yeah. But, but I am back in time for Backlash. Nice. Yay. Um, but bef- going to Puerto Rico? No, oh. but also um, I am going to hopefully on the day of Backlash earlier in the day I'm going to record matches of the month for April. So Lovely. it'll be out like a week later than usual. But yeah. And where can people hear the fantastic on the audio feed wherever Wonderful. you get? What does Tom say? Like wherever, wherever you, you get, get your podcasts. podcasts. Yes. Um, and apart from that, that's pretty much. Yeah, I'm off. So yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Pachini, what have you got for us until next week? I'll tell you what, because I scheduled a load of videos yesterday oh. from home. Um, so I can tell you what's coming up this weekend. You've got a true story of. 
There's a true story. There's, there's there's a true there. story Ooh. of uh, New Year's Revolution 2005, is it? Oh, the last. Went to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh. What just summing up was nearly going to be one of the worst WWE pay per views of all time until the main event. You're looking at me like I'm going to be like, that's right, but I didn't write this script. I just read it. And I'll be Justin or Lewis. Thank you, Justin or Lewis. Or Jacob Oh, one of them. No, 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 it was... Um, one of the writers. Lewis. Lewis. All the writers Lewis. here are great. They're all great. They Billy Shakespeare. Uh, we've also got um, 10 best Indian WWE superstars ever. It's a, bit of an un- it's a bit of an unusual one. Oh, yeah. We're trying to tap into the Indian market. <laughs> oh, I see. No, I like, I'm joking. <laughs> in my head, I was like, that is definitely what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that is. No, that'll be interesting, though. Yeah, no, it is yeah, interesting. Yeah. It is. Uh, Carly's the thumbnail, obviously. Um... What else have we got? Uh, we've obviously got pitches, predictions coming up next week. Oh, that's it. I'm live streaming um, the, the SmackDown and Raw drafts. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm doing that tomorrow. Well, t- when you listen or watch this, hopefully, uh, tonight. So that's on YouTube. So I'm doing that. Um, apart from that, can't think of anything else. God, I think that's enough for one. Well, Ross has got a great yeah. AWA documentary. It soon is the rise and fall of the now. AWA. The company that went, Pfft. what do you mean the sky's falling? We can't see it. Don't be silly. Uh, I will be having more fun with the bloody Tom Campbell. Watching No Mercy 2001, watch along. What a great pay-per-view it is. Bloody hell. Don't take our word for it. Listen to our excitement and joy seeping through your ears of the Call of Classic Smackdown review. I will be reading more of Bret Hart's book. Oh, my God. Oh, it's great. We're up You've to 90. You're still at it. it. Yeah, I've read it a yeah. long time ago. Now I'm powering uh, through it because I made the mistake of reading absolutely bloody everything because he's a master of saying, like, it's great. On the way home, some guy got hit by a car. Me and Julie had a conversation there <laughs> later on that night. It just ends. There's like no follow up and stuff like that, and it's it's brutal. So I'm just skipping the bits out rather than the wrestling. The bit that I remember more oh. than any of the other wrestling bits. You know what's coming, don't you? Probably Might be any. white Could cotton be... panties. No, oh, a pirate in paradise. When, yeah. he, when, when, when he when he's in, in bed with whoever it was on the road in Japan. Yeah, I'm in Japan. Bit, yeah. White cotton. He loves Japan. It sticks in my head. He hates the rest in Japan, white cotton panties. but he loves the. They uh, crawled the woman. in the bed with me like kittens. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's disturbing. Kittens always crawl in the bed, don't they? So, can't get them out. <laughs> Famously calm creatures. It's like oh. Moths around a light bulb. Get kittens to a bed. <laughs> That's right, like moths, moths around a light bulb. Why? Even cats know I'm the best. Oh. And all the cats came to me with tears in their I... eyes and said that was better than Sean. <laughs> I know that I should feel guilty for always cheating on my wife, but I even surprised myself with how beautiful some of these women yeah. were. I'm like, Brett, it's don't all right. say that. What are you doing? <laughs> I they were bra- fit, though. <laughs> I shagged her brains out, and I forgave myself, because I'm Brett Hart. <laughs> it's this for 700 pages of excellency. Uh, it's an ama- it's like amazing book. book. I yeah, really amazing. executed those whores. <laughs> oh, He's so oh, great, Brett. Oh, yeah. Brett Hart. Not his words, oh, the words of Brett Hart. The words of Brett Hart. <laughs> Definitely. Channeled through me like Jonathan <laughs> Edwards, professional douche. Uh, Thank you very much for listening to us. And listening to Jack, Pachidi, Joel, Puppet Jack, I'm going to throw over there. And then we're going to look at the screen and say something lovely and dramatic. Oh, God, I... oh what we're going to say? Bloody hell. Is this a new thing? Oh, I know. Yeah, we always end up, it's, uh, it's rather like, you know, by reminding people of patreon.com forward slash called the holic and mailbag at colic.com. We now look at this and we go, we'll do a jackism and do feetsy weetsies. Uh, <laughs> One, two, three, feetsy weetsies. <laughs>